Hello guys, welcome to another video tutorial by No Code Africa. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to, uh, you know, build a food delivery application within Flutterflow without writing codes. It's going to be a very, very interesting tutorial. We're going to try to see how we can implement most of the pages that you see here. And um, by implementing most of these pages, you're going to learn some tricks and some hacks that will help you to design your mobile applications faster. We are not necessarily going to complete everything. I will just pick pages randomly and just design them. And within this tutorial, you will learn a whole lot how to make gradients. You will learn uh, pop-ups, bottom sheets. You will learn a lot of things. And then it's going to increase and improve your uh, mobile development skills all right within Flutter flow so um, I really want you to sit back and enjoy this it's going to be a very long ride but let's see how far we can go okay so for this particular part we will do a couple of screens and then I will show you that okay uh, sometimes you don't need to like create screens over and over again you could just like uh, duplicate them and use wow okay so um, this is like uh, the designs we're going to make. It's a food delivery application and um, you will be able to get access to this particular Figma file by checking the description under this uh, video. You will see a link to, to access the file from uh, Figma and then uh, full credit to the person who worked on this. The name is also on the description in the under this video. Also, um, if I told you don't have an account on Flutterflow, you could just check the description also and you will see a link to click to create a new account for yourself. It's free. All right, let's uh, get straight to it. And uh, sincerely, I want to assure you that this is going to be an amazing tutorial. You're going to enjoy it. And I would like you to join faith with me and just give this video a thumbs up and uh, just punch on the subscribe button as you begin to learn this, uh, you know, this class. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the platform we're using. We're using Flutterflow, so you will be able to build application faster than ever with Flutterflow. So if you don't have an account, just like I said earlier, just check the description under this video and you see a link to click and create a new account for yourself. It's free. And then also, uh, if I told you you already have an account, just click on sign in and it will take you here. All right. Okay, so um, this is my dashboard and for me to start the project, okay, so I would just click on create new. All right, so uh, then I'll call this uh, project uh, food. Yes, <laughs> why not? I'll call it food. Yes, then I will click on create blank and then begin my creative process. So we're not going to connect this project to Firebase, so we will just skip this particular st stage. All right, the next thing we will do is we will just take off this app bar. So you click on it and click on delete. All right, and then the next thing we're going to do, the very first steps we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and check out the dimension of the screen. So just click on any of the screens. So I click on this and it to see, it show me here 37 by 5 by 812. This is like the best screen to start building your application from because this is like the smallest screen possible and uh, um, it will allow you to not suffer so much when trying to uh, make your application uh, responsive to other bigger mobile devices okay so always start with 375 and the cool stuff is that this design begins with 375 so let's hit the road running so here the width is 375 the height is 812 so we will use that same dimension for all our projects so um, we will just come here and how do we do that so you just click on here click on this particular icon here to uh, choose the mobile uh, screens that you want to use so we want to use this very first one here so I'll click on it and then we have the screen beautiful all right so uh, what next are we going to do we're just gonna come back here and then we start designing so this is the splash screen so if you come here to the widget tree you see that it says their home page. So I will just go ahead and then it's already selected on the scaffold. This is a scaffold. Then there's a column inside the scaffold. You can rename the scaffold to splash, all right? Just call it splash. I like to, uh, best practices, what I do is I just go ahead and then click on this and copy the name of the screen because the designer always makes sure that they uh, create uh, different names for each of the screen. So I just go ahead and copy it. It's like best practice for me. I believe it to be best practice for you too. Then come here 
and click on here and just paste it all right so i paste it and you can just click on this button and it's done now it's called splash screen so splash page 01 so whenever you're trying to locate it you can come here and uh yes so we have done that the next thing we're going to do is start designing so let's start with this screen of course now this is the logo we will just click on it and uh, i will go ahead and export it so on the design scroll down to export click on export uh i believe my picture might be covering this but you should be able to see it um then click on export logo and that's it so before we proceed what you need to do is go ahead and check the dimension of the screen uh sorry not the screen dimension of the image the image here is 121 by 121.13 by 58.88 so i don't always like using the overflows like the point 13.88 well you can actually so it's actually good because it makes it very specific but in this particular training we will just use the approximate so we will use 122 by 59 okay all right so i will just come here to the column and click to add a child to this widget that's adding a child to the column and i will pick an image uh and then i will say one two two and then i will say 59 great i believe that was what we had yes 59 and um i will just click on the uh, column itself all right so this image here is uh you know it's not properly positioned it's supposed to be at the center so what we need to do to make that happen is wrap the the widget with a roll okay when you do that it will now spread across like this and then you can go ahead and then um, center align anything that is inside the roll by clicking this button so now you have the image center align what we now need to do is go ahead and then change the image type from network to asset and then click on this icon to upload the picture so this is it and then i pick it up it's going to be inside here in a couple of seconds and then yes it is i will click on this right and then uh what i need to do now is i want to center these here so instead of trying to check the position from here to here and all of that uh, you can just go ahead and center align it so click on the column itself and click on these to center align and then right now you have the a logo of the application in the center of the screen good stuff now we've done page one all right so the next thing we're going to do now and it's a bit uh, tricky uh, not too tricky but it depends on how the designer worked on this so now we are going to just go ahead and duplicate this screen since we already have this so we will go ahead and then uh, go to the widget tree uh -huh. uh, go to the page actually then right click on it you see duplicate page good now click inside the page so that you can see the new name okay here it is and then i will go ahead and then copy the name of this screen i'm trying to do so i double click on it and copy it Control c and then uh i'll come here you know highlight it and paste this and just click on this tiny button and that's it so we already have this scenario now what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and put these things that you see here so it's going to be a bit tricky but we would do it now uh you see the edges of the screens are rounded you don't necessarily need to do that okay so um what we need to do now is this particular uh you know uh what is it called this particular design here is an image so we will double tap to assess it so when you double tap you will assess it like this uh this was the way the designer did it so um you're going to just manage it like that so you will click on design and then export and then export ellipse okay let's see if that's what we have actually exported so yeah it shows here like this which is okay but now the thing is we don't know the size of this image if you say 292 by 295 you know this is actually a big circle you see it's a big circle so uh you can't just use 292 by uh, 95 so what we are going to use okay before we leave that let's click on this as well and it's the same thing so we will just go ahead and then export the design and uh, export it here which is good now what we are going to do is we are going to go inside the um, application like maybe go inside your system and you will see the uh, this is the the dimension of the um, files so for this one it's 217 by 246 so 
217 by 246 so we will go ahead and then and then make it happen here but now the thing is this how do we put an image just a lot just around our design like that so here it is and then here it is how do we do that do we put a row here and put stops here no so what we're going to do now is um let's go to the widget tree and see how it's been arranged so this is a row okay and then this is a column now this big column is where we are going to put uh some things right so um let's try it in two ways one will work okay so the one that works we just leave it like that so we will right click on this and wrap widget with a stack so it's basically a stack that will help us put things around our application anyhow okay so we just want to put it around here around this corner and around here so we just put wrap the row inside a stack and then the row is already positioned properly fine then what we need to do now is just go ahead and click add a child to the widget which is the stack and add an image so um now this doesn't sit well with me let me see if 400 uh no this doesn't work this doesn't work okay country z uh all right so we will try to see how to make it work uh it doesn't work again let's say let's make this 800 uh it still pushes this up okay so uh we will say control z and undo everything we've done so far good now what i want us to do is we're going to go ahead and then wrap this column in a widget that is called stack okay so wrap it in a stack like this okay then let's add an image now let's see if it's gonna work graded work now so now we actually have um, the image here at the upper part of the screen and it's not affecting this at all so with this noun it works perfectly so now what we're going to do now is uh, check the dimension of the uh, file again so the file here is 217 by 246 so we say uh, 217 by 246 okay great and then we go bring the image in all right so we will switch from network to asset and then upload picture and we will pick this uh oh not this oh my goodness so this is the dimension actually so instead of going inside your system like that you can hover on it and you see it so here is 184 by 103 yeah so let's change it 184 by 103 okay good this one is good and then let's select that uh, I picked the dimension for these other one and that's not what we want to use first so I upload it and then we'll have this design now so it's beautiful yeah so I believe that's it it has this design okay good really it's okay then what we need to do now is this same thing we will just say Control d so we've duplicated it and um, what I'm going to do is this is the duplicated version right this is a duplicated version so I will change it now to uh, let's pick figure out the dimension again of the other one the dimension of the one below is uh, 217 let's hover on it and you see the 217 by 246 so we will say 217 by 246 then upload the picture and I click here to upload the picture and uh, it's uploaded but the position is not right okay it's supposed to be here at the bottom so what we now need to do is click on this image and um, actually it, since it's not like a specific image we won't really see the dimension but let's just try so from here it's not giving us proper proper things so it says 258 from here we will have to just use our eyes okay so we don't have the proper positioning like uh, the, the 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 paddings okay so let's say from here to here is going to be maybe 100 left to right less than 100 it didn't work okay so 150 didn't work too let's say 160 worked okay 160 worked now we've gotten it to this point so we now need to take it down so we're going to say padding at the top this is going to be 400 didn't work let's make it 600 and it worked so we have it here and uh, uh, okay so um, so uh, it, it's not coming out very well right so 
but it, it has given us what we needed but uh, I think it's too much so let's say 580 uh -huh. let's say okay did it give us what we okay so somewhere around it so let's say 570 because I think we have some things that are really covered 560 Ah, okay, so 570 is good. 570 is good, and uh, I think that we are good with these. The heights now, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, perfect. Now everything works out very well for us. You see, this is the design. All right, guys, so we're done with that. We will just jump to the next thing. So I want you to just, uh, uh, you know, get to see um, how to do these things. Now we are going to design this, right? We're going to design this and then we'll duplicate it for this and then this and then like that we we'll just keep moving this application really fast. Okay, so um let's uh let's proceed and uh let's go ahead and then just uh create these particular screens and it's the same dimension, so I will just click on this and copy the name. It says I'm boarding all one. So I will come here to the pages and click here to add a new page and then click on create blank, paste the name I copied, click on create page. This is how I design and I believe it's one of the best practices. So you can try this as well. Okay, now we have gotten this scenario now. What we need to do is start designing. So here we start with these. Now this is the image. Don't worry guys, this is actually an image. If you come to design, you will see, uh, okay, so it's an image, but the designer did not put any image, all right, so it's okay, but in some of the designs, we will see an image, but the thing is, this is just an image, so you can just use an image here, or you can use a container and then add a background to it, anyone works, but I would prefer to use a container so that I can achieve this same grayish color, right, so, and then of course, I'll show you how to add an image to it. Now what we need to do is, this is 240 by 292, so I click on the column, go to the widget tree and add a child to this widget. The child is going to be uh, a container. The container is 240 by 292, so it's going to be 240 by 292. And then uh, we're just going to use the gray color here, so I'll just copy this color and then paste it here Control v enter and then it has some border radius so our border radius is 12 so we would just come here and put the radius as 12 beautiful stuff and uh, the thing is if you notice it's it's not center aligned and i wouldn't like you to start looking at the inspecting and then giving padding here it's not good it's not best practice because um when you're considering considering other devices this is going to be really bad so what I would rather want you to do is wrap this container in a row, right? So you wrap it in a row and then center align the row and that's it, you're good. All right, so the next thing you need to do quickly is you need to go ahead and um, uh, what do we do from here? Let's give the padding from the top, which is going to be 114. So uh, I'm currently under inspect, that's why I can see all of these uh, dimensions around it. So 114 on top. So I will just click on the row first and then add um, the padding on the top, 114, good stuff. Then the next thing we need to do is I will add a row here, right? Yeah, I'll add a row and then uh, I will put this text here. So I just want to quickly copy the text and then click on the column itself, click on add a child to this widget, click on a row and then click on add a child to the row and click on text. Good, we're doing things really fast and I like it. So we paste it, all right? And then another thing, uh, we have to always pay attention to the dimensions of the text. So here is 800 and then the size is 24 pixel and it's send, all right? So the font type is send. So 800 by 24, uh, let me just copy the color code. So uh, let's come here and change it from 400 to 800, change these to 24, and the font family is sen. Okay, so let's see, we can say sen. Okay, so this is sen, but now uh, we wouldn't want to be going around changing uh, the font color every single time because this is sen, this is sen, and I believe most of the text in the entire design is, is, is using the font type sen. So let's just go ahead and then fix these across our design. Let's come here to team settings, go to typographies and icons, and then come here to primary font family and change it to send. 
all right so we click to change it to send and here we can just click it to change it to send as well good and then that's that's it we go back to the widget tree and then now this font is already going to be in send all right see it has the same design now so we will go ahead and then click on this and center align it and then not just that alone we will go back to, okay we will click on the font itself and then look at the spacing between these and this object is 63 and then we will put uh, 63 here don't forget i'm selecting the row not the text okay so um i like to select the upper uh widget in the hierarchy that the that the that the, the, the smaller widget is inside okay all right so what we need to do now is uh, we're going to go ahead and then, uh, well, we have to paste the color I picked. Yeah, so uh, let's just paste it. I think it's almost the same thing. It's a bit grayish, not really super black. That's it. So here uh, we will just go ahead and duplicate this control D and we're going to use it for this particular font. So I, I double click, copy the text, check the font size 400 by 16 and then go ahead click here and paste it all right and it's 400 by 16 and uh great so this is it and i think it's center aligned yes it is so i will go ahead and then make it center aligned and that's it guys so but now this particular one is just 18 pixel apart from this particular text so i will click on this change it from 63 to 18 all right Okay, so the next thing we need to do quickly is this thing here. So this is the uh, dots that show, right? We're not going to make this dynamic, we just make it static, all right? So there's a way you can make this dynamic. Uh, I will create a separate video for that sometime, but we just use this static, okay? So let's just click on this and export the design. The, this is a lazy way of doing it, but it's okay. Uh, it's a 76 by 10, so I will just go ahead and click here. Uh, click on the column itself, then click on add a child to widget, add a row. Uh, yes, I like to do it like that. Add uh, an image inside it. And then the image is 76 by 10. Okay. And then uh, we will go ahead and then change from network to assets and click on this to bring in that small tiny, tiny image. So we put it inside here. And then after we've done that, we will click on the row that contains everything and center align it. Good stuff. Let's check out the spacing. So here, uh, let's go to inspect so that we can see the spacing. It's 32. So I will say 32 here. Good stuff. Good work, guys. Well done. Then the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and put this button here. This button is 327 by 62. I will copy the color. I will copy the color here. 327 by 62 so I will click on the column the B column here click to add a, a button so this is a button it's a widget so 327 by right 327 by 62 so we will say 327 uh, by 62 this is where you change the dimension of the button I will paste the color of the button and then scroll down, I will see where to change the text on the button. So what we had there was next. And I think we have some uh, border radius. So border radius is, um, uh, what was it? Border radius is 12. So we will go ahead and then look for where to change the border radius here. So this is it. And we will say 12. Good stuff. So we have it now. It's beautiful. We just click on this and then go to inspect and then you see the space between them is 69 okay i like this stuff all right so i just click in here and say 69 we're doing a very good job let's close this all right so now this looks really neat and beautiful all right the next thing we need to do quickly is this text here it says skip so we will click here and then uh what i would simply do is just copy this one um, yes, so you try to copy things so that you can walk faster. So I will just click here and then click on the bottom and paste it. And then click on this, take off the, let's look at the, the distance. So here and here is 16. So I will just change the padding on the top here to 16. And then I will change this uh, to skip, copy this, and it is 400 by 16. I will just paste the skip here, Control V. And come here and change it to 400 and change this to 16 and we are good all right ladies and gentlemen we are done with what we 
we're doing for that one we would just go ahead and then come to the pages arrangement here right click and duplicate page and this is the the duplicated page it's, it shows here so i will just come here copy the, the name of the second screen and click here highlight everything and paste it good stuff and then i will just go ahead and then uh, what else all your favorites oh okay so the only thing that changes here is this all right so we will just click on that and export it <laughs> all right and um, i'm exporting that and then i will come over here and then click on this and then replace the image get another one and i will see it here good stuff all right so we have this and it's uploaded then uh, i think that's all for that particular page nothing changed okay so we will go ahead and then um, come back to pages and then uh, right click on this and duplicate it come here to onboarding three and uh, i'm just showing you how this whole thing works so click on the screen here then click on this highlight paste it click on this check button click on this image we need to download the image first so this is it click on design go to export and export slide and then uh, let's go ahead and come here and replace it we will start designing some complex screen very soon because the idea here is just for you to have an idea oh I just said idea twice yes the idea here is just for you to have an idea of how to design uh, mobile screens using photo flow really fast all right so we have these done for us the next thing we need to do is the final one so we will just go ahead and then uh, come here and duplicate the screen and then uh, click here double click twice uh, double click twice sorry I'm really saying things repeatedly <laughs> all right so I will just click here and um, uh, paste this this is good all right um, now we will just go ahead and then change this particular one let's click on the image and export it all right uh, export it come over here click on the image and then click on this icon and then bring in what you had just exported good stuff now we have this so we can just take a look at what we have done quickly and see how far we've gone so it's gonna take some time to, to load so while it's still loading let's look at the next thing we're going to work on now this is the next thing we're going to work on and um it's super really nice uh but i think um I think there is going to be, uh, uh, let's see, I don't know how this design was going to work. Okay, so um, maybe tap ones, right? Maybe tap ones and then this brings up, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay, maybe tap on this login screen and then this pops up. I think maybe that's how it works. Okay, so uh, let's try to create some of these, right? Yeah, let's, why not? okay so um let's create this quickly uh all right let's see let's see let's see what do we do okay so actually this is our work this is what we have done so far so um let me just show you all right so this is it okay now it's not showing responsive because we're not really like making it responsive let's just select the screen that we worked on uh okay so uh things are not really appearing very nicely there is a small problem i think we will work on this towards the end okay so this is it and then this is it and then this is it and then this is it like that you see it it just flows okay so the idea is for you to just be clicking next 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 and now that we're not adding any actions we're just focusing on the front end designs okay <clears throat> now we need to go ahead and then continue pushing right so um do I work in this? Yes, let's work in this now. So well, how do we create this? Uh, we will create a background. We will create what we have here at the back. I don't know what is inside here below, but I think there should be a button that says uh, maybe lunch or maybe anything. I will just show you how we can achieve this. Um, this, uh, this is the same thing we had that time. So we will just click on it and um let's see let's see let's see we can export this yes let's export it at once we will use it immediately 
and then let's start this background is black so we will copy this black and then let's start working on it um, but you see that this is almost in the same position like what was here so there's no need to redo it okay so we can just um, we can just go ahead and duplicate this screen and then set things running here or or not okay let's just start it from scratch let's click on here to add a new page and then click on create bank and then um, uh oh I should have copied this so it says login empty so click on this login empty just paste it that's just how I do it and then I have this click on the up bar take it away all right the next thing we need to do is go to the widget tree and then we will go ahead and um, let's start designing what is inside here this is what is inside the main page first so login so it's a role uh, inspect it's 700 by 30 so we click here add a row uh, this is our row inside our row we have the text and then we're pasting what we have here 700 by 30 you know you have to learn how to memorize this thing so you can walk really fast 700 by 30 and then I will center align it and then um, let's come here all right so now this is there's a slight problem the not a problem actually this background is black right so what we need to do is uh, just just change this to white for now. Yeah, so we don't let's change it We won't see it again after we've changed it, but uh, we will see it later. <laughs> Good uh, Actually, we can see it because the background is not white. It's like gray So we will come here to the column and we will go ahead and wrap this column with a, a, a widget the widget is gonna be a container and then the container is going to be the size of the screen so we will say 375 by 812 so we will say um maybe 375 for responsiveness sake i would say make the width infinite okay infinity and then the the height you can fix it to be 812 well i will tell you that in subsequent videos why we did this okay so um and then the next thing I need to quickly do is copy the color here and then paste it. All right, so and voila, we have this now. Good. Now what we need to do quickly is we will need to give it some distance, 118. So we click on this and say uh, 118, good stuff. And then uh, just like we always do, we will click on this and duplicate it. And then we will copy this. This is going to be 400 by 16, you see here. And then I will paste what I just copied and change the dimension to 400 by 16. Basically not dimension their properties, all right? So that's it. And um, uh, what do we need to do? Okay, so we need to go ahead and uh, what do we do? What do, what do we do? Uh, let's check the spacing between them. So it's three. Uh, so I will click on this and make it three. All right, so this is it, and um, I think that's all for for now. So we will just go ahead and click on this column. Now, what we need to do is this uh, this design. We will go ahead and then wrap this um, wrap this column with a stack. Wrap it with a stack, and then click on add a child to the stack. That's add a child to this widget and add an image. Good stuff. And then we will um, go ahead and then change from network to asset and then click on here to uh, do our basic settings okay so here we go um, we will go ahead and and have it uh, over here let's say this is what we downloaded yeah was this what we downloaded no this one I think this is what we downloaded let, let, let me be sure of what we did so this is it uh, okay and then we actually downloaded this let's just download it again okay let me just let, let me just be sure let's click on this and I'll see it twice great this is it so the dimension here is 141 by 130 let's just upload it 141 by 130 so 141 by 130 so I'll just click on this and say 141 by 130 you see now we have our beautiful design it's inside it's good 
Great. So you can actually click on this to look at how it looks like, but I don't always like these over overflow colors here. Um, yeah, so I don't always like it very much. So uh, let's take it off. Okay, so what we need to do now and quickly is um, the next thing is this particular scenario. So this is actually a bottom sheet. So what is a bottom sheet? If you come here to the pages, you will see that we have, this is pages and components, and then this is pages alone, and then this is components. So you can create a bottom sheet in the component section. So here we click on this and click on component, and then we will come here to bottom sheet. So you see here, there's a bottom sheet. You can choose uh, to, to pick a, a template here, or you can just create a blank one. So we will click, create a blank one and we will still call it login uh, login empty, all right? So so I'll paste this and click on this. It says name already in use. Uh, okay, so we would just say hyphen uh, bottom sheet. Bottom sheet, okay. So uh, click in that. And then now we have it like this. What do we do with it? Um, what do we do with it? So we see the dimension is 375 by 579. So we will come here to the bottom sheet. This is the bottom sheet, all right? So um, what we need to do is come to the widget tree of the bottom sheet. So this is it. And then we will click to add a container inside it, all right? So that's a container. So we will say 375 by 579. So we will say 375 by 579. Good work. So I will take this off so we can just see what we've done. So this is it. So I think this is a full thing, all right? Uh, no, this is not the full thing. Why is it not showing? Uh, this doesn't look full to me. 375 by 579. Uh, it doesn't look full to me. Let's bring it back and just adjust this. Uh, okay. All right, so I think this is this is it this is like the real size uh, okay so maybe you just keep stretching this until you see the real thing so something like this um, this is more like the covering or some sort of mock-up yeah so i will just adjust it like this a bit okay so I'll take it off yeah all right so this is the design the dimension um what we need to do now is just start putting things inside it so we start with this one here email now there is something i want us to do uh let's start with the row okay so we're gonna put these email in a row let's zoom in double click and pick this it's uh let's see it's 400 by 13. let's click this to add a, a row no we add a column first look at this everything is stacked from top to bottom all right so you put a column inside this container first so there's a column first then we now put a row and then in the row, we put the text. The text we're putting is what we had copied before. And uh, the dimension is 400 by 13. So I will scroll down and just change this to 13. And then I will click on this and center align it. Oh, no, not necessary. Then uh, what I need to do now is I want these and these to be together. Then I can just duplicate it and change here. So that means I'll put these two things in a column. All right, I'll show you what I mean. So these now is in a row. I will wrap it. Um, hold on. Uh, I will wrap these in a column. Wrap it in a column. All right, great. So this is the row now. Okay, good stuff. Then I will click this and add a text field inside this column. All right. So add a text field. And now you don't see anything around that. So what we need to do is, uh, let's see the dimension, 327 by 62. So let's say um, 327. Okay, great. So it, it adjusts 327. Uh, and then what we need to do is, it has a, it has a background. So let's see. Uh, when you come to the properties of the text field, let's just copy this example first and paste it here in the hint text, some hint text. Okay, good. Now it's really grayish. Let's copy the, the color of the hint text and um, 
and just paste it here good stuff and then we can check the dimension 400 by 14 it's okay that's okay so let's make this 14 all right so um we don't have uh this is there's a border color focus border color bother width, and a lot of things but we don't have the background color that can you know give these a background so what i normally do is i will wrap this text field in a widget and that widget is going to be a container so that container is going to take the the dimension of the text field design so 327 by 62 so i will say um i will say uh 327 327 by 62 and then I will copy the color of the text field that what we have here is grayish color and then I will paste it here as the background of this container here and then if you see it has some border 10 pixels so I will just give it some border here 10 pixels and uh, that's it we have something now but it's not really beautiful right so I will just click on the text field and then do some things around it so I will come here first, go down, and um, here in the content padding, I will say 24, uh, too much, I will say 18. This looks good. So this is a content padding, padding the content inside the text field. And then here I will say 16. Uh, I think this looks good too, but I think it's more like, yeah, this is 16, it's okay. All right, so um, not so good because uh, this is still pushed down way too down. Uh, let's go ahead and say content padding here is 14. All right, so I think this is good now. And then what we need to do is uh, 62. This is fine. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so for this particular text, right, I'll click on the text and see the... The spacing on the left, it's 24. So um, I will put a padding on the left here and say 24. I hope you're learning. And uh, this is perfect now. I will click on the column itself and give it some padding from the top, which is 24. And then I'll say 24. You're learning? Good. Then I will go ahead and then give some padding between this email and this text field. So the padding here is going to be, let me click on the row that contains the container. Uh, the row that contains the text is here. The spacing in between them is 8. And then I will give it bottom, so 8. Good. Now we have this, right? So we're in good shape. Now uh, I need you to understand that this has a border radius. Uh, let's come here and we see the border radius 24. That's this big container, this big uh, container, the white container. It has a border radius of 24, so I will put here 24. And uh, you see now it's carved somehow. Okay, good. And then uh, what we need to do now is this column, we're going to duplicate it. Ctrl D is duplicated. All right, so I will just click on this and change and copy the password. You see why I wanted to just uh, create it like that? So I can simply reuse it. So I will paste the password here and then come here. And then um, now you don't need to put all of this. Well, you can just copy it, <laughs> really. All right, so, um, well, you don't need to put, copy this. It's not, it's not necessary. Passwords don't have hint text. <laughs> so... Uh, but you want to put this icon here. So you will come here to the text field and then do something. So if you scroll down, scroll down, you will see something called password field. So you check it, all right? So if you check it and it says, oh yes, you now see icon size. So you have to, this is a toggle hide password icon. So you click on here and then you give it a grayish color, something like this will do give it um, an icon size let's see what is the size of this thing 19 by 14 just say 19 okay then that's it it appears all right and then um, what else now if you observe this thing shifts up a bit uh, we will just try to adjust it so we will come down and then we will make this 18 okay so good stuff all right, so I think it's it's pretty good now. You can always add numbers to, to make that a bit, okay? So we need to do this particular part. So I will click on this and just copy it. It's a, 
400 by 13 uh, let, let's click on this and see the dimension 20 by 20 let's go ahead and click on the column and add a row okay so we add a row here and then we add a container so the container is 20 by 20 so it's 20 by 20 here and then um, it has a okay let's just copy the border radius so border color it has a border color so it doesn't have a few color so we'll click on it and maybe clear the few color the border color we paste it and then not just that alone we will see the radius the radius is five pixel the border radius so we'll put it here five pixel and then that's good so the distance between the distance on the side is 24 so I'll give it some padding on the left here 24 and then uh, here is the next thing we need to pick up so I will click on the row click here and add a text and then paste the text here and uh, I think it's 13 right if I'm not mistaken uh, yeah it's correct then copy the color of the text and then paste it here okay good we are doing really fine and then check the distance between them it's 10 and so come here and give it some padding in the left 10 beautiful then we click on the row again we want to add this particular one forgot password uh, well we can just duplicate this Control D to duplicate it and then copy this thing and paste it here okay and then copy the color of this and uh, paste it here all right good and then this is actually 14 so we're good now then what we need to do is check the distance between these two texts 96 and then so we'll just change this from 10 to 96 beautiful all right let's go ahead and give some padding at the top here so if you click on let's say this and check here it says 24 so we will add some padding at the top here 24 and then the next thing we will just quickly need to do is we'll click on this button and um, dimension is 327 by 62 so click on the column click on add a child to the widget uh, 327 327 by 62 copy the color come to design copy the color ctrl c uh, this is login here and then paste it you see i try to pick up a lot of things while i'm working just so that it makes me work fast because uh most times when you're working uh when you're building a ui all right you get to uh you have like a lot of screen so you want to find ways to you know walk really fast so you memorize something so 30 31 here is the space between the button so i will just come here and then put it you know the thing is this with practice you will find some methods that works for you and only you so here uh what what i need to do is we need to create this and so i don't want to do i want to be lazy so i'll just copy this and click on the column and paste it and then click on this container and delete it great really fast right <laughs> i will just copy here and say don't have an account i check the font size the properties of the font 400 by 16 good stuff and then i'll click on here paste what i had copied uh and then make this 16 and then here on this one this is sign up it's all it's 700 by 14 so i paste it here 700 by 14 great all right so i will have to check the distance it's just uh 10 so i will change these padding on the left to 10 and then i will click on this and center align it and there you go I need to remove this padding on the left and we are good so don't have an account sign up and then there is all here so uh, I will just click on this to duplicate it Control D remove this delete this and then just I like to just copy <laughs> so copy 400 by 16 click on this paste it it's already 400 by 16 and then what I need to do is these icons so I will um, click this duplicate it delete this or and then add um, uh, images I will just add an image here this is gonna be the image that contains all of this so I'll just pick here the image is gonna be 62 by 62 I will export these images first okay then I will click on this export it as well 
click on this export it as well and then that's it so uh, this is going to be 62 by 62 all right so um if at all you're wondering how this thing works i want you to compare yourself to a tailor someone who makes dresses all right so uh when a, a tailor is trying to uh you know take measurement of your clothes you discover that they tend to memorize a lot of things although some of them always have papers beside them so um learning how to design really fast on flutter flow like designing ui will make you to have the skills that tailors always have <laughs> so you tend to memorize the dimensions of the things that are in figma you just pick it up all right so this is it i will say ctrl d to duplicate it look at the space between each of the images uh go to inspect to see that uh 30 so i will say here this will be 30 good stuff then i'll click here and duplicate again beautifully done I will go ahead here and change the image for this one to uh, this one and then wait until it's done then I click on this and change this last one here to this okay good stuff we, we, we've done an amazing job guys so this is it we have this beautiful design it's it's complete now how do we use it let's come back to that page that had to do with login button login uh, login empty so this is it so i don't know how the designer wanted to make it let's just click here and turn this like this i don't know how the designer intended for it to work is it that uh, maybe when they click on this or click on this text uh right um that that should pop up so i will just assume so for that to happen i'll click on add an action uh cl click on action click on add an action and say on tap so there is on tap there's on double press uh there is a uh, on long press um so i think just on tap right so when maybe the user taps on this i want the person to i want the bottom sheet to be launched so this is the bottom sheet i want it to show click to select the component you want to show i want it to show this one and that's it so we can go ahead and then uh you know uh preview this particular screen that we just finished all right so while that is it's going on i think it's gonna just show us very soon let's look at the next screens that we're going to do so uh i will not do this one or this one uh this one this is just basically how it would look like when you turn on your keyboard i will show you what this is right okay this is for sending code for forgot password so you can just re-edit these screens and and work in it right so um i will I wouldn't want to be doing that all through this right so i want to i know that you can just redo it i will go ahead and do the ones that i think are difficult all right and um so um i, I think i will just go ahead and work on the sign up part like really fast so you can just see how it's done uh yeah yeah i'll work on the sign up then we can just start doing some of this okay so the idea is i'll just do some screens so that you can understand how it's been done okay all right so this is what we have done uh let me pick uh okay so now this is not covering the entire screen i do not know why why is it not this is supposed to cover the entire screen i do not know why it isn't covering the entire screen anyways i know that some things are usually here in applications right so maybe that's why it's like that all right, so uh, maybe when the user clicks on this, then this shows up. I think this is what what the designer wanted to do. So that's it. So we click on this, it just brings up this. So you can, you see how beautiful it is? Good stuff. Now, uh, what we need to do again, let's close this. It's uh, the sign up button, the sign up page. Uh, it's quite simple, uh, but that means we need to have the sign up page itself so let's let's have it why not so let's go ahead and then duplicate this screen and then let's uh copy this uh-huh click inside and then um paste this here why not so here it's sign up i copy it and i paste it oh i'm trying to double tap <laughs> paste it here all right so please sign in this and say sign up so just copy this and paste here uh good stuff 
now we need to put this icon here this icon for back okay so the icon is 45 by 45 let's just go ahead and we can just download it so the thing is this this has some bad practices uh yeah some bad practices but uh since the design is made up you can just download this really uh but if i told you want something to happen maybe this button should show some loading kind of thing yeah you might not need to use the images you might just need to create it inside your inside like a fresh but i will just use a lazy man's work which is okay and then back the png it's good it's still a uh, best practice you can use it uh so how do we put these here you see so um let's see now we can actually get to this one is here so we will just go ahead and duplicate this okay so we'll duplicate this and then instead of design a button we will go ahead go to the widget tree and add an image uh the image is uh 45 by 45 so we will say 45 by 45 good stuff then let's change it from network type to assets click on this and then upload this and this is it that's a go great stuff now we have done that now what we need to do is let's look at the distance let's go to inspect and see the distance from here is 50 so let's click here and say 50 let's say 50 here and then this guy is going to be left aligned so not center aligned so we click on the row itself and say go this way <laughs> Now, uh, there are some problems, right? So there are some problems because uh, there is an image that is on top, right? There's an image that is on top of this, so it doesn't show properly. So uh, let's see how we can fix that. First of all, let's just give it the padding it needs. So, uh, oh, sorry, I need this one. A 24, let's uh, say 24. No, not this one. That, um, okay so i won't be able to see it again let's say image yes so 24 don't worry we will arrange this it's just about arrangement so let's locate who this guy is this guy is this guy aha and then this guy is here and then this guy is here and then this guy is here so for us to have this guy at the back this guy has to come forward <laughs> weird right so we will we will go ahead and drag this down here and uh well that fixes it that fixes this problem so we have this button and um uh okay so i think that's it there's some things at the background here which i wouldn't really want to go so far in implementing yeah because uh well you can uh you can do it yeah but i will not go, go that maybe at some point we will yeah, all right so uh let's go ahead and then we're done with this let's go back to uh pages then go to components and then this guy right click on it and duplicate component and then here let's see 375 by 579 the same dimension but let's uh call it our uh, sign up components all right so uh this is it so let's say sign up component oh no no not component bottom shit uh, it's good to maintain your naming all right so um this is it and uh we're good uh what we need to do quickly is just uh around this just duplicate this it's the same thing it's simple all right so um i will take of this okay and take of this and take of this and of course take of this right yeah so that's it take this off so here is uh, the column for this so i'll just click on this and ctrl d this is going to be for name okay so after this we'll try to find something more difficult to do so i'll just paste this here and then uh oh no 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 okay so this is supposed to be name now so name here and then email here no no come on uh copy this uh okay and then paste this here good stuff so password uh uh retype password 
so maybe ctrl d like this and then uh let's see let's copy this and paste it here all right guys so we're doing a great walk if you can see so this is it it's done all right okay so uh we're done with this let's look at the same the next thing so this is quite simple i believe you already know how to implement this all right so it's quite simple what i would like us to go ahead and do is maybe some more complex things this is a chief interfaces which we can do but let me see where we would rather start from i would like to start from here right so let's do a couple of screens i don't know how much time we have used so far but um let's design a couple of screens and then see how we can continue with this so um i will go ahead and uh design some more screens so if we do this and then do this or uh, this is similar to these so we wouldn't won't replicate a lot of things so i'll just do these and do this then look for something different and just create them i'll just be creating different stuffs okay just to give you an idea of how these things work so i'll click on this home and then i will go here to um, the widget tree and then click on add a new page and then click on create blank and paste it and that's it so click this delete it click this and say 375 good stuff and then let's just design this thing though when we're done with this we will create this and uh, maybe a couple of other pages and then we will end the tutorial okay so let's quickly create this how do you arrange things like this okay so let's uh let's do it now this is a row as you can see it's a row so we will just go ahead and then click on this to create a row let's go to our widget tree click on this to create a row and so a row we have created the first thing here is actually an image so let's just download the image right so i will just download it export menu and then this is a text so i will just maybe just copy it i like to just be ahead of myself let's go ahead and then add an image here the image size is um, 45 by 45 so i will say 45 by 45 network to assets and then click on this to upload the image and then at voila we've put the image let's come here and then this is a text and uh, the text is delivered to so this is uh, a column all right so this is a column things are stacked from top to bottom this is a row so we will just go ahead and click here and um, all right so you see this shows but not showing very well you see it shows but not showing very well let's click on this first and see the distance from the side so the distance from the side is 24 so I'll click on the, the image and say 24 good stuff and then let's wrap the entire uh, column with a container. Let's wrap it entire, entire column with a container. Uh, the container is uh, obviously white. And uh, so we will say width is infinite. The height is 812. Okay, you see now, you can clearly see the icon. So let's see the spacing on top. So it says 15. So I'll give this row 54, not 15, sorry. Yeah, so it's 54. And then now I will just copy these, deliver two. I'll click in here and add a column. That's the row and add a column. Inside the column, I'll add a row. I like to do it like this and add a text. And then the text I'm adding here is what we have here, deliver two. And then I will copy this. this is 700 by 12. I have to check that too. So here I'll come here and say 700. And here I will say 12 and here I will paste the color I picked great stuff and then here for this one this is a drop down okay so what we need to do is click in the in the column all right and um, and then click in here to add a drop down search for drop down okay so you see here drop down and that's it you come here to the hint text and paste what you copied it says halal lab office so this is it as well and um, 
the dime it's 400 by 14 good stuff but what we need to know is 107 by 17 the width so we will come down and say 100 and what 7 by 17 so this is drop down properties 107 by 17 great that's it now um it, it doesn't show it doesn't show properly you see uh, because we have, uh, it's not really 107, this is just a text. So, but everything here, this plus this is giving us 100. I had to hold and shift to select the two. So, 127.75. So, we can say 126 by 17. So, we'll say uh, 126, 126 by 17. So, uh, is it 17? 17. It is actually 17, but it's not showing everything. So why? Um, this is 400 by 14. Okay, so uh, there's a problem. There's a problem. So uh, there's a problem here. What we need to do is, uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, okay, so I am trying to figure out what the problem is. So one, two, six. The problem is with the height. So I don't know. Let's say twenty-five. Yes, uh, I think there's a problem with the dimensioning here. So I will just increase it to twenty-five, and I think it worked. So I think that's okay. So, but now it, it doesn't show me the office, right? You see, it doesn't show me the office. So. Uh, I will have to also work in something on the 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 width so i will say 135 uh 150 uh this is weird one 200 okay that's too much let's say 180 how does it look like here okay so um uh imagine what is the imagine here Okay, this is okay. So, uh, let's say 170, 160. Okay, so I think we can use it like this. Then click on the column and do the left alignment. And then here for this, let's remove that um, margin. Let's remove it here. All right, so I think it is these margins that is giving us the problem we had. So there's four here, there's another four here and then this imagine here is um, this distance so it's eight actually so we can say eight all right so um, I think this is okay for us okay so for real this is okay all right let's uh, go ahead and see the space in between it's 18 so I will say 18 here and then we have some good work done. So let's go ahead and then do something. So these, I would have just downloaded everything, but it's not gonna be good. Um, so this is, all right. So I'm gonna download these separately from, this one will just be a stack because we need to be able to put these dynamically from the backend when we're working it. So we would just go ahead and export this one first. It's 45 by 45. I will just copy it actually, Ctrl C, and click on the row and paste it. <laughs> Great stuff. You see? Uh, all right, so we need to go ahead and then bring this in, like bring the other picture in. So this is what I copied. Uh oh, it's just giving me only this. That's not what I want. I wanted this one too. So, okay, so let me see if I export this. What does it give me? It's gonna give me everything. And I don't want everything. Let's just export it and see how it looks like. Okay, it's giving me everything. I don't want everything. So, all right, guys. So I will copy these, right? Let me show you some hack. I'll copy this and paste. Uh, drag it out and it keep it here. Good stuff. Then I'll click on this and delete this one. All right. So now I can just export only these two things. So now if I check it out, good stuff. All right, so uh, I will come here now and then import this. Uh, this is it. 
I hope you're learning. And so if you like this video, please click on the subscribe button, click on the like button too, and turn on your notification bell so that whenever I drop videos, you will always be notified first. I'm very sure you don't want to be notified last. So I will right click on this and wrap it in a stack because uh, it will allow me to be able to put these other thing here. There's two here. So, so 25 by 25, I'm going to put uh, a container, right? So the container size is going to be 25 uh, by 25. Okay, good stuff. And I'm going to say it's going to be secular. And I will copy the color here. And I will paste it here. And uh, I will not just stop there. I will go ahead and right click on this and no not right click i'll just add a, a row inside this and in the row let me click to open this in the row i will add a text and then the text is going to be two and the color of the text uh let's go here at once and pick the color ctrl c all right, and then I paste it here, and there you go. So the font size is, uh, let's see, I think it's 700 by 16. So I will come here and say 700 by 16. I'll click on the row and center align it so that everything fits in well. See, we did a good job. So I'll click on this and click on the container. All right, so what we need to do now is say stack. So we will have to push it. Um, we will have to push it a bit from the left. So let's say, uh, let me see, will it tell me? Um, okay, so it tells me 26, but it wasn't even inside this. So we would just have to use our mind. So let's say 50. So uh, this is it. I think 50 just worked uh, almost almost perfectly. So, uh, but I think it didn't work so perfectly, perfectly. So we can say um, 35. Nope, that didn't work at all. 40, uh, something like that. Okay, so I actually think um, it looks bigger here, 25 by 25. The, the, the container looks bigger. Hmm, I don't know why it doesn't look bigger here. Uh, so let's say uh, 45. And then there's some push on the bottom here. Let's say 18. Uh, let's add more. Let's say 40. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work. 40. Oh, it didn't work. So, uh, all right. So I think this is it. And uh, well, this is the best we can just quickly do. All right, so uh, what we need to do now is, um, you see this guy is not towards the end here, so we can just click on it and see the spacing in between. So 93.25, so we can just say 93. So we will say 93 here. Uh, no, we're going to use a stack, okay? Let's remove the, oh, I see, this was a problem. So, um, okay, so container, um, yeah, that was it, that was the problem. So, because this would have been correct, it's 20, it's just supposed to be 20. So, 20, great, that's it. All right, so now the stack is 93 from the left, so 93. Uh, okay, so now we don't have like proper dimensioning here. So that's why we did it. This did not fit in very well. So we say 63 uh, Okay, so I think this is pretty okay. So we leave it here All right, so we will go ahead and then just uh, you know Try to implement this screen and then maybe we will have to pause this design and move on to the next one maybe like have different parts in this so um, All right, let's go ahead and then just Create this. Hey, hello. So let's uh, let's just copy this quickly and um, click on this. Click on this as well and say uh, row. Inside the row, there's a text, and so we paste it here. And then uh, let's see. 
so it has like combinations here so one is 700 by 16 one is 400 by 16 so let's split these right so let's click this and control D it. and uh, let's uh, change this one let's take this off okay so then here in this side let's take this one's off great and then here this is going to be uh, one is 700 by 16 that should be this one so we'll click on here and say 700 then we make this 16 then we will try to um, the spacing here is 24 so I'll click here and add padding here 24 all right let's add padding on the top let's uh, say 24 here as well good stuff so we say 24 I believe you're learning so uh, good then let's add this search scenario all right so um, this is a text field guys so I wouldn't want to waste so much of time I wouldn't want to waste so much of time let's go ahead and come to uh, let's come here and look for uh, sign up which of them was it okay it was a bottom sheet all right, so let's just copy this text field, not just the text field, we have to copy the container, All right? So this is it, like this. So I'm copying this, Control C, and then I go to Pages, and I go to Home This. I'll click on this and paste it. All right, guys, it's a lazy man's way of doing things, but let's do it, why not? And so I need to just copy this, search dishes and restaurants, and then come here to text field, and uh, paste it. All right, so then what we need to do is um, let's take the dimension here. So 327 by 62, right? Is it still the same thing? Let's see. Go to widget tree, 327. Is it 327? Uh, yes, it is. It is, it is, it is correct. So we need to put this icon here. And then let's click on the text field. Uh, Aha, now this one here is a little bit different. So let's click in here and give the container this particular color. Uh, yeah, this is quite different now. So uh, let's go ahead and put the search icon. So you click on the text field, scroll down, you will see something called icon properties. So you click on it and add a leading icon. It's going to be search. So you see here and we can pick this. So good. Now um, this is uh, 15 by 15, so you will give the icon size 15. That's it. It looks small, yeah? It looks pretty small to me too. So um, what's the, what do you think we should do? Well, it looks pretty small. I don't like it. So let's take it off. All right. So um, this is... Uh, the container so I'll right click on it wrap it in a row all right so that's this is another way of doing it click on this and add an image all right so the image is 15 by 15 let's export that image so let's click on this and export the image all right export search then then we can go ahead and then add here 15 by 15 would it also be so small? I think it will still be so small. But it looks bigger here. Maybe because I zoomed it in. Alright, so we will figure it out. Let's uh, let's change from network to asset and uh, bring the, the image in. And uh, we bring the image in. Okay. Um, aha. So... Let's see, the road and the text field. Okay, this is not gonna work out. This is not gonna work out. This is not gonna work out because, um, except we, except we wrap these uh, row in a stack. Yeah, except we wrap the row in a stack. But from what I see, this is pretty much not going to work out. So let's leave it the way it was and then just uh, country Z, country Z, country Z. Uh, let's leave it like this. So, and then let's just click on this and try to see how we can push it downwards, like uh, give it some content padding. Uh, let's say 18. Uh, didn't still work. Okay, so uh, slightly. Not really perfect. Uh, uh, but normally you can just work in it and tweak things along the way. So uh, let me just give the padding on this. 
Um, let's go to inspect and say 16. Uh, right, so let's come here to container and say 16. All right, so we will adjust it with time, okay? So, um, and then this is, uh, okay. So let's go ahead and do some other thing. Let's create uh, this scenario now. So this is gonna be a rule as well. So I will just click here, Control C, click here, Control V, and copy this as well. And um, it's a 400 by 20. I'm gonna delete this, click this one, and paste it and say uh, 400 by 20, 400 by 20. And then what I'm gonna quickly do now is, uh, this is see all. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see, let's see, let's see, what do we do? I'm gonna duplicate this. So which is going to give us this, so it's 400 by 16. So um, I'm going to paste it here and then uh, say 16. All right, then I will go ahead and click on the row and add an icon. Okay, hold on. Yes, actually add an icon. Uh, let's search for icon. Okay, so this is icon. And then I'll click on it and say right. I'm gonna search for right, and I think I'll pick something like this. The color is gray, so I'll copy this and paste it here in the icon color. And uh, that's it. So I will click on this and say and choose this, right? So like this, all right? So um, let's see what we're gonna do with this. So here the spacing is 24 on the side. So I'll click on this icon and give it some padding on the right and say 24, good stuff. And then here for this one, I will say padding is 132. 132 on the left, 132. So this is it, it's just perfect. Now we are done with that particular one, let's go ahead and then um, work on this. So these are, um, these are buttons, uh, well, I think when you click on this, when you click on this, it should just, uh, I don't know, it's a carousel. I don't know how it's supposed to really work, but I think when you click on it, uh, I don't, it's not a toggle button, is it? Let's see, let me close this. First of all, let's, uh, we're gonna put it in a row. So let's click, let's create a row. So click on the column itself and add a row. Okay, I think after we're done with this one, we won't continue the design. We will create part two of this and then part three. And like that, we will create as many parts as possible until we are we like exhaust some of the cool designs here. So we will go ahead and then create, um, what do we do here? Let's, uh, let's start with what? Let's start with what? Let's see. I want to see what a toggle button will look like if I told we want to use it that way. So this is a switch. Switch list title, switch, and then uh, toggle icon. So I think something like this. Does it have a background? Uh, this is not it. This is different, all right? So this switch is different from this. It's totally different. Yeah, so it's not gonna be these. Uh, can I see active track color? Uh, let's see, let's give this a color and see what we see. No, it's not inactive, inactive terminal. Uh, let's see this. Use color. No, it's not, it's not these, it's not a switch. It, those are just containers. So I will click on this and put a, a container. Yes, so it's a container. So I will click on this and say container is 103 by 60. So let me just copy the, the colored ones. So copy the colored ones, 103 by 60. So 103 by 60. So we have 60 here. What we need to quickly do here is we will just paste this here. And then um, what we need to do quickly again is we will just go ahead and, uh, you know, get this particular uh, guy, this container. So this is going to be 39. The border radius is 39. 
all right so um then what we need to do is this guy is 44 by 44 so inside this container we will click to add a row right inside that container and then the row is going to contain a container <laughs> nice the container is going to be secular and it's going to be 44 beautiful and so uh it's going to be grayish all right and then we will paste the color here let's look at it the padding here let's go to inspect the padding here is eight right so we will say eight for it great and then what else so there's a text here and uh, so there's a text inside the container so let's click on this particular one and add a text the text says all and uh, it's 700 by 14 so I paste it here and say 700 by 14 good stuff and then let's look at the spacing the spacing is 12 and um, I will come here and say 12 great now we have these now so let's go ahead and then just uh, we will just duplicate it all right and um, uh let's see let's see let's see let's see okay um we will duplicate it all right but before we duplicate it i want us to wrap it in something called list view because it's that's what is going to help us get this scrolling scenario scrolling effect so this is a container and this is the row okay so let's pick this container first and wrap this container wrap this wrap with a widget called list view all right uh it says invalid action now i will tell you why that didn't work now what we need to do for it to really work is um we're going to uh let's see how do we make this work okay so let's just go ahead and duplicate first let's duplicate this container ctrl d and uh the space between them is seven so this one is 135 um this one is going to be 135 135 and uh it's actually white this is it's 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 white and it says hot dog so let's paste this and say uh let me just pick it once i prefer to just copy it so and just paste it here it says hot dog uh it's white um now uh there's some things that we need to do it's white and the background is uh white too so it tends to disappear so we will click on this and click on the container and uh we will give it some uh, box shadow so we click this to give some box shadow so now you can see it somehow okay good now we will go ahead and then uh, give it some I think it was was it seven let's click in this and see inspect it uh, it's seven so we would just give it some padding here say seven and then um, I will control D this again uh, that's duplicate great so now we have the next one and uh this is gonna be burger burger okay so i'll just put this here and paste it now um the way it's supposed to work guys the way it's supposed to work uh let's say this noun uh it's not perfect because it's not perfectly perfect all right so um what do i do here all right let's try to see how we can make this work because this is supposed to be a carousel right it's like carousel rolling so this is the roll that contains it so if we wrap this inside um wrap this inside a list view it works so we have put it inside a list view good stuff congratulations to us but i, I don't know why this is not showing now uh padding let's move this thing from the top uh here this is gonna be 20 let's give it some let's give that padding to the list view 
or, or not. Okay, let's finish up first so that we'll know what to give to what. Now, uh, the, the list view is supposed to be horizontal, but we're going to get a problem. Yeah, we, we ran into a problem. I wanted us to run into the problem. So let's just reload this. Now, the reason is because you need to uh, give the list view a definite, a finite space to be able to dominate. Right. That means we need to wrap the the list view in a container that has a fixed height and a, and a width. OK, so uh, let's just wait quickly for Flutterflow to load up the interface. And so we can just redo it. I needed you to see the error because uh, most times, maybe when you're trying to do your carousel, you en encounter similar problems. So let's go back to home. And um, here in this part now, what we need to just quickly do, wrap this widget with uh, wrap the widget with um, with a container, right? So we will wrap it with a container. The container is going to take the dimension of these. Let's say um, let's say infinite width, right? And then not infinite width. Sorry, uh, it's just going to take um, maybe the size of the screen. So uh, so we're going to say we're going to say uh, sixty. The height is sixty. Uh, the height is gonna be like 65 something like that maybe and then the width here is going to be uh, the width of the screen let's say uh, 350 yeah, maybe 350 something like that uh, not exactly no let's use the width of the screen that's infinite okay good now we have this infinite scenario uh, the only problem that I have is the fact that the um, I need to give some padding to each of these containers. So uh, let's see. Let's click on this row and click on this container and add some padding at the bottom. Let's just say uh, four. Yes. So yeah, I just want us. Otherwise, we wouldn't see everything properly. So container and add four there okay so i think i should add the same thing here for everyone so four okay so we're good now so everything is fine i think i should also add the uh you know what i did for the other guys so the box shadow here as well no good good we, we we're good now so we have this uh, list view. List view now is in a container and the axis was vertical before and we tried changing it to horizontal and things crashed. Now we will succeed. You see, we succeed now. It's working now because we can now do scroll it from left to right. So I will just click on this and click on the container and duplicate it. Now you can see that one I just duplicated because it's um, it's it's covered. OK, well, you can see it somehow. Right. So. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and then click on the container that contains the list of view and give it some padding. It's 20 on the top, so let's say 20. We're almost done. We're almost done with our work. Okay, so uh, let's see what we are going to do next. Don't worry about this scenario, right? Should we worry about it or not? Let's add something else and see if things are going to adjust. So let's uh, pick this. Come. Uh oh, not Ctrl D. Let's uh, Ctrl Z. Uh, let's actually. I just copied it and pasted it here, and then Ctrl C this, and paste it here, and then here is C all. So we just need to inspect. So this is gonna be ninety six. So this is going to be uh, ninety six. So ninety six. All right. So um. It didn't still work. Uh, let's let's see what we can do for this. So all let's give the spacing here for this one. Uh, it's twenty four. So for this container, we have to give it some padding here. Twenty four. Okay, now we're good. We're really good. So um, and then this is fine. What we need to do now is just create this scenario. This is going to be a list view that just keeps going down. So let's just qu quickly create it. This is gonna be in 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 um in uh, a column. So I will click on this and uh, click on this and say I would like to wrap it in a row. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, I'll put this in a row first. 
then put this column and in the column I'm gonna put the container here and the container is uh, this one here 327 by 137 let me copy the color code immediately 327 by 137 so I'll say 327 by 137 and paste the background color uh, border radius it says mixed I'll click it again to see the real border radius so uh, no okay so all right so um the thing is this right let's go ahead and see some things let's see let's see let's see this is a uh, I can't really see the border radius for these uh, let's say it's 15 all right so 15 and then I will center line you see this is what's why I put it in uh, a row okay so what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and um, put some things here now so this was a column this is a column and then there's a container so I need to put a text so I put a row first and just like I keep doing and then I put her a text and then uh, I will go ahead and then just copy this text this is going to be uh, 400 by 20 so I will just paste it okay so uh, let's see what we are gonna do here Rose Gatton 400 by 20 good stuff and um, and then here Okay, so uh, we will just go ahead and then click in this column and left align everything. And let's see the spacing. The spacing in between is 8, so I will say 8 for the top padding. And then I will click in this and duplicate. And then I will copy this and use it for the second part here. And paste it. Then I will get the color code and I will paste it here good stuff now we're doing well like we're doing really well so let's see the space is five so I will click on this particular row and reduce it to five okay good and then what else we need to just create this particular thing so I click on the column click on this and then add a row and the row is going to contain different things so let's start so this is going to be uh, an image uh, I'll come to design and just export it then export this one as well and export this one as well so that's it so and this particular first one is 20 by 20 so I'll come back here and say add an image uh, 20 by 20 so 20 by 20 and um, from network to asset and then click on this to add the star and that's it okay so we have this and let me just close this quickly and um, I'll click on this row and add a text so this is the text that will be for uh, this so this is going to be 700 by 16 I paste it it's gonna be 700 by 16 good alright so uh, I will click on this ctrl C uh, click on the row and Ctrl V and then click on the text Ctrl C click on the row and Ctrl V what else then the, the, the shape again that's the, the image I'm just copying it and pasting just then I'll, I'll rearrange them okay so there's no need to recreate things when you've already created them before so um ctrl c uh then just go ahead and and click on this all right so we're good now we need to just go ahead and copy this free and then 
Uh, first of all, let's find the spacing. Let's find the spacing. Okay, 4, then this is 24. So uh, let's click on this and say 4. And then click on this and say 24. 24. And then this is going to be 4 again. And let's just space what is here. Let's change the icon, the image for this to the truck. So this is it. And then this is also going to be 24 again. Uh, this is going to be 24. Okay. And then this is going to be 4. Alright. So I'll click here to change the image of this one to this one. All right, so now that we've done this, let's check out the distance between this. It's 15. And then I'll click on this and give it a padding on the top, 15. Pretty good. We did a good job. Um, this one has a different uh, dimension, 23 by 16, right? And then this one, oh, okay, 23, this one alone, 23 by 16. So we come here and change it to 23. And we make this 16. Yeah, so that the car, the truck shows full. All right, good. Um, now we're done. We can just go ahead and this column now. Let's see. Uh, this column, we can just um, uh, wrap this column in. Is it? Is it a column? No, no, no. Let's, let's pick this. Wrap the whole of this row. Wrap it in a list view. Now the thing is this, these things are supposed to come from database. So, and for it to come from database, you have to put it in a list view. And um, that's it. So this list view now, space from the top is going to be 20. So yeah, so let's say 20 and we're good. And then here we can just duplicate that. These things are supposed to come from database, don't forget. And so this is going to be this from here, 28. Uh, where is it? This one is going to be 28. All right, so that's basically how this whole page works. And uh, I believe that you've been able to like learn a good number of things. And um, you have also uh, subscribed to this channel. Please subscribe to this channel, like the video, drop some comments. If you have some comments, I'll respond to them. And um, in the subsequent videos, we will work on, in, in, you know, implementing some other screens so that you can know how to do some of these things. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if I told you are a developer here, then you should also find ways to appreciate this, uh, you know, instrument called Flutterflow. Uh, because you can click here to view code and then you will see all the codes that makes up this entire design So you see here the splash screen. This is the code that makes the splash screen This is the code that makes this what particular one you see everything is knitted now And then this is the code for these this is the code for this one and this one and this one and then the login part and then the sign up part the home all right and then these are the codes that makes up the components the sign up bottom sheets all right so this is your pop spec the yaml and all of this is in the dart programming language so um it's one of the coolest thing that you can do and uh, i really advise you to take this like super serious and it to make your career like super nice okay so good let's go back to food and just click to view this particular part of their application all right guys please 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 click on the subscribe button and subscribe to this youtube channel and like the video as well drop comments if you have comments then please also turn on your notification icon your notification bell so that whenever i drop videos you will be able to see the videos all right so um this brings us to the end of the the class and uh, this is what we were trying to achieve so far and this is what i was talking about so this is a carousel that i created just for you guys and uh, i didn't make this particular column scrollable so we can't really scroll we can just go ahead and then click on the main uh, column here now and then we make it scrollable all right so let's see is there any other column i don't think so this is fine now so you can actually get to preview it again um 
Let's wait for a couple of seconds, you see it. So this is very beautiful. Well, this drop dance, we didn't really work on it very well. So we will work on this and clean it and make it really neat when we are ready. And then meanwhile, you can, in the subsequent you know, tutorial, you're going to be able to see how to put some images on this so that you can make your design even more interesting. I will just put one image just to show you how it goes, all right? So this is it. Now you can scroll down and see how it looks like. Okay, good stuff. So uh, for this one here, what you could quickly do to just put an image there is uh, if you come here and double click in this, all right? And then you come to design, uh, maybe you click in it again, you will see an image here. So this is the image. So we can just click to remove this one and then you see this image. But um, uh, the way the design did it, uh, this will be difficult to export. Let me try to export and see, will we see this beautiful piece of meat? Yes, we do. So we can just go ahead and um, click on this container, scroll down, go to background image, and say uh, from network to assets and then I just upload only one and just so that you can see it we will do more in the next videos okay so we upload the picture one so now it looks even more interesting you see this is basically the whole concept all right okay guys uh, see you in the next uh, video tutorial bye for now okay guys welcome to another video tutorial by no code africa and in this tutorial we're just going to continue building uh the food delivery application that we started building in the previous class and uh, i will just go ahead and continue designing so that you can get to see how to achieve these things yourself in the previous class we achieved this particular screen using a flutter flow so we just designed this particular screen and a couple of other screens we did this we did this and then we created these onboarding screens and a couple of these uh, login screens right so we will continue uh, from from where we stopped yesterday and just continue building on top of what we did all right so today we're going to uh, you know work on this and then we will build on top on different things we will reuse some components that we created from yesterday so that you can just get to see how to uh, you know reuse these components you don't have to always recreate all the time okay so uh, then we will build a couple of things uh, I will walk on some of these uh, uh, carousels and just show you how to achieve them all right so we will just do a lot of things but we will be faster this time around I hope that's really good all right, let's get straight to it. Uh, we're using Flutterflow, and uh, Flutterflow helps you to build application faster than ever. This is the uh, uh, result of the pre previous class. We did some really nice work here, guys. And um, let's go back to it. All right, so uh, today we are going to, uh, you know, continue from where we stopped, like I said earlier. And uh, oh, Flutterflow says more recent version of Flutterflow now. Let me just click to refresh. Okay, all right, so uh, it's always good to just refresh because uh, Flutterflow is always cooking up something. <laughs> yeah, so um, let's see how we can start with this. What, where do we start from? We're going to start from this particular screen, and what we will do is just we're going to duplicate this particular screen and then start working on this. All right, so this is quite simple because the only thing, the only different thing between this and this is just the scenario. Okay, and it's a carousel, so we will just create this, and I think this is already available. Yeah, this is just what we have here. Yeah, so let's get right to it. We will design a little bit faster, and uh, of course, extremely, extremely. All right, so um, we're going to design a little bit faster, and... Uh, make this really good so meanwhile if I told you have not seen this particular video before just check the description under this video and you will see the link to the part one of these tutorial okay so let's uh, let's get straight to it all right so um, this was where we stopped and uh, we will continue from here all right so um, this is the application and uh, what we will just do is right click on this and duplicate the screen now you have this just click here inside 
and then you will see these copy the co the name of this particular screen so we will just uh, click on this so I think it has different uh, these are different homes right so this is a one design this is another design and then this is another one right so uh, I think uh, we will just do this one then we'll move on to other pages right so uh, because we want to just build the application itself all right um let's just copy this second home and just create it right so i will come here and click on this and paste it all right then you can just click on this button to save it so this is it and uh what do we need to change uh after the search we have this scenario we don't have this carousel so let's click on that and let's go to our widget tree and locate the the container that contains all of those things and we can just take it off okay so taking it off uh, okay so um, I would like to say don't take it off take it off <laughs> yeah the reason is because we, we need to put something inside here right and um, yeah we need to put something inside here and the carousel is horizontal so instead of deleting it Instead of deleting it, let me uh, no, let that be. Instead of deleting uh, this right, this carousel here, rather let's just take off the content inside it, and then build inside it, right? So yeah, that's it. Because otherwise we'll have to now create a container all over again and do the setup. So let's just delete what is inside. So this is these are the things that are inside. So I will just um, click on it. Is that it, or is it the main row? Okay, no, it's just this container. So I click on it and delete it. Uh, then click on this and delete this. Click on this and delete this. And click on this and delete this. All right, so I just have my row now. And uh, what I need to do now is I will go ahead and then create these uh, container. So uh, I don't know if you can see it properly, but it has some weird design, right? So I can see, let me tap on it. So this is it. You see, we have these curved in design. It's, it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird, yeah. So um, it's going to require us to, uh, we will not have, we will not create this from uh, a container, right? So it's a bit tricky. We won't create this from container. What we would rather do is just export this all right so uh let's see how we can just quickly create this yeah it looks a bit tricky and you might want to run away from it but no let's let's stick to the fight so i'll click to export this let me see how that uh, image looks like all right so this is how it looks like it's not a perfect uh container that that is a square or a rectangle it has these upper part you know bend towards the top and we might not really be able to achieve that inside flutter flow so what i would rather say you should do is go ahead and download the container so sorry not the container just the uh this particular rectangle here just like i selected all right so and then we will build on top of that now the thing is this right inside this the way you see it you see this big rectangle here all right, it's gonna be it's gonna be an image actually. is built on top of um, is built on top of what we have here. So that means all of these things is inside a stack. Okay, so and then all of these can just be uh, a row that has a column and that has something here. Right, so we will just create it really quickly. Now you will get to learn some tactics that is gonna help you in your design process. Okay, so let's go ahead and then add a stack inside this. Let's just add a stack at once. Uh, should we add a stack or should we just put up an image first? I would like to put up an image first, right? So let's put up an image so that you can understand what I'm saying. So uh, this is 147 by 144. So I will say 147 by 144 and then change from network to asset. And click on this to upload the image and then I click this upload the image um, okay and then we have that image now good uh, 144 by okay so now the thing is this right um, it is not showing properly because we have an we have a container that 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 is uh, 
that is stopping all of this from showing so what container is that there's a container that the list view is inside so this is a list view and then this is a container so we need to increase the height of this container let's come here and see the overall height of all of these things so i'll click on the first one hold and shift and click on the second one and now you see that the height is um something around 172 so we can just say 175 all right so this container now is going to be 175 and like that we can now see these uh beautiful thing that we had created inside okay now um it has this uh, background image and all of it but um it's not really cool all right it's not like uh the way it's supposed to be because it has some extra borders yeah it has some extra borders but it's okay let's see if we can we can make it work so uh on this now um let me see on this this is the image let's give it some padding from the left and see what 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 padding do we have here let's say 24 let's give it some padding on the left 24 okay so now it looks like this um, not so visible here so let's go ahead and click on this image and um, uh, no that's not gonna work that's not gonna work let's uh, take out this and just uh, right click on this now and we're going to wrap it with a stack okay let's just see how we can achieve this all right so uh, and then on this stack now we're going to uh, put up a rec put up a container all right that container is going to be this other one here 122 by 104 now there's going to be a problem because this might look bigger than this one we might need to manually reduce the size of this so because of the because we are just uh importing like putting these as an image okay but um if it doesn't work properly we might just need to adjust the design a bit because we might just need to design adjust the design a bit let's see what we can do uh this is going to be 122 by 104 so let's say 122 by 104 okay and um you see it's not it's not gonna work so i'm clicking on this and i'm pasting it it's not gonna work the way we need it and then it has a border radius of 15 pixels okay so um you see it's not working the way we need it to work because this noun is bigger than this that was what i had imagined because this is an image and everything is like inside it so i would recommend that we you know alter this design a little bit yeah so just a little bit and uh so instead of instead of this image we will um take this image off so i just deleted that image click on this and um let's go ahead and then give these let's use this dimension 147 by 144 okay so let's say 147 by 144 all right so we have this and uh radius is like 24 so let's border radius is 24 how did i see that so you see it here 24 and then um it's actually white so uh let's pick these and change the color to white and uh, let's give it the box shadow so we give it a box shadow now it looks good and then we click on the stack itself and then click on this and then add a container to it now it's this is on top and then what we do is the container is um this particular one 122 by 104 so 122 by 104 and uh we get the color of the box and then we put it here as a few color okay and then uh the border radius here is 15 and we're good now you see uh it looks good it looks good but um what i would rather want to do is let's wrap these two things inside a column all right so that we can actually center align it otherwise we're gonna have issues with padding well we can achieve it you see this is like 13 pixels on the side and 13 here but i wouldn't want us to do that so let's click on this one uh let's click on either one uh let's see how would it work uh it's not gonna work if we put it in a container and uh if we put it in a container the stack scenario will no longer work 
So um, yeah, it won't work. So let's say uh, 13. Let's give it some padding from the side. Uh, 13. Let's say 13. Alright, so something like this. Uh, okay. So yeah, that makes sense. And uh, let's come here and say um, from the top, from the bottom, it's 68. Okay, so let's give it here 68. Okay, let's see how that works. Now, it, it does work, but it doesn't work the way we would want it to work. All right, so um, let's go ahead and uh, Control Z. Just take that back. Yeah, just take this off. Okay, then instead, let's look at what we have here. There's a space here on top. It's it's, it's twenty eight. So let's say the padding for this particular container is uh, twenty eight. It has a top padding of twenty eight. So now we have something similar. Good. This works now. Now, um, the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and then uh, put some things here. Still inside the stack, we're going to do some magic, all right? So we will click here and then add a row. And then in the row, we will add uh, our column. And uh, okay, so this is the, what we would do with the column. So we'll put a text in that, a row again. <laughs> yes, we'll put a row again in that column. And we will put a text again in that row, okay? And then we will paste. I believe you follow what I'm saying. Basically, there's a column, a big column that contains all of these. And then I now put a row, and inside that row, I put a text, which is for the pizza. And it's 700 by 18. And um, I will click here and change it to 700 and make these uh, 18. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I will just go ahead and duplicate this row, which is inside a column, and um, and I'm going to put this particular information, this one, starting, and it's 400 by 14, and it has a gray color. So I click this, then we're, we're going to rearrange this. So I put this, and then I will copy the color and paste it here. Uh, okay, so I hope my picture is not covering that and then click on enter and then we we're good now so now we have the scenario uh what we need to do is click on the column and make it uh left aligned yeah just put it like this and then what we're gonna do again is we need to push it down to this point we're not done but uh let's just push it down first then we will rearrange it so uh you see these has some padding from the top fifth uh it's it's not giving us the exact space from here. Uh, it gives us here 81, 81. So let's try, let's start with that first. Let's go ahead and then say this is the row. And then let's give it padding 81. It's not going to be correct. Um, if this is 81, right? And then this was the small space between this and this was 28. So that's 28 that's 109 kind of so let's say uh, well we're doing some math <laughs> 109 okay so now we have something like this uh, and it's around the correct scenario now what we need to do again here is in the row we're gonna add um, I will just add another column yes I'll add another column and in that column I'm gonna add a text okay so no, add a row first, and then I will add. Um, okay, so I will just add a text here. All right. So now that I have this, I don't know. My system looks like it's dragging. Okay. Now that I have this, I can just come back here and pick this money, money, four hundred by sixteen, and paste it here. Uh, four hundred by sixteen. Okay. And I will click on the column and use this particular alignment down. Great. Uh, okay, so this is it. And um, let's see what we can do. It's not perfect, perfect, but we will do something about it. Let's see. Uh, this is 26 by 19. We can do the same thing with these, right? So we can click on these and send it down. Right, so let's send it down. Both of them sent down, and then we can now use the padding below, like the space underneath them. So 
this is 16 so let's um, let's use 16 uh, let's just use 16 so the bottom here is gonna be 16 all right so push it up a bit and then on this column the bottom is gonna be 16 so it's some of the same position now we need to go ahead and, and and give them the spacing they need 43 and I can say here 43 did you get it all right now that's a lot of spacing and it looks like it's too much so um, and I think maybe some things are not really properly aligned uh, okay, so we will have to just now alter these a bit. So just use our eyes and alter it. So let's say 33. Okay, um, not exactly. Let's say 23 because I'm going to push it again from the left. 23. And um, this is the row, right? That we have all of this. Now let's give this push this row a bit from the side. So uh, I think it's going to be 13 as well. Yeah, so let's say 13. Okay, so now we have it like this, and it looks almost correct. This is good, I think. And then uh, what we need to do now is we need to just go ahead and then push the whole thing, like the entire uh, makeup of all of this, which is the stack. We're going to push it away from the side. By what value? By 24. So we will say here, I selected the stack, and I clicked on 24. And I push it in here. Good stuff, right? So let's click on this and see. Uh, it's just a container. All right. So this container can also be what you can use as your image. You can scroll down and add a background image. And yes, you can actually get it from the, the, the database. So um, now we have this. Uh, let's go ahead and then now all of this is going to be our stack. So this is what we will be duplicating. Let's see the spaces in between them. Um, let's click here and see it's 14 so let's just go ahead and duplicate this Control D uh, good and then let's select the stack and uh, what was the space again 14 and uh, let's change this to 14 and uh, click on it and duplicate all right so we can duplicate again if we want all right, guys, so we have successfully created this particular, you know, uh, carousel. I believe you've learned a lot there. Please click on the subscribe button and like this video. Thank you very much. Just punch the, the, the like icon on the face for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can, I can hear it. You know, I can hear you punching it. Thank you very much. All right, so um, the punching there is basically um, you no know, figurative. I just mean you should just click it, <laughs> just make it gentle. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, let's see what we're gonna do next. Uh, open restaurant and see all. Uh, that's already here. Mm, yeah, that's was already done. Okay, so we're good with this particular um, page. Okay, so um, I want us to go ahead and then do other things. So we are done with this. You could actually click this to preview it and look, take a look at what you have created, the magic you have created. Okay, so uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see what we have made. Uh, it's still loading. Uh, yeah, it's gonna show up soon. Okay, while we wait for it to show up, let's quickly go to something else. Now, I wouldn't want us to do this particular pad we can create this right yes we can um let me see how we can quickly create this this is a uh, uh this is basically a bottom sheet or something you would call a pop-up okay so it would be nice to create it um it's just above this so i think uh, what should they click on to uh hurry uh, offers maybe it just appears right okay or maybe when you click something and then this pops up oh true sure, true sure. you have to anchor it to something okay so i was just thinking about how this came up so this is a a, a container that actually uses a, a gradient so we have these gradients now and then we have um, dots here Okay, no, we didn't have dots to suggest uh, Figma stuff. Okay, and then we have this text, we have these, and then we have these, and the big button here. And then these stops at the background, I don't know what they are. 
Oh, I can see there. This is this is a stuff in the background. Okay, so um, a bit a bit. Uh, we're going to use a uh, stack to <laughs> to do this. Yeah. So I would love us to do this. Yes. Then we will use stack again here. Of course, that means the whole of this will be inside the stack, and then just this alone will also be inside. Wait, wait a minute. We can just use one stack for all of it and just push things around. Well, let's let's get right into it. Why are we just talking? Meanwhile, let's take a look at what we created before. And then, yes, this is it. See how beautiful this is? Man, imagine the lines of codes that you would have written. Okay, let me show you. All right, let me just quickly show you. Click on this button and view code. All right, so this is the lines of codes you would have written. This is a... Uh, you know, basically in Dart programming language, you would have had to install lots of packages and set up your scaffold and write a whole lot of codes. A whole bunch of codes, guys. Now, this is basically one of the coolest things about Flutterflow, right? So these are the lines of codes you would have created or you would have written to produce these beautiful designs. So this is a masterpiece. Come on, how many lines? We have 1,199 lines of codes that produce this, and we just designed it, right? And then this is it. Beautiful stuff, guys, really beautiful. All right, so let's, um, let's go back to our application and uh, let's create these beautiful pop-up. All right, let's get straight to it. Let's go to components. Here on the components, uh, we will just click on this to create a new uh, component. Uh, we will say create blank. Uh, let's call this uh, offer. I'll click on this and copy it and paste it here, offer. Beautiful. All right, yes, I like saying beautiful. <laughs> the world is a beautiful place. Everything we do is beautiful. Okay, so uh, let's get straight to this. This is going to be, um, all right, so this is going to be a bit different from how we do things. So we have these, uh, I'm thinking about how we're going to put this. Yeah, I'm thinking about how to put this. This, this is going to be a stack. Uh, container. Okay, so we're going to do something, something a bit weird. Okay, strange. Yeah, so this the real height of this thing is 327 by 395, right? 327 by 395. So let's start with that. So uh, we will click and uh, let's go to widget tree. And this is the main scaffold. Let's add, uh, let's take this off. Yes, let's add, uh, um, this is not a container, guys. So that's just a ca scaffold. Let's go ahead and, and, and add um, a container. And so this is a container, and the container is, e container is 327 by 395. Uh, 327 by 395. This is definitely not the size. <laughs> yes, this is definitely not the size. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't always show the complete size. So, but I have a trick around it, like, right? So this is not the right size of this thing. This is, um, this box, right, is 300 by 300. You see this box? That's why that means that we are not seeing everything. So uh, the last time I had to click this and then drag it around, but we don't need to do that. Let's just come here and make these, um, let's say, uh, Okay, we need to give some extra height because of this thing. You see, the outside uh, distance here is 19, so we will just say um, this is the width and this is the height. So 395 plus 19. Uh, 19, that will be 414. Yes, yes. Uh, 414. Yes, that's it, 414. So this is going to be, um, the height here is going to be 414, and the, the width here is going to be 327, you see? Good. So we will save it, and now we have this beautiful thing. Now this extra spacing here is going to help us on top when we're doing a stack. Good. I can't wait. So uh, let's go ahead and then set things up. This uh, container has a radius of 35 pixel. Let's come over here and give it a bother radius uh, uh, 35 pixel. Everything is smoothing now. 
and then we go straight ahead to uh, do what let's give it this gradient so i'm gonna copy the very first value of the gradient and scroll down and you will see a gradient here so you turn it on and then click on here to put the primary color uh cancel click here and paste the primary color that's one and let's copy the second one and then we can paste the secondary color beautiful ah well it produces it it's not the exact replica because you might need to play around with um with these other factors like the angle like the transition point the transition all of this and uh if you can properly like interpret what is here then you will be doing fine i don't really know how to interpret a lot of this okay so uh 109.56 let's see what that does 109 109 point uh, point what point five six I should say point six okay so uh, I don't know what does it do well it actually does push these things to the, to the left I think that's maybe that's what it does or let's see the other one the other one says 22 percent what does this do um, can we let's just copy this and say 22 uh, okay nah I think the other one is okay okay so yeah we, we, we can use it like this and the next thing we need to do is we can just quickly um, uh, set things up for ourselves let's put up a let's put up these column we'll put a column here right a column yes 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 a column why not click here and add a column and then we're going to put let me close this okay we're going to put a row let me copy this quickly we're going to put a row um let's say a row and in the row we're going to put a text beautiful text and we paste what i just copied i didn't memorize the, so it's 800 by 41 okay and um and it's actually white so let me copy this to 800 by what by 41 big font uh 800 by 41 okay so and then the color is white and uh that's it so um okay so hold on we're going to let's click on this and center align it i clicked on the rule to center align it hurry offers and then i will just click on this and duplicate it great what am i gonna do okay so this is the one i'm gonna add no hold on okay well i think uh, i will just copy this and make them separate yes but they are not really separate um yeah they're not really separate uh yeah so this might be hard to know the spacing between them but we will just have to use our eyes so um sometimes you might just need to use your eyes for these things so this is a uh, 700 by 18 uh this is going to be click on this say 700 then here you say 18. uh it doesn't really look like that 700 by 18. uh this was 800 by 41 700 by 18 it looks really small compared to what we have here uh i don't know why that is so um, this is sen and uh, this is sen as well. Uh, let me just be sure. Let's see sen. And well, it is sen already. Okay, so let's go ahead and then see the space between them. 35. So I will click on this and say 35. 35. And what is the space for these above? This is 82. And then we have 82 here good stuff and then here we will just duplicate this again ctrl d and uh we'll just copy this particular pad uh copy this this is 700 by 18 as well so we are fine all right so um click on the text and then paste this all right so um then there's a big button here what's the side of the button this is 279 by 62 okay so let's go here to the main column and say uh, button click on button and say uh, let me just paste what i copied so um the width is 279 
uh, I think the height is 62 and um, okay so here we're gonna do some basic things uh, let's come here and copy the color of the the okay it's not the color I think yeah I think it's the field color yeah it has a field color so then it has a border color white so um, let's go ahead and paste the field color right is that it I think so is it transparent hold on guys so I want to really see what is happening here so this is the button we go to inspect uh, okay so I think it is actually let's click on it again um, I don't think this button has a color I think it just has um, it has a border radius of 10 pixel 10 yes so border radius of 10 pixels so let's say 10 and then the fuel color is um, no fuel color so uh, where is that uh, it has a border color so fuel color oh my goodness uh, we are just gonna I don't know this is black uh, let's see use color yes so basically what I did there was I just uh, made it transparent all right so I just reduce that to make it transparent and then the border color I'm pasting this and click on this and uh, border width uh, I don't know what it is exactly so I'll say two and uh, yes that's that works and then we can click and check the space 14 uh, I would prefer to yeah so click and, and say 14 yeah so this is gonna be 14 doesn't really quite work so well because this is like way down here now the reason is because we have some space we have some space um, we have some space down here uh, let's see let's see let's see okay so what what are we not doing right um, this is 35 well th the thing is this is not properly done the designer did a great job yes but it's not properly done so I don't get the correct spaces so um, we just leave things the way they are uh, for this one I would just add extra spacing maybe 34 yeah something like this and I will leave it like that we might not get exact replica of what we're doing but we will get something nice so let's see this is uh, that picture of the diamond so let's um, let's go ahead and export it and see what we have export it let's view it and see what we see okay this is it all right good so the dimension is 270 by 190 so how do we put it um, what I would prefer we do is uh, wrap the whole container right uh, this has to be at the back of our text otherwise we're gonna have some issues so um, I will put a stack in these uh, column yeah I'm gonna wrap this column with a stack let's start with there wrap with a stack and then click this and add an image the image is 270 by 190 so I'll say 270 by 190 okay so let me delete this extra one here okay so now we have this I will say network turn it to asset go and pick the image here and open it and then from there we'll try to position it around okay so now it's on top you see it's on top so it's uh, it's going to like affect a lot of things so what we don't want is we don't want it to be on top so I'll click the column and close it and I'll push it downwards here okay so now it's actually at the back so we click on the image and let's try to see how we can push it around so let's go to inspect and say 37 and 34 okay so from here is going to be 37 all right and from this side is going to be 34 guys we did it we did it great stuff all right so um we're done with this particular one now it's just remaining this thing so let's say we're gonna wrap the entire container with a stack now this is gonna be tricky wrap it with a stack 
all right and uh, this is um, uh, this well we can actually create this by ourselves but I really want to be lazy yes I want to be lazy so I will click on design and just export it the way it is instead of creating a container and making it a circle all of that so um, I will subsequently tell you the downsides of these things so so um done the dimension is 45 by 45 so now this is it i have my stack i'll click to add an image to the stack and the image is going to be 45 whoa 45 by 45 ah okay now this is gonna be tricky might not be as tricky as i imagine i just figured out a way around it so um click on network click on asset Click on this to upload the image we uh, we downloaded, and now we have this great stuff. Now we have it; it's positioned properly. Let's click and inspect, and see the distance between this. So it's two hundred and eighty-two. Okay, so let's hit it. Let's click here. Padding is two hundred and eighty-two on the left. Oh yeah, and then uh, the next thing we need to do here is. Uh, click on this and padding the distance from here is 369 so from the bottom is 369 did we get it no it didn't work no it didn't work but do you know what is gonna work this is gonna work now the space between these and this we're gonna push it down 19 pixels downward what are we pushing this container that contain this other big guy so we'll push it down 19 pixel uh, no not the image the container and we're pushing it down 19 pixels down what and it worked that's it guys beautifully done so we got it we got it right and um, and that's it so let's see how we can just uh, position all of this so we will go to the pages and uh, let's go to our uh, maybe home too yes uh, did I just click it click it yes so I think when the user comes here right they can um what what can they do maybe when they come here and then maybe they click on this place to start searching for something all right yeah maybe they click on here to start searching i think that's one of the first things that users would do so they click here to start start searching uh no let's not put it there mm, it's a promo so uh, what is the first thing that they would click? Let's think, let's think, let's think. I'm thinking of what they would click. Uh, so, um, let's say they click on this, this menu icon. Maybe they want to just, you know, go around things. Uh, but that's still not a very good idea because this is supposed to take them to somewhere else. Ah, okay guys, so I will click on here and just duplicate this. All right, so I will put something new here and say promo yeah because I think that's how it should be promo so uh, maybe give it a color a primary color maybe um, maybe this color yeah promo and then give it some padding uh, maybe 14 yeah so something like this so you can click on the promo and then go to action click on action and search for bottom sheets. So bottom sheets, click on show, select the company you want to show, it's the offer we want to show, and that's it guys, that's it. So we can, um, well, we can uh, do some other things. I think uh, this is okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so now one thing is left. Um, when you click on this, the bottom sheet is gonna show, but how do you close the bottom sheet? So let's go back here. I want us to just do it at once. Let's come here to offer and then click on this image. Go to actions, click on add an action and search for bottom sheets, bottom sheet and say dismiss. So um, you click uh, on the, the previous part. Where is it? You click on here and uh, let's say you come to home and you click on promo, it pops it up. Let's go ahead and look at see how that looks like. Okay. I hope you're enjoying this video and if you are enjoying this video, please just click on the like button. Alright, that means you like the video. 
and then uh, click on the subscribe button meaning that you like the channel and then also click on notification bell meaning you want to always be reminded whenever I publish a new tutorial video that will help you get to know how to build mobile applications faster than ever and in simple ways all right so this is our application right good and then I can click on promo and et voila well it pops up but it's not popping up the way we want it everything looks good but not the position we wanted so let's click this to close it closes let's see what happened there let's come to the offer pad and see what happened okay so uh, let's click on uh, this widget tree and see so we have a container here good this is our off our stack everything is inside this stack so we're going to have to wrap these uh, widgets with a column good stuff and then we're going to it's already center line and I think this works now okay so um, let's go ahead and then preview uh, this again let's go back to home and then preview it again I think at this point it's gonna give us what we want exactly how we want it all right so then we will start doing something else so um, uh, you I think you already know how to do this this is a carousel and you can create this can you can you not um, and then this is this um, okay so I'm thinking about what we could just quickly create that would make sense uh, huh. so I think uh, I will just be jumping around things uh, we will create some things that will create fast. Don't worry, we'll move around a lot of these things and then you can just see what we can create. Uh, okay, so I think we will do this. Um, and then we can just quickly do this uh, and then copy components. I will just show you how to copy components and get things done faster. And then I will just close this and uh, click on my promo. And, and voila it pops up it's popping up like way higher than normal <laughs> okay but none is centered but we can close this uh, yes you can do extra things to just reduce it it's just to reduce the height so if you click on this uh, the height is what you want to change so the height of this screen is 800 and, 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 and 12 and I think that thing was like I don't know so you can say 500 and then let's preview it again so that's going to be the height of your bottom sheet, like what you get to show. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, see what we're going to do here. All right. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. This is still loading up, right? And when it's done, we will check it out. Okay, I think it's done. So let's just go ahead and look at it. I just wanted us to have something good. Okay, so now it shows at a reasonable position. Okay, this is good. We can use it. You click on this and this pops up and beautiful. All right, so uh, we're done with this. Let's quickly go over to something else. Let's come here and uh, I would like us to do this. All right, so um, we can do this very simple carousel. Not so simple, but we can do it. But they are mostly buttons. So and uh, let me see is there a particular part we could copy and use uh, yes we can uh, okay so let's go ahead and then copy uh, I think the very first home it isn't so complex let's uh, right click on it and duplicate page click inside and then let's say we want to just do this so click on this and come to search okay so we click in search and um, all right, so we put up these. What we need to do quickly again is we need to go ahead and set it up. Let's uh, let's set some things up. Let's set some things up. Let's set. Uh oh, a lot of things are different now. So this is search here, and then these uh, things are a bit different. Ah, uh, okay. So no problems we'll adjust uh we'll adjust as we move so this will be gone because we don't have it here and uh what else recent keywords can still be there let's just uh you know use things so click here and then click this to replace with this 
and then this take it off and this take it off as well okay so now we have that okay so uh what do we need again uh let's take this off this column off take it off and then this image let's come here and just uh click on this click on design export it you can choose to create this from scratch if you want uh i mean this entire thing if you don't want to export the image so it's 45 by 45 and uh, i will just come here and upload the image okay and uh let's see click on this uh, all right so we have that and uh, the next thing i need to do click on the roll go to my widget tree click on add a child to the widget click on text okay good and then i need to add this search okay so it's um 400 by 17 so i will just paste it here and then say 400 by 17 good stuff okay so uh we will just go ahead and then um let's see what do we do we need to just go ahead and position it a bit uh this is the whole container no let's say stack close this stack and push this stack here okay so we have the text here nice and then we need the space in between is 16 so we will say uh, 16 as a padding on the left and then this stack what is the distance from here so this stack is uh, uh, 167 so we'll say 167 uh, yeah so this works okay good and then what we need to do next is uh, we have this okay we have this we can take a uh, uh, hold on hold on guys so this is the carousel okay so this is a carousel and uh, we can just go ahead and then take up this so the thing is I'm reusing components and uh, I think there's really nothing wrong with that so it's actually one of the ways you can build build things really fast you know so delete this um, delete this uh delete this okay good now inside this row now i want to go ahead and then click on this and add a button so that's the button i add and um what i need to do now is check out the size of the button 89 by 46 uh oh, let's see 89 by 46 so 89 by 46 okay and uh, the 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 border is this is the border color and then it has a radius of 33 radius border radius 33 pixels so we can change this to 33 and uh, this field color we can um, I don't know is it white or let's see let's go to design uh, okay so I think it's white so yes so let's pick this and then let's give it the border radius um, this is the border radius paste it and uh, I think that's it let's go ahead and put in some text for, for it so bulgar borga so let's just go ahead and paste this yeah borga boga nice <laughs> okay so um, we have the button uh the color of the button is white so that's why we couldn't see it so click on here and uh come here to the text color and paste it good stuff now we need to see the font size is 400 by 16 so we will say uh come here and say 400 and say 16 what it, yeah i think i think so so uh click on the button and uh duplicate it ctrl d good stuff so this one is gonna be sandwich i copied the text click on this and check the entire dimension it's 102 by 46 so uh click on this paste it and 102 beautiful and then what's the space between it's 10 pixels so we will come up here and say 10 pixel and uh uh, this one looks as small as this, but not slightly. Okay, so I think I can just um, duplicate this one. 
uh, Control D and uh, copy this and uh, check the size is 72 by 46 click on this paste the the text and then let's go to 72 and uh, click on this and duplicate it again and this one is gonna be sandwich it's 86 okay so I copy the text and uh, okay come on I didn't duplicate this so ctrl D click this 86 uh, 86 I think do I still have this uh, no when you duplicate technically you're copying okay so I just have to copy this and uh, delete all of this gibberish and sandwich okay so come to the burger path and uh, burger actually guys so don't mind my intonation so 24 give it this 24 is padding here okay so we're good now we have this scenario and uh, let's go ahead and copy this one copy this click in this and uh, paste it click on this and delete it and click on this and delete it good stuff and uh, what do we need to do so we need to just put up this particular thing it's a it's it's exactly a list view but it's simple so um, let's duplicate this role right so we duplicate the role because I don't want to start suffering to uh, add a row and then try to position it push it upward so I just duplicate this row so that I will put the these things inside those rows then duplicate them inside a list view you see what I mean so uh, how do we start creating this this is gonna be a row we already have a row now we need a um, we need a we don't need a column for this well we can just put in a column for alignment sake so we put a column here so this is one column this is another column so a row let's take this off and inside this row we're going to put a column first column and that column is going to contain an image that this is the image and the image is going to be 60 by 50 uh, so we come here and say 60 by 50 i think when we are done with this particular part we might just end the tutorial for today okay uh all right except we see one other interesting design to make before we continue in the next one okay so i don't want the videos to be so so long anymore so uh we have these um this part let's say uh okay so i have to this is the image well image i use an image here instead of a container mm. So I can't have, oh, come on guys, I will delete this. I want to use a container. So, cause I can always add an image in a container. So uh, container, I think it was 60 by 50. Yes. So I would say 60 by 50 and the color is gray. Copy this and then paste it here. Uh, it has a border radius it says mix but it has a border radius uh, I don't know what the border radius is I don't know uh, it's not showing me what the border radius is so I will go for 16 I hope it's not too much uh, it's way too much uh, let's say 8 okay so I think 8 is fine and um, now we will go for this pansy restaurant uh, it's 400 by 16 so we click on the row and then we add a column okay so we add a column here and then we will add um, a row and in the row we're going to add a text okay and uh, we paste what we added uh, don't worry about the spacing it's because we use uh, we had inherited an alignment that said space these things apart okay so we have this we can just click on it and then maybe do something like this okay don't worry we'll arrange it so we have these restaurants what I did there was I clicked on the row then I changed the alignment okay all right so um, I'll click on this click on the row and duplicate the row 
All right, so in here we will put a star. So we have a star here. So I'll say um, export it. Uh, okay, then this one is a text. So the star is an image. It's 15 by 15. So I'll click on this and delete this text. Um, it's an image. Okay. And it's 15 by 15, 15 by 15 from network to asset. Click on this to upload. Uh, this is the star we uploaded. And then we will click on the row and bring in a text. This is the text that we have. Then we can just go ahead and paste this 4.7, find the spacing between them go to inspect and I think it's four four pixel apart so we put it like this and then we can click on the column and use this particular alignment and I think we're good so let's go ahead and um, let's see how we can space this let's bring the two of them together so we use this particular alignment I clicked on the row and then did this good then I will click on this and see the spacing between so it's gonna be 24 so I will say 24 away from the edge and then this column so this is gonna be 10 pixels away so we will say 10 pixels away apart okay and then something beautiful well I think you might be wondering how am I gonna put this line so this is how I, I, I would normally do it this is the row so I will go ahead and remove these padding on top all right so just remove it first and then right click on the row and wrap this row in a column the reason is because for us to be able to achieve what we have here we are going to stack things from top to bottom now don't forget this is just going to be a single component and then we just duplicate it for the rest and i think this is supposed to come from a database in a list view okay so uh, i have wrapped it in a column and uh, what i just need to do is add a um, add a container in that column that container is going to be the uh, width of these uh, lines. So there's a gray line. So let's see the gray line. So I don't know. I can't click to that line. I don't know why. So maybe. So I would just say that the, the, the length of the, the width of the line is 327. And I, I, I know it's gray. Um, okay, so this is it. I can just copy it. It's gray. It's 327. 3 to 7 the width is just use a uh, 1 and then the fill color is this and you enter uh, if you look at it you will see that there's a line there all right so um, but now that line needs some padding so we will see what we can do for the padding padding is gonna be 14 so uh, we will go ahead and click on the we need the column so let's go to the column this is a column close this row so that we can see our container and then give it the padding of 14 from the top good stuff now we have these perfectly done for us let's go ahead and uh what do we do now so let's go ahead and uh click on this row identify the column so this is it all of these things now are inside the column this column so and don't forget these things have to be repeated and they have to come from database so when you're designing your front end you have to put back end in mind so what i will simply do now is i will wrap this column wrap it with a widget called list view all right so i wrap it up like that and it's a list view because this is what you're going to query when it's time for backend. You have to query these so that all of this can show. So I'll click on this now and I'll say Ctrl D to duplicate. All right. And um, I need to give it some spacing. So the spacing here is 14. So um, this is going to be, uh, let's say, column 14. All right. So I, I've clicked on that. 
uh, okay so I can just go ahead and duplicate again but technically uh, you don't have to duplicate this because it's supposed to come from database but just according to the design duplicate it now we need to go ahead and give some spacing on the list view so I'll click on the list view give it some spacing for this place so this is gonna be 20 so I will say 20 all right so we have this design now and it's perfect if you see it's just uh, it gives us what we wanted but now you see this particular part is quite different from here right so we can just delete this uh, row can take it off and uh, delete this as well okay so now how do we get to put this particular part don't forget we have a page I think it was in home version 2 we have this carousel and uh, we all we just need to do is go copy it all right we just need to go go copy it and um, first let's copy this one first let's copy this row first go to the search and click on the column and paste it all right so why did we copy we copied because of this popular fast food text here so I'll copy this and click on this and delete it click on this and delete it click on this and paste this here beautiful stuff then I will come back to home version 2 and then look for the go to the widget tree and be sure that I am selecting the appropriate widget so the appropriate widget here is going to be the container all right so I'll click on the container and copy it Ctrl C is to copy and then go to the pages go to my search page click on this and paste it and that's it guys we have these design beautiful okay and uh, let's see let's see the spacing here is uh, 32 so we can click on this and uh, give it even more spacing so 32 and um, if you observe um, some things have changed a little bit like the height of this guy is quite different so uh, but you can you can manipulate and change that if you want but for us to be able to scroll down just make sure that this uh, column is scrollable so that's it and uh, that's it so we can now go ahead and just preview it and see what we have done and so before we end this particular tutorial let me see if there's something else we could quickly do uh, so what we did here was we created this particular one and then we created this and now we have created this so um, I would have loved to do this particular part but the video will be too long and so we will stop here we'll continue in part three all right we'll just keep doing this until we're done with it all right okay guys uh, I would like you to just remember to click on the subscribe button and subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel and please like this video as well. Drop comments. I will respond to them. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, let's take a look at what we have just created. So this is what we have just created. Uh, beautiful. Like it's super beautiful, right? Like really beautiful. Okay. And um, this is it. This all works very fine. Beautiful stuff. So we can go through the pages that we've worked in by clicking this. Uh, you can just see some of the designs. Um, so I think this, yeah, so beautiful, right? And uh, okay, so these are the designs that we've created so far. I hope you enjoyed learning uh, with me and practicing as well. So um, we will get to continue the remaining part of the food delivery application in the next video. See you in the next video. Thank you very much. Hello guys, welcome to another video tutorial by No Code Africa. And in this tutorial, we're going to just con continue from where we stopped in the previous class. And uh, in the previous class, we're working on this uh, beautiful food delivery application. And uh, we will continue working on a couple of designs and pages just so that you can get familiar with how to uh, use uh, Flutterflow to create your user interfaces for your applications. Okay, so um, so many of the things that we have done, they are similar in design, kind of, but we will try to see how we can just uh, create a couple of other things, right? So something like this, I know that you know how to do, <laughs> do it already. Yeah, because we have done a lot of things that just uh, looks like this, but we will just try to go around creating some more designs just so that you can have an idea of how to do these things yourself, okay? 
and then um, I will just try to see uh, a couple of pages that we could create these are like very simple pages but we can just create it yeah so I think I will start with this then I will also uh, go ahead and then run on a couple of other designs too so let's see um, I'm trying to see how we can work on the simple ones first before we get to the very very difficult ones so I think I like this page that has to do with payment so I think we can work on these pages so um, these pages has to do with cart right so I think we can start with this yes 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 let's, so let's just see how we can design all of this in this particular tutorial we do this we do this then we do this and we do this and then we end the tutorial for this particular class yeah let's do it okay so um we will just go ahead and then just copy this uh just copy the name of the screen that's like our regular practice and uh we don't really have anything like a screen we need to duplicate to reuse so we will have to create this from scratch so i'll click here to create a new page click to create from create blank and then paste the name i copied and then we have this click on the up bar delete it and then we will go ahead and start designing so this is how this one is and um, the screen here is 375 uh, so we have our screen here already 375 so that's a good thing uh, here we have the background color is this I just copy it and then what we need to do now is go to the widget tree this is a widget tree uh, this is a scaffold and then there's a column here so what I wanted to do is wrap this column wrap this uh, column with a widget the widget is a container the container has an infinite width and it has a height of 812 okay so it's basically the height of the screen and then we will paste the background color here and then we're good so come back to the column go here and then we start working on this particular part so here is a row and then we have um, these uh, this uh, image all right so we could use this as an image so let's just go ahead and export the design so click here to export uh, export it and then the size is 45 by 45 and so we're going to put all of this inside a row so let's do it okay so we will um, this is a column we click to add a, a row to this column and then in that row we're going to add a text okay great and that text is oh no oh no 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 not a not a, not a text first we are going to add uh, an image that image is 45 pixel by 45 so we put it here 45 we come here and say 45 good stuff we come over here change from network to asset so that we can upload the image from our system we will go to downloads where your stops are and then we will just bring this up great now we bring that up and um, it shows here and uh, we need to put a text well let's just look at the let's look at the space between them so it's 24 so i will just give these padding on the left 24 all right and then i will click on the row itself and add a text to that row so that's like adding a, a widget a child to that widget so that the child is a text um so i will just copy this the font size uh font property is 400 by 17 I will just go ahead and paste this here go back and copy the color and then come here and change this to 17 and paste the text color here and we're good now the next thing I need to do is I'll just go ahead and duplicate this text ctrl D and I'll use it for these particular ones so I'll just copy this and uh, it's 400 by 14 so we are good so click on this now and then uh, paste paste it edit items 400 by 14 okay go back and copy the color of the text and come back here to the text color and paste it and then now let's separate them all right so how do we go about this we can just go ahead and then um, let's use the normal spacing so we will click on this and look at the spacing here is 18 so we click here and then uh, come here to the left padding and say 18 then for this particular one we would just say uh, click on edit items and check the spacing 145 so the padding on the left is 145 and we have this beautiful so select the row itself and look at look for the 
not the roll just select one of the biggest and tallest elements here and then look at this the padding the top padding so it's 50 so we can just come here to the roll and give it a padding of 50 from the top and then now we have this design good stuff uh, what we really need to do quickly is uh, we are going to go ahead and um, do some setup so this is the one we're going to do now and uh, basically this is going to be achieved by setting up a roll so we will just click on the column and then click add a child to this widget click on roll the first thing we're going to do here is going to add a, a column so we're going to add a column it's going to contain the image in this case it's going to be a container the container is going to be uh, 136 by 117 so we will say let me just copy the the color of the container so uh, it's not giving me what I want uh, okay so I need this grayish color it's not giving me what I want okay so I will just go somewhere else and see if I can get it uh, it's saying FFF why why can't I get the exact color um, okay now this is a bit tricky uh, it's not showing me all the colors that are available on this screen so there is um, okay this is the color uh, it's not giving me what I want I'm supposed to get the gray color here and I can't get it and I don't know why okay so um, it can't be FFF that's white and that's for the button that's for the small icon that we have inside so um, this is gray okay so I will pick a random number random color to depict that so let's go ahead and uh, um, let's say 136 by 117 136 so we'll say 136 by 117 okay and then I will come here to the fill color and pick uh, I think I'll pick something around this color okay so this will likely work um, yeah but we will just work with this okay so um, and then let's go ahead and get a, a border radius 25 come here and say 25 and we have border radius there and then we can go to inspect and see the distance apart is 24 so we can say 24 here and then what else uh, let's go ahead and click on the row itself and add another column so we see here we're going to add another column so click here add another column quickly and then i will just copy this this is going to be 400 by 18 all right so i will add a row so that i can add a text inside that row and then i will just paste it here so ctrl v and uh, 400 by 18 okay then we will need to do something so um, let's say 400 by 18 uh, let's just copy the color uh, hex here so we paste this good and then uh, another thing I could just simply do is that and now uh, flutter flow crashes because it doesn't have a definite space in there so we will have to put it inside a container instead so here is one two six by forty four I'm trying to reload my flutter flow because it crashed I was trying to um, make the text to flow downwards instead of like on a particular axis and uh, flutter flow said no all right so we will have to put it inside a container instead all right so uh, I will show you how to do that quickly okay so let's go back to our widget tree and uh, locate the page we're working on and uh, it was edit cart and this is it so we will just go ahead and then wrap this in uh, a container wrap widget in a container all right and then we will say one two six by forty four okay so the containers dimension is one two six by forty four uh, clear their color of the container and then we have this good so um, what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and then give some spacing it's 20 on the left so let's look for the the column and give it some padding on the left say 20 good stuff 
and then uh, this column now we're going to add a row and in that row we're going to add uh, a text so it's gonna be for the money here so um, click here and put the text and paste it with this uh, quickly copy the font color and then paste it here and um, something I didn't take notice of it's 700 by 20 okay and that's the font property so you come here and change it to 700 and change this to 20 good and then click on the column and click this to make the alignment to start from the end here and um, then we have to just create this then we now duplicate this put it in the list view first and duplicate it so uh, how do we go about doing this so this is going to be a row um, so it's going to be a row inside the col column so we will just click on this and duplicate this so uh, that that's it then here we just copy this it's 400 by 18 uh, click on this and paste it let me go copy the color so it's going to be 400 by 18 so I just click in this and put 18 here the color that I copied I paste it here and um, and then that's done we now need to go ahead and then do these uh, buttons here right so this is more like a cycle uh, a sec a container then inside the container is an icon we can do it two ways all right so we can just go ahead and like copy the um, copy the, the these as an image which I would prefer to do it that way it will make things really fast for us so export that is 22 by 22 click on this and export it as well uh, okay but in the, the consequences of these is the fact that it can end up making your application bigger, like heavy, right? So the best is you should actually create this using the widgets inside your, like maybe the container widget, then you put the icon and all of that. Because these accumulatively will make your app big, like the exported APK file of your, you know, application will be big. So, but let's just do this and make it faster, all right? So, um... So we have these as text, and then we have these here. Uh, so click on the roll, click on this, and add an image. The image is 22 by 22, 22 here by 22 here. And the, um, okay, so we will just go ahead and change from network to assets, and click on this to upload it. Uh, let's find it here. So I think this. Uh, okay. So what is? Okay, I'm not getting the real thing here. So uh, one is pl positive. What is? What is this? I can't really see what is what is there properly. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, okay. So let me come here again and and and. Okay, I think it should be the ellipsis, right? Yeah. So that's it. So let's duplicate this image by saying Control D. All right, and then here. Um, okay, so I think what I need to do now is come back here for this, and then replace this with the previous, like the correct uh, image. That should be this ellipse. So um, put that, and then I will come to select. Uh oh, that didn't work out very well okay so let's come back here yeah it didn't work out very well so click this and click this okay so uh okay so we will click on this hold down on this and Control g to group them all right so i just had to group these two things now and then i will export it quickly again all right so um i will click on this now and uh, bring it in okay so this is it it's now in and um, okay that's good I will click on the roll or maybe just copy this text just to make things faster then click on the roll itself and paste it and then uh, here you go just copy this to it's um, 700 by 16 so I will just paste it here 
700 by 16 uh, 700 by 16 good so we have it like this and um, let's go ahead and just copy this particular one uh, Control C then click on the row and paste it all right so and then now we can just go ahead and then bring the other the real one uh, it should be uh, group yes good now we're going to have to do the spacing so let's click on each of them and see spacings 54 this is 19 so let's click on this and say 54 and then uh, 2 here is going to have 19 I think here 19 here should also be 19 and that's it so we're good let's look at some other things that we need to space so here and here is 10 here and here is 17 so this is going to be 17 uh, and then these uh, we will click on the row is going to be 10 all right so I think we are good now and then the whole of this that's the whole of the row that contains all of this click on this and look at this it says 24 so we will give it a padding here 24 okay now no let's not do that let's put that padding on the list view so let's wrap all of this wrap this with uh, a list view beautiful because uh, basically all of this thing is supposed to come out from the back end right so this is more like uh, a list right so it has to be inside a list view that's why I'm putting it inside a list view so I'm just selecting all of this now the row I will just go ahead and duplicate it and uh, let me select the row again and give it some spacing uh, I think the spacing between themselves is 32 okay so I will say 32 then I will select the list view itself uh, and give it the padding on the top 24 which is what we would have gotten here all right so that's it okay so now we are good with this we have our design like this beautiful 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 good now now we have this what we just need to quickly do is this particular um, uh, pop-up it's a bottom sheet so we will just go ahead and then come to pages go to components and then click on this to uh, create a blank uh, bottom sheet we will call it um, edit cart edit cart uh, let's say bottom sheet bottom sheet you can always call it anything you want as far as you can remember it so I will um, let's look at it so the dimension of this is going to be 375 by 310 so let's go here and change it first here 375 by 310 310 okay then you click on save and then you have it like this so this is dimension of your 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 of your bottom sheet okay so let's click here and uh, this is our scaffold for the bottom sheet and now we want to start putting all of this inside so um, I would have loved to go copy things but no let's just let's just do it like this so you see what is going on here so we have that the the whole of this container has a border radius right so border radius of 24 pixels so uh, let's this is not the container so we have to click on here and put in a container the container is going to be 375 375 by 310 and that's it so we will give it a border radius of 24 was it 24 or 25 24 is correct now it looks like that and it's correct so we will go ahead and put a column inside this container that's it that's a beautiful column inside this column we're going to put a row and we have the row now inside this row we're going to put a text so the text here is for these and we'll just copy it it's um, 400 by 14 so we are good with with how it is I'll just paste what is here and then I will copy the color code I like this color code I think it's the same thing that's supposed to be here okay so I will scroll down here and just paste this here so good we have this and um, quickly we are going to duplicate it this same text Control D we will use it for this so this is gonna be 400 by 14 as well I'll paste it here 
Uh, great. And then I will come here and copy the color code and paste it here. And we're good. I'll now click on the entire row and then I'll use this particular spacing. So it will sp spread them around like that. What I need to do now is go ahead and then just check the spaces in between on the side. So 24 here and I think uh, 24 here as well. So how do I do that? I'll click on the, uh, this particular text and give it a padding of 24 from here. And then I'll click on this one, give it a padding on the right, 24 from here. Then what I will quickly do is check the padding on the top, it's 24 as well. So I'll click on the main row and then add 24. All right. Okay, so we have these correctly done. And um, here is the container for the text field. Uh, we will just uh, click on this and say 327 by 62, copy it. So I will click on this and uh, right click to add a container. Um, the container. It says 327, uh, 327 by 62. Uh, I'm going to paste the field color and I'm going to paste, I'm going to check the border radius. It's 10. All right. So, um, okay, just follow me. Meanwhile, please just click to subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying the tutorial and you're learning a lot. And also, please click to turn on your notification icon. Uh, bell actually so that whenever um, I drop a video you can be notified quickly All right, so in the container I'm going to add a row in in the row Yeah, I think it's better I do it like this and in the row I will add a text field. Okay, so text field um, So this is the text field and I'll just copy these in text uh, the hint text is here, so I'll just scroll down and I will see the space for hint text, then I'll paste it. Good. Then this hint text has a different color, so I'll just copy it here and then scroll down. I'll see where to paste the color of the hint text. That's it. And uh, I, um, I'm not done. I think this is going to be 16, right? So let's see. Was it 16? Yes, it was 400 by 16. And uh, I will scroll down again and give it some content padding here. So I'll say uh, 16. Now, basically, that's just to push it inside. Because if you look at it, okay, it's actually 12. So we can use 12 here. So um, 12. 12 is good. All right. So now we have this. Uh, what else do we want to do? We are actually done with this part. So we will just click on the container itself and give it the appropriate spacing from the top. So here's 10, so we will say 10 from the top. Beautiful. And then what we need to do quickly again is we need to put a row here. So what I will do is copy this row from this part, just click on Ctrl C, click on the column and paste it. And then uh, that's just to make me work faster. So I will just copy this. This is going to be 400 by 14, correct stuff. This one is also 400 by 14, I will paste it. And uh, I will just go ahead and duplicate this, all right? So I'm going to use it for the second text, which is this. It's a uh, 400 by 30 pixels. So I will just go ahead and paste this here, okay? And then 400 by 30 pixels. Then I will come over here and copy the color of the text and come over here and paste it. All right, I know I'm a bit fast, but I know you are following as well. Okay, so then for this part, I will just go ahead and copy it for breakdown and then paste it here. And uh, things are moving quite good. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is this icon here is going to be added to this row. So I click on the row, click on add a child to widget, and I will search for icon and I will put it in. And then I will click on settings align to change this, the kind of icon. I will say right. So when I search for right, I will see this icon here. See the color is pure black. And uh, let's see the dimension. Um, I'm trying to see the dimension of the... Okay, I might have to zoom in a bit to click on that exact... Uh, it's 10 by 5. So I think we can just leave it by with 10. Uh, 10 will be quite small, uh, so I think, yeah, so we'll leave it like that. And uh, here we will click on this and we want to use this particular kind of spacing. We will say 
this one okay so then from there we will go ahead and let me just zoom this down and see the spacing in between so 12 here and 131 here so um click on this and say 12 and click on breakdown and say 131 so that's the spacing in here then click on uh, it doesn't have let's take off the one on the left and i think that's pretty okay really yes so this is fine and then let's click on let's put a, bo a button the button is 327 by 62 let me copy the the color at once 327 by 62 so i'll click on the column here click on this add the button and uh uh it's going to be where is the dimension it's going to be 327 by 62 okay and then the color is pasted here uh the border radius is 12 and the text here says place order so i'll come back here and say border radius is 12 not 8 and then the content is place order not button then i will click on the button itself and see the spacing apart so here is 32 so i'll click on this and say 32 okay so we are good we have these now let's go ahead and then see what next to do i think that's all for now and uh let's go ahead and uh come back to edit cart and um okay there's a small problem here the dimension here is 844 so let's go to the widget tree and change the dimension of this container to 844 so not 8 not 812 but 844 uh, because the screen here says 3 oh no 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 let's click here to change it 375 we're correct sorry guys i didn't see that the screen had changed uh okay so like this so i think the idea is when the user clicks on edit item it's going to bring up the let's click here to add an action click to add an action and it's a bottom sheet so we want to show a bottom sheet what bottom sheet so we click to select the component and it's going to be a deep cut bottom sheet so like this is good and uh, we're going to have a problem like we had before so what we're going to do is we'll come here come to a deep cut bottom sheet and um, let's go to the widget tree and uh, this container now wrap this container around a column and uh, that's it so it's centralized so yeah we're good then let's come back to the widget the pages here then go to edit cart and then click on this button and let's give it a height height here is going to just be maybe 600 okay so uh let's see it's not gonna be 600 let's say 375 yes it's gonna just be the height of the whole thing so maybe 375 okay so let's go ahead and just preview this screen and see how it looks like meanwhile while that is loading let's go ahead and this is the same as these just a few things changing i think okay here is done and then we have some closing here all you just need to do is add you know add another text here we will just do it quickly but i would like to shift on to this because uh, i didn't want the tutorial to be so long so we will create this quickly all right so uh and then i think we'll stop on this screen okay let's quickly do it uh because i'm also looking at the clock <laughs> all right so um and so this is our application uh it's okay yeah this is okay i think it always has some spaces here for the other navigation so if you click on the here and then you have this so it, it's good it's it's okay so you can click out this is fine all right so let's go ahead and come to um the payment path right so let's set up the payment path um yeah just quickly set up the payment path all right payment 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 let's um we have uh, we have these kind of design here so we can just go ahead and um, we're going to copy some things just to be really fast right so let's go over here to edit cart and we will click to duplicate this page and then uh, what we're going to do here is click here to copy the name of the screen the page click here to paste it uh-huh and then what we need to do 
is go ahead and take up some things we don't need so like the whole of the list view we don't need it here and so we just need this payment and it's going to be black not white okay so we just paste it and then here is going to be black actually so let's come over here and uh, paste it you won't see it again and then this one should be gone all right so we have uh, let's go to the widget tree and uh, the container here is what is giving us this you know color so we want it to be white so we will go ahead and then uh, give it a color click on here and give it this secondary color so something like this uh, not that one let's try this one uh, it's not working out the way I want it to work so let's just click on this and download this export this particular uh, icon all right so and uh, let's see um, let me bring in this icon first and it will convince me whether we're on track or not okay so uh, I think yes with this we're on track so we bring this up and uh, I think we're on track now yes we are but we need to actually change that these two uh, this should be the correct thing yes this is correct now all right so um, this works for us now uh, this is a carousel it's a horizontal carousel so I would like us to go to one of our designs and just copy uh, a carousel that we had created so I'll come here and look for I think it was in the home yeah, it was in the home. So I'll just click here to copy. Um, I'll go to widget tree. And uh, I will try to locate this. Uh, locate this. So this is it. Uh, I will click on this. Okay, so I'm just basically reusing the company. So I'm copying the container. Go to the pages. Go to payments method. Click in the column and paste it now it works here so what we need to do is remove the whole of this stack remove this click on this one and remove the stack click on this and remove the stack click on this and remove the stack so now we have this row inside our list view so we just need to go ahead and then put these things inside so um i'll click on this to download it so this is 85 by 72 this is also 85 by 72 this is slightly different this is 85 by 72 as well okay but now there's a container here so um uh we're going to click on this right so and, and group it Control g i had to hold down shift and select it so i just wanted to be able to copy the, the two things here so let's go ahead and say uh, let's export this or all of them at once so we can just move really fast okay so export this and select this and export it as well and select this all right and then export it as well and select this export it as well and now we're good okay so uh, I think we can just export this quickly as well so uh, let's export this okay so we can walk really fast yeah okay good all right, now that we have this, this is 85 by 72. Let's let's come back here on this row now. Let's go to the widget tree and then let's add an image. Um, it's going to be 85, 85 by, by what? 72. So we have 72. Okay, great. And then we come here from network to assets. And then we click here to upload it. Um, the first one here is okay this is the first one and it's correct but i think the second one didn't get the right thing so let's click here and upload it this one and this one is separate thing so i'll click on this hold down shift and select this and just ctrl g to group them and then this one here right uh i will have to copy these out because um when i checked it it only showed only the cut version of this i will show you what i mean so i've cut it out and then i paste it i'll just drag it out of here and put it here now and i will just go ahead and double tap inside click this to delete and then uh this whole thing is selected so i'll just go ahead and then export it export paypal good so uh i think we are good like that so 
here is our design and um, this is a row but we're going to have to wrap it in a column because we have something below it so we will wrap widget in a column and then we will put uh, this text under it so let's click on this uh, column now and add uh, a text okay so we are adding the text I add what I had copied and um, let's check the spacing in between I think it's like a 4 so I'll click on this add a 4 as padding above okay that's good then what's the font size 400 by 14 I think it's okay um, so here for the column all right I will just go ahead and duplicate this column uh, okay Control D to duplicate and then I click on this and then I will bring the second thing up and so it's going to be did I export it I did not export it so I thought I did uh, this is visa oh I, I grouped it but I didn't export it so uh, click on this to export it and then bring it in okay so um, bring it in so it's in now and uh, it's visa I can easily type it I think so I can just type it here visa and then click on the column itself find the spacing between them and come to inspect rest and see it's 16 apart so a left padding here will be 16 and then I would just click on this Control D all right so this image now for this one is going to be different so this one is going to be 86 by 79 so i will say 86 by 79 great and then i will just come over here and then upload the picture that i had exported so you see this is the one and i will come over here and just copy mastercard and uh, i will paste the mastercard here I hope that you're learning okay and then I will click this and duplicate this Control D to duplicate and then I will put let me just copy PayPal at once then I will put the this particular information this is going to be 85 uh, 85 by 72 okay yeah then I will upload it okay and uh, where is it PayPal this is PayPal and uh, that's it then I will click to upload to change the name. So this is the name. Uh, this. Okay, so we have these working out for us. We will just click on this and see the spacing is 24. So I will click on this column and give it 24 as padding on the left. And uh, that is it. We have a carousel here and it's good. So let's see here is 31. Let's uh, click on the find the list view, not the list view uh, container and give it a padding on the top 31 right so it was 31 good now that we have this uh, we have a little problem the container is way too big the size the height of the container so we just need it to be uh, something around this is 85 by 93 so uh, let's say uh, 80 let's say the height is basically what we need so 90 let's use 100 so this is going to be 100 100 so that's okay for our height and that's it that's good and uh, the next thing we need to quickly do is this particular part and uh, I think when we're done with these we could just actually just close the class I wouldn't like it to be too long so I think after this screen we will stop here this is similar to this so good um, let's go ahead and uh, set this one up uh, here is just a container 327 by 257 um, let's click on this and say um, what are we saying let's say let's say let's say let's say uh, container okay 327 by what by 257 so we say 327 by 257 all right so and uh, the color here is somewhat like this this should be the color right or i think this one copy it and then let's paste it and see if it is correct okay uh slightly i think it is correct yes it is correct and uh does it have a uh, border radius it says mixed so i will click again 
to see I think the border radius is 10 uh, and then this guy uh, this particular design here uh oh these things are separated <laughs> oh my goodness we have to group them uh, yeah we have to group them so let's go ahead and just the, the dimension is uh, 168 by 106 so let's give this one 10 first uh, then inside here let's add a column inside the container we add a column and then the first thing we're going to do is add that image it's a uh, 168 by 106 168 and uh, 106 okay so let's put one here okay great then uh, I think what we need to do here quickly is this hold down shift hold down shift I'm selecting all of them and I'm holding down shift to select all of them I think I need to select uh oh control Z all right so uh, let me try to see if I can move things around all right yeah I just wanted to confirm that everything was selected that's why I had to move them around so I would just say control G to group it okay and then um, what I need to do now is just go ahead and export this uh, new creation of mine. <laughs> Great. And then um, let's copy these at once. Uh, let's, okay, let's bring it. I've copied something. I try to do a lot at once just so that it can be fast. So I'll click on this and uh, bring in um, the, new, the new design. So it's up. And uh, while we're waiting for that, I will click on the row itself sorry the column the column and add a, a row in the row I will add a text okay and the text is what I had copied earlier so uh, even in design it's going to be like chess chess move so you anticipate what you're going to do next and just get the information you need so uh, it's uh, I think it's 700 by 16 so we will just come down here change it from 400 to 700 and change this to 16 and click here to center align it aha uh -huh. good and we can just check the the spacing now so it's like 13 i think it's supposed to be like 26 because there's extra spacing on this so let's say 26 good stuff all right so uh then here just go ahead and duplicate this row Control d so we can have for this particular scenario uh, it's a 400 by 15 uh, I will just go ahead and paste it here and um, 400 by 15 I will click on this I hope it works yes it does work <laughs> okay all right so I then I copy this what I did was just click on this expansion right um, I'm copying this code now and uh, the color code so I will click on this and paste it uh, okay, so we are good. Is it really the color code? This looks grayish. Okay, so 400 by 15. So this is going to be 400 by 15. Okay, yes. So this was what made it not look correct. So let's see the, the padding in between. So I think it has 31, 31. Yeah, 31, 30. Okay, so let's give it some padding on the side. So 30 here and uh, maybe 31 here and then let's center align it great all right so we have this kind of thing now and then the spacing is actually six so we click on the roll and change this to six okay good we're almost done we need to just go ahead and add this button and then we will go and copy these things and just bring them here so um we don't need to let's just go and copy the button so let's go to uh, edit cart no I think it was here in the edit card button sheet yes so we will copy this all right so I'm copying it at once we'll go to the widget tree and then uh, okay go to the pages first then go to payment and I'll click in the column and paste this all right um, okay that's not what I should have pasted first but no problems let's go ahead and then delete these particular parts delete these and delete these good and let's see the dimension here 400 by 30 everything good and then let's go back to the component come here to edit cat bottom shoot click on this button and copy it 
go back to pages go to payment method and click on the column and paste it good stuff and then let's click on this and rearrange it go to the widget tree and scroll down till you see the uh, positioning and then um, just take this one down like this okay so uh, yes then click on this Control C click on this Control V I think this works all right so here we will just copy this it says pay and confirm so we will click here and scroll down you see here you just paste this it says pay and confirm now then for this one we will just go ahead and then click on this we will see the colors so here let's copy this color this is the border color and uh, so the fill color is going to be uh, this one white and then the border color is going to be this one paste it and uh, this is going to be uh, the, t the the text inside so we will say paste this here but now we need to get the color so we copy this ctrl c and then we will go to the text that's um where is the text pad yeah this is it and we paste this here and then now we see it but uh that text is quite big so we'll say 700 by 14 yes so we will come here and say it's 700 and it's 14. good stuff now there's a plus icon here so you scroll down and you see um icon so you click on this to add an icon for add so you see this and you add it so like this it works and we're good so now let's take a look at what we've done so it shows the border but not so well so let's increase the border width so we change this to three uh, I hope it's not too big uh, okay yes so now this is perfect now so this is it we have the good design for this and uh, I think we're good let's look at the distance between these uh, and this so 80 all right so let's go ahead and say click on this and say 80 all right so okay so now everything looks perfect and uh, we are good so let me just show you the two things that we have designed and uh, I hope that you've been able to learn a couple of things from these we worked on this particular screen the payments method all right and then we worked on this of course this is just similar to this just the difference here is here and here and this is also similar to these uh, that's it so uh, I hope that you've been able to learn a couple of things from this tutorial and um, I hope you are going to enjoy um, you know checking us out uh, okay so there are some abnormalities a little bit here and that's because of the height that we give to this we can adjust that by um, doing a couple of things so this screen is showing 375 by 812 uh, and this is also showing the same thing but it's not showing properly i don't know i think we have altered some designs uh let's just click on this particular one and just maybe just leave it at 24 for now okay so uh i think that's okay then these um container we can just push it a bit from here and say eight all right this is fine now so we are good and we have created something really beautiful i hope that you've learned how to um, implement some of these pages and we'll get to see you in the next tutorial all right see you in the next one please remember to subscribe to this channel and like the videos and turn on your notification uh, bell thank you very much Hello guys, welcome to another video tutorial by No Code Africa. And in this tutorial, we are going to be working, we're going to continue working on our food delivery application. All right, so if at all, this is like the very first time that you're seeing the food delivery application on this channel. Uh, I want to let you know that we have three parts before this. So you can just check on the description of this video and then you will see the part one part two and part three this is the part four and in the part four we are going to design a couple of uh screens and then we're going to start back end for it i'm very sure that you're excited to hear that <laughs> yes so we're going to start back end for this and it will be really fun so let's get right to it okay so this is where we have the project and uh, it's built inside flutterflow 
And uh, what we're going to do quickly here is I've, al I've already created a new screen here called Seller Dashboard Home. I'm just basically copying the title on the screen here, like title here, and then just spacing that. So I'm very big on reusing things, uh, reusing companies that I already created. So this particular section here is already found somewhere else in the application. And I think it's found in the home V2. So we have something like that here. So I will just click on this and copy it, Control C, and go to seller dashboard home. All right. So then I will just go ahead and drag my uh, widget tree, click on the column and paste it. All right, so I have this noun and uh, let's go ahead and look at it again. So we are going to, we have just a picture here. I think this is gonna be the picture of the user. So uh, we will just go ahead and click on this. It's a stack, right? And uh, we're just gonna take some things out. So we're gonna take this out and we're going to take a, uh, uh oh, this is just a pure image. Okay, so I will take this out too. And I think I would just really, really take the, the stack out. So inside this row, I will add a circle image. So I'll add something called circle image. And the size of the circle image is going to be, I'm gonna click on this, it's 45 by 45. So it's basically a diameter, so 45. And, um, uh, I don't have a picture here, so just so that I can be seeing what I'm doing, so I'll say image placeholder. So I'll just, uh, no, let's say profile, profile picture placeholder, good. So profile picture placeholder. So I will just look for a random uh, picture placeholder that I can use. I think this might just work. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy the image address, and then I will go to my application and I will just paste it here. Okay, great. So now this is showing. Uh, it's not really showing the way I wanted to show, but it's okay. Let's go ahead and um, let's give some padding to this. Yeah. So uh, let's go to inspect, and then we hover a bit, and I think with this we can see it. So it is ninety three point two five. So we would just say uh, ninety three, ninety three point right so this is a lot I think we have not factored in the correct spacing inside here so I will just uh, kill this a bit so maybe 85 all right and that's still a lot because I think this is way bigger so let's uh, kill this to so let's start with 50 okay and it's not let's say 60 and I think this is pretty okay all right so I really think I should get another picture let's uh, let me see if I can quickly get something else I think I like this one it says, uh, I'll just copy this, come here, click on it, and paste it. Okay, pretty good. This looks now better than the other one. All right, so uh, let's just go ahead and then continue. Here we have, uh, we have uh, a row. This is a row, and we have two cards, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to memorize some things. and Oh, these things, uh, they are in fractions, so... <laughs> let me not memorize i will go ahead and just put a row inside here and inside the row i'm going to put a container and that container size is one five uh six i'll just approximate it one five seven by one one five okay one five seven by one one five okay great and then it has a border radius of 20 pixel and uh Okay, so that's it. So we have a border radius of 20 pixel. And uh, inside here, we have this text. This text is um, 700 by 50. Why do we have all of these things in fractions? So 700 by 52. Okay, great. So uh, I'm going to put a column inside this because we have uh, look at it we have these here and then we have these so that means this is stacked on top of themselves that means that there's a column here so i will put a column there and inside there i will just put a row i like to put things in a row and then i will put a text inside here and then that text is going to be 20 and it is uh, 700 by was it 23 let's look at it again 700 by 52 okay quite big so let's say 52 great so we have 52 here and uh, I will click on the column again let me give this column some padding from the left so here we have 16 so I'll give the column some padding on the left to say 16 here 
and then I will go ahead and then just click on this add a row I'm gonna add a row here inside the row I'm gonna add a text and uh, this is a text this text is running others and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 700 by 13 and there's a color here so okay fine so I will paste this first and then I'll come here and say 700 by 13 great then I'll go back and copy the color just click that and then I will paste it here in the text color great so we have that scenario there and then good we need to go ahead and do some spacing here so these and these have a spacing of roughly about three pixels so we will say uh, three here and then I think that's that's all there uh, this particular one has some spacing on, on top, so 15. It's just, I'm, pro I'm approximating things because it's having like, you know, it, they're like in doubles. So uh, that was what? That was uh, 15. So this is now going to be 15. And uh, right, so we have this. What we need to do now is go ahead, click on the container. We need to give it some padding. So this is a container. The padding is 24. And we will say here 24 pixels and then the next thing we need to do is give the padding to this row so that we can push it away from this and this is 24 as well and so we have 24 here great so now we have this let's click on the container itself Control D to duplicate it uh, well we might not really need to do that right so let's just say uh, okay yeah we, we, we have to do that fine and uh, let's look at it the space in between them is 13 13 13 okay so let's just click on this particular container and say here 13 so if that's the case we don't need to give a padding to these we can just say uh, well well you can do it like that if you want to be so precise or you can just remove it and click on this and say center align right so I, I think center aligning it is almost way better okay so now we have that and then this is 05 so we just say 05 oh sorry we say 05 and then this one says other request so I'll copy it and then I will come here click on this and I will paste it good stuff all right so now we have these uh, card here so we will just do some few details inside here and uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, this is going to be 327 by 204 it's a card so we click on the column itself and then uh, this is the column no not that column this one then we click on it and we will add a row and then inside the row all right let's look at our row inside the row we're going to add a container and the container is width is 327 and the height is 204 okay so we have here 204 and uh, it has a border radius of does it have a border radius it, it definitely does but uh, Figma is not showing it well so I have to double click and then I now see 20 pixels so good so uh, I have here 20 pixels and then I can click on the row and center align it and then I need to push it away from the top and the spacing is 16.8 that's the padding so here I say 16.8 and that's good we have this scenario here and now we need to put this so basically what is happening here is that there's a long row and then this is in a column, right? This is just on its own, right? In that row, and then this is also. So we'll just create this. We'll keep a space for the graph, and yeah, then we continue. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna copy this. Total revenue, it's a 400 by 14 pixels. So I will click on this. So now, first of all, look at everything is stacked on top of themselves. The row is on top of this graph, so it's in a column. So we will go ahead and then click on this and add a column inside the container and then we will go ahead and add a row inside that con inside that column and then we will go ahead and add a column inside that row. Now what is that column? The column is just to make place for this particular scenario here. So we add that and then we click here and add a row inside it and then inside the row we will add a text. So now let me paste the text I had copied it's basically 14 by 400 by 14 and that's okay and then uh, here I will just go ahead and click on this row and duplicate it and I'm going to copy this particular detail Control C 
and it's 700 by 22 pixels so i will come here then paste the information i copied and then i will say 700 by 22 pixels and there you go so i'm gonna go ahead and click on the column do my alignment to the start position and i will give some padding to the column here so look at the spacing is 16 pixels from the left so i'm gonna say 16 pixels from the left i need to give it some padding from the top as well it's 13. i'm just gonna take the approximate value so here i'll say 13. okay so now we have these uh okay so i think instead of giving it to this column i mean the padding on the top Control z to undo that I will give it to the row, all right? So so that everything can have that padding on the top. Good stuff, quite brilliant. All right, so then we have uh, we have these uh, you know drop down. We have a drop down. So there's a drop down here already. So I can just come over here, and uh oh, I zoom that way out. Okay, okay. I was thinking that this is Figma, so I was trying to zoom it in. <laughs> so this is the drop down. I will just Ctrl C it. That's to copy it. And then I will paste it here and then uh, I will go ahead and uh, let's see I will go ahead and uh, Yeah, let's zoom it in here. This one allows us to zoom in. So this is says daily Let me copy this and it's 400 by 12. So Let's come here and say daily. Where is it? So here we have daily and uh, It's uh, 400 by 12 Okay, so then we have the width of this drop down. It's quite too much. So let's see. It says here sixty one. So we just let's just say sixty two by twenty six. Sixty two. So let's say um, sixty two. All right, that works. Twenty six. So twenty six. And then let's see. Uh, there's a few color. Uh, let's just clear the few color. We cleared. And then uh, the border color, let's go here and copy the border color. This is a border color. And it has a border. The border radius is 7. Let's just say 7. Good. So um, we will try to do that. So this is a border radius, 7. And we will say the fill color here. We paste it. And then we have that. Okay, so now we have our stuff like this. So, But it's not properly uh, arranged. I, I need some padding on under the text so i will say let me come here and and click on this go to inspect and it says here seven so let's say uh let's say let me put seven here all right so it, it works but i need to increase this to say 65 no uh let's just say 70. okay so this is pretty good now now let me click on the drop down itself and give it some padding away so this is 26 pixel I'm using approximate values, so I will say 26 pixel, pushed away, and then let's go ahead and add something here. So what we're adding here is a text, and what does the text say? The text says see details, and it is 400 by 14, perfect. And then I paste it here, uh, I will go ahead and copy the color, and I will go ahead and paste the color here in the text color position. And then I will go ahead and then click on underline and I will look at the spacing. It's 48 pixel. So uh, I don't think that's gonna really be 48. So let's just say 20. And uh, 20 didn't work, let's say 30. So pretty much it. So I think we will go with these. And uh, all right, so if you observe, everything is like, you know, pushed to the top. So I think we will have to go ahead and then click on our row and then do something like this. Great. Okay, so now we have this exact arrangement. So here is supposed to be for our graph. We will not do that like right now. Um, we will just go ahead and then do the second part, which is this part. So uh, this is a card again. Well, lots of cards. So let's go ahead and click on this. Uh, or can we reuse what we have here? Uh, I think so. Yes, I think we can reuse this. Ctrl D to duplicate what we have here. And then here, let's come over here. Let's click on the card and reduce the size of the card. So the card here is 327 by 94. Okay, so we say 327 by 94. Good stuff. And then uh, this everything here is just in a row. So we will go ahead and maybe remove this guy. 
So let's click on this and take it off. Good. Although this isn't a column, but it doesn't really affect anything. So we can just take out the drop down. Perfect. Then we'll click on this rule and then use this arrangement. And then I will click on this C details. And then I will say, I will look at the space it has on the side. So it says 16. So I will give this guy a padding of 16 on the right. And then things looks a little better now. Okay, so uh, I think they're almost the same thing. So 13, okay, pretty good. So I will just copy this and uh, click here and paste it here. Then click on this. I will just take up the padding here from the left and uh, it's not C details, it's C all reviews. So I will come here, click on this, paste it. All right, so we have this and what we need to do is this particular pad now. So let's see, uh, good. Let's go ahead and just, uh, no, let's not duplicate. Let's just go ahead and add a real row, another row. And then let's come here and add an icon. So we add an icon and the icon is gonna be a star. So I click here and search for a star and I pick this star. Look at the size of the star, it's 26, all right? Let me copy this as once. This is 700 by 21. So. 26 so let's just say 26 and uh let me click here uh oh uh i don't like this star no no not like i, I like the star but i think it should be a field star so it's a star that has a field color so i don't know uh, i think let's go with this one a pretty good star so let's go ahead and add a text here and then the text is going to be something that i had copied earlier uh this is gonna be 700 by 21 let me copy this orange color 700 by 21 let's go ahead and just say 21 here click on this and say 700 and then just paste the color here and click on this give their star a color why not stars should have colors and then uh let's go ahead and then click on this the space between them is like 3.3 3 pixels so we will come here give a padding of 3 pixels here click on this add a text uh i'm gonna add a text here and then uh let's just go ahead and add something here so this is what we're adding here okay great so total that and then what else what else what else so let's go ahead and see the space in between maybe six not uh yeah let's just say six to, to reviews let's click on this and give it some padding so the padding here let's use this one it's 28 okay yeah good i'm just using the approximate uh, values okay so this is it let's give the some padding to d star i think it should be 16. great what 16 let me check uh yes it's 16. it just looks a little bit different okay so 16 and then we have that okay so we are good with that and then um now we have to do a couple of other things now uh let's look at it so we have a we have a carousel here i think this should be a carousel right uh, it looks like a carousel because uh, this is cut at some point so what i want us to do is let's just go find a carousel to copy but before we do that let's just check at, look, at, look at take a look at the card the card is a uh, 327 by 220 right so let's go ahead and then uh, let's just copy this, Control C, and paste this here. And um, let's remove this row. Okay, good. So, uh, and then let's click on the card itself. Let's look at the container. 327 by 220. 220. Good stuff. And then we will go ahead and uh, let's add what is here. So this is a, a, a row. Uh, let me just copy this one. So I'll just copy this one, click on this and paste it. So I'm trying to see how we can, you know, do stuff really fast here. So I'll just copy this and I will go ahead and paste it here. You see how I'm reusing components? I think that's how you should be reusing components too. It makes you work like way faster. So we have this and the next thing we need to do is put the carousel. So the carousel, uh, it's pretty cool, right? But I can't really see what is under there. Um, oh, should we just redo it? Uh, okay, yes, let's do it. So, um, first of all, let's look at the the height of the container. The height of the container is 150 by 53. Uh, just 150, right? No, the width is 150, height is 153. So we need the height. So I'm gonna click on this and, and add a container. So there's a container here. 
and the container is uh, the width is uh, okay we will figure that out let's say 153 then the 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 width is going to be from here to here so uh, let me see um, okay so I will say infinite right so I will say infinite width and I will give it some padding uh, on the left so 16 by 16 yes so I will just say 16 here and I will say 16 here okay so everybody goes home all right so this is a container I will clear the color of this container just clear the color of the container and then I will go ahead and add a uh, uh, another container inside this. I will show you why we're doing this. This is basically how to create a, a carousel using a list view. So click on the container here. The container is gonna be this one now. Let me just copy this. So 150 by 153, 18 radius pixel. 18 pixel for the radius, okay. So let's say here 18 and uh, the fill color pasted and uh, 150 by 153 so 150 by 153 okay so um well it's not really like really doing what i wanted to do like it's not giving me the correct scenario here so what i just need to do now is inside this container i'm just going to wrap it with a column which now makes it give me the exact dimension i needed and then uh what i need to now do is i will go ahead and uh let's see this is a container and uh i need to uh i need to go ahead and then put this up right so like put another one here so this is a column and uh let's just wrap this column in a row all right so let's wrap the column in a row uh, okay so now it's it fits in the way I want it to fit in so I will click on this column this column now is like representing one card so I will say ctrl D to duplicate it uh, so this is another card now and I will go ahead and say the spacing in between them is 11 and I will say uh, 11 here okay so uh, now we have this of course now it looks like what we have been building so we will click on this big row yeah the big row here and find the distance from the top so this desk distance here is 14 pixel and I will say 14 pixel and uh, now we're going to wrap this row in a list view so wrap this row in a list view and say horizontal all right so we have created a carousel now and we can just go ahead and let's scroll down a bit uh, let me open this row let me open this row and uh, let me click on this one again and duplicate it so you can see like three rows okay so now we have done this and uh, it, it feels like there should be something below but uh, let me see this container is not giving me what I want it's not allowing me see all of this so um, let's see what is the size of these cards 153 this one is one uh, so why am I not seeing everything why something is covering it okay so we will try to correct that maybe towards the end okay anyways okay so we have that and uh, this is uh, the navigation right so we can just quickly like do the navigation here yeah so this is not a custom it's not like a this particular type of navigation it's, it's a custom navigation how do you create that you're going to uh, let's go ahead and click on this column and then uh, go ahead and just cover it let's uh, make this column scrollable yeah so we can scroll it if we want to and then now we're going to add in this sellers dashboard we're going to add we're going to click on the scaffold itself because we want these to be fixed it shouldn't be uh, as you're scrolling this one this one scrolls too we just want this to be fixed so you come here and then you click uh, just you know, add a row oh Mm, let's say wrap in a column okay yes we need to wrap it in a column uh, but I would prefer we wrap it in a stock so now we are wrapping these things in a stock this is the first column and then this is this, uh, this other one so we will go ahead and add a, a, a container inside here and then in the container so we're going to say 375 by 89 uh, 
so this is gonna be 375 so 375 by 89 it has a, a border radius uh, let me click it again uh, it's not showing me the border radius but I think it's going to be a similar border radius like this 20 uh, maybe 20 pixel so I don't think it's steeper than that so let's go ahead and, and download these icons so let's download these export it and export that and uh, I think we can just well I want to use a direct replica of everything here so I'll just export these as well then these um, uh, okay, so I will do something lazy here. I will just go ahead and export this. We can just recreate it using the uh, widget inside Flutterflow, but I'm just going to use it as an image. But it's not a good practice because it will make your application heavy. All right, but uh, let's just do it. Uh, I'm trying to see how we can speed up so we can do backend quickly. Just basic part of the backend, then we continue in the next one. So uh, let's see what we're going to do here. We're just going to go ahead and uh, let's see. This is 24. 5 by 24 so let's come over here and um, this is gonna be border of 20 so uh, inside this we're going to put a row and inside this row we're going to put an image and then that image is 25 by 24 and we change from network to assets click on this and we go to um, to get the, the picture so we click here we get it and you will see it here let's give it some spacing it's uh let's go to inspect it's 32 on the left so we will add here 32 on the left then we will go ahead and what else so we will just duplicate this ctrl d and ctrl d again and uh, i think everything is like an image so now we come here to this one this one is going to be uh, 25 by 24 as well then this one is 57 by 57 so let's come here and say 57 by 57 and uh, let's click on this and get the image so I click on this and get the image the image is going to be this one uh -huh. then after that I will wait then I will click on this get this particular one and uh, I think no yeah get this one or uh, upload the image then I need to get this one now so I think this is going to be uh, the bell right so the bell should be the same thing yes okay so that means we need to duplicate it ctrl d and uh, let's go ahead and get the bell and so where's the bell this is the bell and let's get the last one uh, let's get this last one here and here you go okay so now we have this uh, I don't pretty much like it the way it is so I just need to center align it then click on this and remove the padding I gave it before so just take it out all right so now it's on top here this is not where we want it to be right we want it to be below like down here so we need to go ahead and then find its position let's go ahead and do like this click on this take your hands up and then you see 723 so uh, we will come here and giving a padding at the top 723 and so here you go we have our navigation here in the footer okay so we will go ahead and then like redo these and like make it really work out very fine but now we're just going to leave this page the way it is let's uh, go ahead and uh, start some back end before we now go ahead and then continue with some front end okay so let's go to we will implement some things and retweak as we go okay so here we have a uh, Okay, good. I think this is how this thing should be. So here we have uh, we have some pages. Uh, there is a, a splash screen. There's a splash here. So they are like different splashes. Oh, this is another one. So I don't know. We can't have like two splashes. Anyways, if we can, why not? But I think we're just gonna have to choose one. So I will I will choose this one, right? So yeah, I will choose this one. So let's go to the scaffold uh, of the splash screen. So I'm clicking this. We're starting back in. Uh, uh, I want to go ahead and just add some sort of width delay. I want to add some sort of width delay before before this particular part. So we're going to go to this. Uh, we want to add some sort of width delay. So when the user gets access to the application, they will see this first, then they wait for a couple of seconds, maybe four seconds. 
or three seconds all right and then they will be ushered to the next screen because look at this so i think it should be after these we can even make it more interesting after these then you see these then we go through this process so let's go ahead and say uh let's start with the first one then so we will go ahead and for you to do the add the width delay and make it like that you have to add it on the scaffold so we come here come here to add actions add add an action and say weight delay so we will say weight delay uh we want to just make it two seconds all right so two seconds is uh the weight delay for here and then we need to go ahead and do something else so after waiting f waiting for two seconds what happened let's click on action fluid editor and add another action that says navigate to uh, uh splash screen two all right so let's just give it a transition type of fade and say 500 milliseconds and that's it so good stuff so after that it's going to come here so after here we're going to do the same thing so splash screen where do we want the user to go to we want the user to go to um we want the user to go to the sign up so after here so you go to the sign up uh, okay, no, not sign up. We want you to go through the onboarding processes. So let's say onboarding. So onboarding one. After these, so you go to, let's add an action. Uh, it says wait delay. Uh, wait delay. Uh, wait another two seconds. Yes, why not? It's our app. We can do anything we want to do with it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and just add a, uh, navigate to onboarding one and default transition like no transition is fade and then we say 500 milliseconds so it's now going to go to the onboard onboarding one so it's going to come here all right so um then onboarding two then onboarding three then onboarding four so but actually uh this is all of this is supposed to be one screen i said we were going to edit this so let's just say onboarding then after that we will just say uh, skip okay so let's go ahead and say it comes here to onboarding and uh what else so we will just this will be slideable yeah so we will rework on that and then uh let's say uh skip uh no let's just say next or yeah so when you click on next we can change this to whatever it is we want you to go to sign up so uh next uh maybe we just change this to uh maybe start now okay so i will adjust some things so let's say start now uh okay so we will just go ahead and say this is start now and this is going to take us to their sign up page so navigate to sign up now on sign up uh hold on guys so we have a sign up that is uh let me show you what is happening so we have a this is a long login empty bottom sheet then we have sign up okay so this is how it looks like okay great so let's go ahead let's continue all right so onboarding when they click on this it takes them to sign up all right so good sign up and uh this is just gonna be fade and 500 milliseconds then now let's go to sign up now look at how our sign up is so, so i think this is just how the designer made it so if you come to the sign up part this is how it looks like so um now uh i don't know i don't know if uh, it is was done on purpose uh if this was supposed to just be embedded in the page or not but the way i designed is i designed this as a bottom sheet which is cool i think so uh so we will when the user gets here let's add a let's add a weight delay just a little short weight delay here that is like 500 so they might not even notice it all right so but uh we will add a weight delay here on the scaffold don't forget so weight delay we're adding it on the scaffold it's very short it's 500 milliseconds and after that what do we want we want a pop-up on this page so what is a pop-up a bottom sheet so we will say bottom sheet so we wanted to show a bottom sheet what kind of bottom sheet so we select the component we say sign up bottom sheets all right the height um well i don't know how tall is the bottom sheet so it says a five something so let's just say 
600 or oh, 700 so 700 is the height okay good so uh we have this and then uh i think we're going to yeah so then at this point we're just going to go ahead and uh let's do the same thing to uh Okay, hold on. Before we, we we go too fast, let's go to sign up button sheets, which is this. All right, so it brings us here. And then um, this is sign up button sheets. And uh, okay, this is how it looks like. Hold on, hold on. Let's think. So now let's go ahead and then start our backend. All right. So for us to start backend, we need to go ahead and come to Firebase and do some connections. So let's go to Firebase. I'm going to add a new project. I'm going to call it food delivery app food delivery app okay so food delivery app i will say continue turn up google analytics create project so uh for you to have access to your firebase just go to firebase.google.com and then click on go to console then you will see your own firebase and then you start what do i mean by that so let's say firebase uh firebase.google google that 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 come okay so when you click it like this you will see this all right as far as you're logged in with your gmail then you can just click go to console and then it will bring you to the console then you can click to add a project and follow the previous steps that i just followed so our full delivery application project firebase project is ready i click on done and we go inside firebase so here we will just click on the settings click on project settings and we will copy the project ID here and we want to come paste it here but when we paste it and say connect it's gonna pop up an error because we need to give uh, you know Firebase access to this Flutterflow product so we need to come back here and say go to users and permissions add a member and say Firebase we okay that's not what I mean so Firebase add Flutterflow dot I what I mean is we're giving access to Firebase now like we're giving access to giving Firebase access to our Flutterflow product. So, and we want it, Firebase to be an editor. Really cool stuff. So, Firebase at Flutterflow.io add member. And there you go. We can now go ahead and click and connect, and it's connected. And we can go ahead and then click on this just to do some basic things. Go to next step and say we need it to enable authentication. We need it to be able to create user collection and start building and then we need to generate configuration files so generate configure configuration files this is more like small tiny bits of files that you need uh, for your product to run smoothly so for this particular food delivery application we will start the back end by just doing basic stuff right then we will continue in the next uh, path all right so we just want uh, the user to be able to log in and and come to the this particular section here so we just want the user to be able to log in and come to the home and uh if it's a um, yeah yeah we do some basic logic so if it is a, a customer uh a customer so the person will just come on board here and uh, uh maybe someone wants to buy food the person will see here if the person is actually a seller the person will have access to this particular part so basically that's why i designed this so um so now our, we're, we're done configuring that. We need to go ahead and do some basic things in our Firebase. So let's go ahead and come to build, click on authentication, uh, click on get started. This is how we give access to users, give access to people to use our application. So we want them to sign in using email and password, click on enable and click on save. And there you go. Uh, we're done setting that up and uh, we will come here back to build go to firebase database This is where we want to store information inside. So we come here. We will click and create database uh, Click to start in a test mode uh, Right, so yeah, so when you're finally done building your product you can start in production mode Which requires you to set some you know stronger security rules. So start in test mode and enable Wait for a couple of seconds and then we will be given full access. Then we will turn on the storage and we will start back in straight. So when we are starting back in, we will start with these. So I will go ahead and click on this field and it is proper for you to rename your text fields. So this is for name. So go ahead and then just click on this uh, to rename. Let's just say full name. 
and our check this is going to be email uh, email this is going to be uh, password so we click on this and say password password okay good and then we're going to click on this and say retype password uh, mm, password uh, two no, no not password two maybe retyped retyped uh, okay so that's the best thing I can think about right now so oh this is for login no this is supposed to be sign up so let's change this uh, and say sign up okay so sign up good uh, we have some errors here odds pad project has to do but entry page is not specified okay so we need to go back here and then specify our entry initial page and our logged in page so we want the splash screen splash page one to be our entry page then we want our home version two i think to be our logged in page good so now that's fine that error is gone uh we will go ahead and come back to firebase our firestore is created let's turn on storage and that's going to be the last thing we will do for now in firebase then we will end this particular part of the tutorial so we will click on that click on done and uh okay so while we are waiting uh i wouldn't like this tutorial to be like way way long so we will continue this part uh, in the next tutorial. So we will create this, create this, and create this, and create this, and then start putting things inside the database. It's gonna be really fun, I can't wait. All right, so we will see, this is uh, setting up nicely. Uh, the setting up nicely, and uh, let's see, good stuff. Uh, all right, so we have our storage turned on, everything is good. So let's now go ahead and then start making things happen. How do we make users to sign up into the application? So what we do is we have renamed this field, good stuff. What we need to do is uh, give an action to this button. We click here and click on add an action. We will say uh, Firebase authentication. We will say create account. We want our authentication provider to be email and we want the first email Oh, this says, yeah, I want this email field to be this one. We want the password field to be this one. And uh, the custom field, we can just click and say password retired. Okay, so this is this is it. Uh, uh, then we will go ahead and say, what else? Uh, we need to, we have one other detail here that has been created, which is f full name, and it wasn't captured here. So we will have to just set the field. So that field is going to be the... The, f the display name all right and it's not going to be a specific value it's going to be from variable so we click on set and go to widget state and say full name yeah so this is basically where we wanted to get the data from the application to put inside the database in the particular field that says display name all right so we are good so after this we're done we've we've created an account we our user can create an account but after creating an account what next we want the user to be able to, of course, without even directing the user to where they should go to when they're logged in, they will automatically go to uh, the, the home page, right? So they will come here. I think we choose, I think this one. Uh, let me see which one is finer. Uh, any one is finer, but I think I like, okay. I think I like any of them. Uh, any one is good. So uh, I think we sent them to, let's see where we send them to. So home, ver uh, home V2, okay, so when they're locked in, they go to home V2. But now let's do something, all right? Let's, okay, now let's go ahead, let's go to that uh, sign up bottom sheets. Uh, all right, so sign up bottom sheet. So uh, th there's some things that are missing in the design. So uh, let's say if the user doesn't have an account, they should, you know, be able to see something that says sign in. So. Uh, I'm not really big on redesigning UIs, like I mean like all of that. So I would just go ahead and add a row below this and just say, uh, let's add a text. Uh, let's add a text. Uh, do you have an account already? Uh, have an account? Have an account already? Okay, uh, so if you have an account already, so I think this is gonna give us, uh, I don't know, what is the space around this? 
I can't really tell. So let's just say 24, 24. Okay, yeah, it worked. So let's click on this and add another text and say uh, this text is going to be for login. So let's say login. So login and uh, let's just make these uh, 700 and uh, yeah, that's it. Give it some padding, maybe four. So then click on this and uh, uh, I think we could just center align this. So let's come here and remove this padding. Then let's take this, give some padding to these and say maybe 14. Okay, so do you have an account already? You can log in. So let's click on this and give it an action. So if you click on this, it's going to give you, uh, it's going to say bottom sheet, uh, show, select component, login, right? Yes, login. And then let's give the height 700. And I think that's it. So, um, so now that means if they click here to take them to to take them to uh, login so login here so what happens in the login let's click here and change their the things here too so the field name this is going to be the email and this is going to be the password field so guys we're doing fine oh sorry why did i write field this is going to be password so password and um these are a couple of things we will do this later so this is login so let's click on this you don't have an account sign up let's say uh let's click it no no what am i doing so we're adding an action add an action let's say bottom sheet let's say show let's give it 700 and select components we say sign up and that's okay okay so we have this and um what else let's give an action to this login so let's say uh we want to want it to be fire firebase authentication login authentication provider email email field email password field password so it's basically taking the names of the fields all right so that's it so when they log in they go to that place good now in our user anybody who creates an account can create an account and actually log in but now we need to do something simple before we end the class. Just a basic logic. So, um, and we are going to do that logic here. All right. So we're going to do that logic here. So uh, let's come here first to the database and add uh, another field. Let's add another field. Let's call it, uh, uh, let's call it um, customer. All right. So customer. So this is the person who wants to buy food, so customer, and we are making it a Boolean. We want it to be true or false. So this one is going to be seller. We want it to be true or false as well. And uh, this Boolean here, and then this, there you go. Okay, so we will add some basic rules here and say, uh, let's come here to the button and say open action flow editor. We want to add uh, some logic. So yes, login run the authentication scenario and log the user in but let's add a conditional all right so it's just going to be a single condition so we say single condition the first value is going to be uh their their authenticated user uh let's say if the person is a, a seller right if the person is a seller if the user is a seller that means if this if if the okay see basically we want this to say if the seller seller's value right is equals to let's say specific value and it's true so if the if the user that is about logging in or if the user that you have already logged in authenticated login right is a seller I want you to do something all right so I want you to that's if it is true I want you to take that person so we add another action and say navigate that person to uh, seller dashboard home all right that's the idea so let's say fade and 500 okay good stuff and if it is false uh, okay so we didn't even need to say the other person we would have just said would have just used one rule Okay, so if it is false, so add another action and say navigate that user to home v2. That's it. So we say fade. So this is, this. if it is false, that means the person is a customer, wants to buy food. And that's it. So that's like the idea now. So, uh, oh, hold on. Let's see. What did we do there? 
So send the person to seller dashboard home. Okay, then send this person to home V2. Yeah, that's it. That's all of it. We didn't even need the other role for, you know, customer and all of that. So we can delete it. We can delete customer field and then that's it. So guys, we are done with our application. Let's test it and see. Let's go ahead and then run it and then see what we have done. And then in the next tutorial, we are going to walk on uh, imp like maybe like create a more uh, chef interfaces and then the chef should be able to add a, a food item to their you know to the application they should be able to select some things here and add this is one of the most interesting parts so you should look forward to the the part five of this tutorial which will come up tomorrow all right so um you will get to see a lot of things about how these things are done and i'm very sure that you'll be so excited about it Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and then just wait for these to quickly build and then we test our application. I really hope that nothing fails because we have used more than one hour for the tutorial and really good. So if at all you enjoyed this tutorial, please just click on the, the subscribe button and uh, uh, subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it to people you think will, you know, be able to benefit from this and drop comments from me too. It's always very nice to read your comments. Uh, I like it when you tell me something that this is a very good tutorial. I like it like that because I spend a lot of time trying to understand Flutterflow. I spend a lot of time trying to use it uh, just so that I can like be super experienced on these to actually teach you. And that's one of the fun things for me really. So uh, our application is almost going to finish. And uh, we are going to uh, see how our application runs. So here, if you observe, we don't have any user yet, but after this, you will see a user. And then, um, okay, so our application is done running. So this is it. Let's look at how it looks like. Let me change this to 375. Great. I'm waiting. It shows this one and it takes us here great so we would have we have not created this thing as swiping features yet so we would just go ahead and say start now beautiful did you see what just happened so we want to sign up so my name is david or rock and uh email so uh all right so let's just taste our application i like what we're doing here so i give my password and then I click on sign up. Uh, it signs up. It's currently signing up and it brings me here. Now, do you know why it brought me here? It brought me here because by default, right, that variable for seller is false. So that means this person that is creating an account right now is the, what will I say? Is the, is the customer. So we can go ahead and then come here let's come to uh, food delivery and then let's look at our firebase database let's go ahead and just reload this page and see what has happened here so i'm reloading this and you will see there's a user collection now and uh oh okay there's a problem there's a small slight problem uh, okay, so let's do something really simple uh, before we wrap it up. Let's come here to home version 2. I'm going to put a temporary logout button. So I'm going to just put a temporary logout button. Yeah, just temporary. So let's go ahead and then add a, a button here that says, not a button, just a text. I'm just going to use it to be logging out. Okay, so logout. So this is just a, it's just a, a temporary stuff. So I want to add, I want to be able to log the user out. So let's say navigate to, no, let's say Firebase Instigation uh, logout. So when you log out, I want the user to go back to, um, uh, maybe uh, want the user to be navigated to uh, where, they should be navigated to well we would change all of these let's say we want them to be navigated to onboarding yeah onboarding one so let's just send them back there so let's say fade and 500 okay so that's it all right so uh this is done and uh, now let's correct the the problem that we did like look look at what is happening uh, we don't have the field that says uh, seller here in our users collection because we didn't say it should create it 
all right so we have to go to sign up bottom sheets and come to the sign up button click this and say okay so we only added this row which is display name so if you come here you see display name is correct but we need to add another field and say this field is going to be uh, uh, from variable uh, no it's not email we are saying seller so it's gonna be specific value and it's false so by by default we want to make it false that means we want something to appear so we will go ahead and then just run it again uh, that's for sign up yes so it's good all right so now we have uh, we have this particular version so we will just wait for a couple of seconds to do that then uh, we will create a new user and then we will go ahead and be able to change their the seller status here right so let's just wait for a couple of seconds and then we will end the tutorial meanwhile thank you for sticking around and uh enjoying the magic that we are creating together this is a partnership guys it's something that is really beautiful i'm really proud of it and uh let's see so uh it's loading up it shouldn't take a lot of time uh it's gonna just like run really fast all right, so um, that's it in the, yeah, we will have the detail here. We, we can add it. Okay, so guys, let's go ahead and add for this particular user. We can add it and say seller. Yes, we can do that. Why not? So we can add it and say boolean and we say uh, true. Okay, so if we say true, uh, nothing changes here. Nothing changes. It's, it's not going to change dynamic because that was on authentication basis. Uh, all right, so, but now this particular user now has a role that says seller true. So, good. So, while we're waiting for this, let me confirm the spelling uh, of what we did here. So, seller. Yeah, we, we did good. So, I think this is almost done. Then we check it out and then we end the video. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like the video as well because, uh, of course, it's a good video. So, I'll click on this and change it to 375. And I have a logout button now, so I log it out. It brings me here, so I can just, okay, hold on. <laughs> All right, so I will say start now. And I can click on here to log in. You see how beautiful this thing is? <laughs> I like it. Okay, so we want to just uh, sign up, actually. So we want to sign up another user. The user is going to be uh, David. David, okay, great. And uh, this user is going to be, I'm going to use no code Africa's email, no code Africa HQ. All right, so, and great. Then we click on sign up. All right, so now we are clicking on sign up, we have access to this. So by default, now we have another user. So you see, by default now, and it is created by itself, seller is false. So uh, let's go ahead and change one person to true. So this seller is true. That's Mr. David. Uh, let's go ahead and log out. And it brings us here. It does the basic navigation. Let's say start now. Great. We want to log in. So let's say Mr. David rock at gmail.com password. All right, guys, let's log in. And now it brings me to my uh, seller's dashboard. You see? All right. So that's beautiful. This is the buyer's dashboard. That's the customer. And this is the seller's dashboard. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And we will get to see you again in the next tutorial. Stay tuned. All right. Thank you very much. Hello, guys. Welcome to another video tutorial by No Code Africa. And in this tutorial, we're going to continue building our food delivery application where did we stop so uh i think uh, we actually stopped exactly where uh these dashboard design stats right so we we actually started working on this uh, seller dashboard so in this project we basically have like two kinds of users we have the guys that want to buy food and the guys that want to sell food so the ones the guys that want to sell food are the sellers 
and the guys that want to buy are basically the users, the customers. Okay, so we have done a couple of these screens and then we've actually started our front end for this project. So if at all this is like the very first time you're seeing this, just check the description under this video and you will see the links to all the different parts of this video. This is part five and it's uh, going to be a combination of front end and back end. All right, so um, today we're going to continue working on the application. We will work on this particular screen, the running other screen, uh, right? Yes, we will work on the running other screen and then we will work on uh, my food list and uh, we will work on add new items. So basically at the end of this, I think we're going to have to start with this actually. So this is very, it's a very important screen, right? Yes, yeah, so I think, um, from what I'm seeing here right now, and I think uh, when you click on this, when you click on these big plus button, I think that's where you should have this uh, screen, right? Yeah, and then maybe when you click on this, you get to see these particular details here, right? Yeah, so maybe it's more like the detail screen. So you click this uh, and upload the information. Uh, okay, no. So basically, I think you just click on these particular uh fill these particular details to push the food to the firebase like push the document to firebase and then this is chef food details okay so this is uh, this is a food list so when you click on this i think it brings you to this point yeah good then we have the the menu part i think this should be when you click on this and you see this particular point and then we draw successful okay when you click on this so we will try to see how we can build build the screens uh, as fast as we can, and then we try to do a couple of uh, back end to it as well. All right. So let's uh, let's uh, let's do it. Um, these are the number of screens that we have done so far, and uh, we're going to build this. This is more like a bottom sheet, yeah. So this is more like a bottom sheet, and or, or a pop up, like basically a pop up. So it's. Um, I think uh, basically this is running others. Where do we have running others? Okay, so this is running others. So when you click on this, it brings up this, yeah. So then other requests, uh, I think when you click on the other request here, where do we have the other request? Um, where is the other request? Okay, so I haven't seen review screen, haven't seen the other request page. So I think we can also still use these, uh, uh, you know this particular screen for uh, other requests yeah we will find a way around it uh, the screens might not be like very complete like I mean from the design we will walk our way around it and just make sure that we have something good so I just want to really show you how all of this works so uh, let's go ahead and then come over to Flutterflow and then start building our application. So this is the first one we are starting with. So I'm just gonna copy this. This is running others. And uh, we will go to the component section here. And then I will go ahead and add a component. I will click on create blank and then I'll paste the name and that's it. So we have this now. So uh, at this point, this is the scaffold of this bottom sheet, which is a pop-up and uh, we need to add some details okay so this is the container right and it's a uh, 375 by 681 so let's go here this is a scaffold so we need to add uh, we can just go ahead and add a container first the container is going to be 675 675 by was that what it is sorry 375 so um 375 by i think 681 yes so we have here 681 and uh, okay, I'm seeing here project save timeout. Uh, okay, so my internet again wasn't connected. All right, so okay, so I think this is good. I will have to just go ahead and just, uh, even if I copy, will it work? But I have to reload this. Otherwise, uh, I wouldn't see those details. Okay, so while that has been is loading up, let's uh, look at this. So this is going to be a pop up that when the user clicks on this, this comes alive, right? And uh, this is a, a container, right? And this is the dimension of the container. And then we have um, we have a, you know a row here with this text, and then we have 
uh, this is a list view for the different things so we will have uh, some few scenarios here let's see okay all right let's get back to the component section i am very sure that what we try to do is no longer here right so uh, actually it's not here so yeah it didn't save so uh because my internet was not connected yeah so um let's go ahead and just create it let's create a blank and uh paste what i have here uh oh uh basically i am supposed to copy the running others here and paste it here great running name already used oh it's already here why didn't i see it okay this is it great all right, so I will go ahead and do the same thing here. I will say 375 by 681 and save. Good, we have these here and uh, this is our container. What we just need to do now is we'll go ahead and put a column inside this because things are stuck from top to bottom and we will start with this one, which is the row. And uh, it is, the dimension is uh, 400 by 17. So I will go ahead and click on this column and um, let me just open this click on this column add a child to this widget and the child is going to be a row inside the row we're going to add a text and we will just paste what i copied come down here and okay it's already 14 and then make this 17. great then uh, i need to give some spacing to this uh, the spacing is uh, uh, let's use this particular pad 18. okay so our spacing from the top 18 and um, there is something else above here that we just need to put all right so this is a small container right it's 60 by 6 and um, what I'd like to do is I'll duplicate this then I'll delete this uh, click on this and delete this inside these I will put a, a rectangle all right basically a container all right so I think it's 60 by 6 and then I will go ahead and come here and copy the color and paste it here. All right, so I will click on these, where's the, where's the roll? And uh, this is the roll, I will center align it. Uh, this is it, okay, so this is what we were working on. And uh, let's look at it, it has a radius of 25 pixels, so we'll give it a 25 pixel radius. And uh, let's go ahead and see the spacing from the top. So the spacing from the top is 16. So I will change this to 16 quickly and click on this. And uh, yeah, this has some spacing from the left, uh, 24. And that's like the padding here, okay? So we will go ahead and then give these 24. All right. Okay, so let's click on the main container itself and then make it look good. So this is the container and uh, we want to see the, the radius, the border radius. So the border radius is 25. So I'll give it 25 here. Yeah, so see how beautiful that is. Now we need to go ahead and continue building on this and we will do it really fast. So this is a row and then the a container. So let's uh, check this out, 102 by 102. So I'll click on this, I'll add a row. I will go ahead and add a row here. And in the row, I'm going to add a container the container size is 102 by 102 it has a, a color I've copied it and then the border radius is 20 pixels so I will just come down here and give it 20 pixels and I'll give it a few color all right so that's it and then this is a, like a column here and then we have all of these things stacked so we will just go ahead and and, and set it up so I'll click on the row now and then I will add a column. In the column, I'm going to add a row. And inside that row, I'm going to add a text. So this is the first text I'm going to copy. And it's 400 by 14. We have to come back and copy the color. Uh, 400 by 14 is fine. And uh, we come back, get the color. And we come here to the text primary color and we paste it. Great. Then we have, uh, we need to put this particular pad. So let's go ahead and just replicate uh, this row. Replicate, duplicate, all right? So then let's copy this. Uh, it's 700 by 14 pixels. I always check it at once while uh, moving away from the Figma design. So 700 by 14, right? Yes. 
okay so it's actually black so I will just paste the color here and uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'll click on this row and duplicate it again and I'm gonna put this particular one. It's 400 by 14. I will have to come back and copy the color as well. So let's change this to 400 by 14 first and then uh, paste this. Uh, oh, no. I need to go get the color. So this is the color and I'm going to, uh oh, I just like to paste it directly here. Okay, so now let's click on the column. Let's look at this column, click on it, give it this particular alignment. All right, to start from the beginning, great. Then uh, let's give it some padding. Uh, let's use this, so it's 12 from the left. We're giving the column a padding of 12 from the left. That's the left padding. And then let's look at these. So each of these has the padding in between themselves as three and the other one is four. So I'll come here first and click on this row and save four pixels from the top. And this one is going to be three. And then let's go ahead and click on the column and we need to do something. So look at this, we have this row. So we will just go ahead and add a row. So there's a row there. And then we have a, a text, then a button. And let me check it out. The button is 61 by 36. Uh, let's copy this first. So let's go ahead and add a text inside it. And uh, this is uh, $60. Then inside this row, we are going to have a button. The button is 61 by 36. So we will say here 61 and we will say 36. And then we will go ahead and click on this and copy the colors and paste it here. All right, great. So we have this, let's uh, just copy this. And the border radius for this button is nine pixels so we will just go ahead and then just uh, paste this color uh oh uh it's supposed to be here right great then the color okay i already done that bother radius is nine pixels so let's just change this to nine and uh, the next thing is actually to work on this so this is another button itself right so let's just say ctrl d Okay, then we will go ahead and click on this is 70 by 36. All right, 70 by 36. So let's paste this here first and say 70 by 36. Okay, pretty much. So uh, then uh, we have these uh, colors. Uh, let's go ahead and clear this uh, fill color. I think we will just like kill it like this. All right, so. Um, that didn't really quite go out very well so we will just say this one all right then the bother color we will paste this here and then i think the bother color and this one is almost the same thing but let's go ahead and just uh, paste it where's the color for the text we will come here and paste it great so here we have the scenario we will go ahead and check the spacing in between the buttons. It's 15 pixels apart, so I will say 15 pixel apart. And let's check out the spacing in between this and this. So it's nine pixel, we will say here nine. Great, so let's go ahead and separate it from the top. And uh, here we say 25, so we say 25, good. And then this last one now, we will say 24. So here, this one is 24. So now we have this particular scenario. Then let's do another separation here. So these and this is 37. So let's say uh, 37. Okay, that looks good, right? Yes, it looks great. So um, now we have some uh, elevation on this button. I, I don't really like it. So I can just come here and say zero. All right, so no elevation. Now, all of these things is like in a list view, they will be repeated and uh, generated from the from the back end, all right? So we will just go ahead and click on this, right click, uh, and then uh, wrap the widget in a list view, all right? So that's it. So these things will come dynamically from the database. All right, so we are good with it like that. If you just want to uh, see it, 
come out the way it is here so let's just say here is 20 so let's come here and say 20 let's turn this to 20 actually we'll still have to delete this when we want to do backend so but just so that you can see it the way it it is on the real screen you can just uh, see it like this okay so this is it and uh, now what we need to do is it's called running others we can go back to the main screen go to uh, seller dashboard home and then add some action to it so we can come here to the main container itself all of this this is running others we can click on this and uh, uh, we can click on that and um, what we need to quickly do here is we will have to um, go ahead and add an action to this so we will click here and quickly add an action so here we will say um what do we say we will say bottom sheet so so we will say bottom sheet and let's go ahead and then uh add some information here the information that we are adding is going to be uh the running others okay so the running others so we can say uh the screen is 800 in height and uh basically this was uh 659 in height so we can actually say 659 659 in height that's the height of the uh the bottom sheet let's go ahead and preview it and see how it looks like okay so uh that's that's pretty good and um what else do we need to do we need to go ahead and then start working on other pages let's uh let's quickly come over here and uh, walk on another one now I want to see what we can walk on such that we can you know begin to use it immediately like uh, to generate some details from the back end okay so uh, this is this running others okay fine uh, other requests okay so we need to create this one I think this is one of the most important aspects of the project which is to add a food item so this is this one I think when the user clicks on here they will be able to see this so I think I would like course to set this up because it has a lot of beautiful things I would like us to see when we are creating the back end all right so um, let me let me look at it again so this is a price uh, a button a check button another one here uh, and everything here looks really good so I think let's work on this screen so that we can uh, starts the like we can continue the back end where uh, the user the customer can actually get to see food items either with this particular kind of uh, home or this one I think we had choosed this one before so I think that's like the idea so this is going to be all the food right and uh, all categories and all of that I will have to take a look at this and brush it up okay so uh, then this one is search uh, we we did work in this all right so uh, okay so when the user actually search for this this is what comes out okay all right so let's just take it step by step and just see what we can achieve today's tutorial might not be very long we will just make it really brief okay so what we just need to do next is this and then we should be able to like put things inside the database and that will be like a very powerful achievement for us okay so let's uh, focus on that and let's do this this is going to be the last page that we we'll work on today yes because this is going to be quite complicated we will do a couple of uh interesting things here right yes very interesting things okay so let's go ahead and uh, start this particular screen i will click here and say um okay so instead of starting it from scratch do we have anything that looks like this uh not exactly i think we will start from scratch so we will copy this and then go to uh, Flutterflow, click to add a new page and uh, create a blank, paste this and go. Beautiful. All right, so we have these now and the next thing we need to do quickly is we're going to, uh, uh, what do we do here? We're going to go ahead and add a role and in the role we're going to add, I'm just going to do it uh, in a lazy way right so uh, instead of manually creating this I will just download it yeah okay yours you should just create it because I am very sure that the widget components are way lighter than these uh, you know PNG files so I would prefer that you create it manually 
uh, yeah, the normal way. So 45 by 45, I will just go ahead and say um, image, uh, then uh, 45 by 45. Great, and then uh, let's go ahead and come here, change from network to asset, and click here to upload the picture. So we click here and upload this. There you go. All right, so here we have the new item. And uh, here we will go ahead and click on this, click on this to add a text. And over here we will just paste this, and then we will say, um, what did we say? Okay, so let's go over here to inspect and see it. So it's 400 by 17. So we will come here. Let me close this 400 by 17. 400 by 17. And uh, I will click on this. Let's give some padding to this. So it's 16 from the left. So let's say here 16. Okay, great. And uh, these has to have some padding. I think 24. Great, it is 24. So we have 24 here, and uh, do we have something else here? Yes, we do. So I will go ahead and just duplicate this text. Uh, I just did. Why is it not duplicating? Okay, good, it's working now. So just go ahead and copy this. It's a 400 by 14, so I will just paste this here, come over here and change this to 14, and come here and copy the color and paste it here. Beautiful. And I will just go ahead and then give it some padding here. All right. So we will say 98. Uh, towards the end of the tutorial, like I mean, when we are finishing this project entirely, we will come and do some uh, responsiveness check. All right. So don't be worried about that. That will be a very interesting part of this uh, tutorial. Okay, so now we have this. What we need to do again is we just need to go ahead and then set this up first, right? So we have a, a, a particular row here. Let me just copy this. This is 400 by 13. So click on this, add a row, all right? So I add a row. Inside this row, I'm going to add a text. And the text is what I had copied. It is reduced by 1 pixels by 13. And it's definitely going to be uh, having a padding on the left which is 20, 24. Let's give it some spacing here, some padding. So 24 from the top and we say 24. Okay. And then uh, what we need to do now is click on the column again. And then we're going to add, um, let's look at it. So we have, we have uh, some information here. We have some information to add over here. We need to go ahead and uh, uh, put up some things here. So what, what we're doing here is going to be 327 by 50. And this is a, this is actually a container first before it is a text. So we will say, uh, let's go ahead and just put, let's put a text field first. Then we can try to wrap it with something. Yeah, so let's put a text field first. Scroll down to the end here and um, Scroll down to the end here and change it from underline to none. And then uh, what do we have? This is the information. So let's just copy this in. And uh, it's going to be 400 by 12. Let's paste it. Where is the text? So we will paste it here. And it's 400 by 12. OK, so I hope that you're getting these things. I will copy this and I will paste it here as the color of the text. And uh, the next thing I will do is this has some decorations, okay? So input decoration, we can actually say outline, fine. If we say outline, we need to put a border, okay? So uh, let's click on this and see how we can get the color. So we get this color and actually the border is 10, 10 pixels as the border radius. So we will say, we will click on this and paste this here. And then we will say, the bother's width is these and the radius is 10. So let's look at it. So now it comes out well, it looks like it. Uh, what we need to do again is just some little basic padding if necessary. But let's give this padding first. It's going to be nine, uh, I think, yeah. Good, so this is it. This is how it looks like. But now we don't have the padding on the left here properly. So we will have to come here, click on the text field, go up, 
and give it some padding 24 uh, okay so 24 and there you go so now we have this so here it said item I don't know was it item name uh, it's actually all capital letters so why did it change let me copy it again and paste it should be all oh it's actually just reducing it okay so uh, item name so something like this okay so we have these here and uh, what we need to do again is we need to step up to this particular row. Let's copy this one, Control C, click on the column, Control V, good stuff. So I will just click on this and copy this and uh, take it here and paste it. So then the next thing I need to do is this particular part here. So this is going to be a very interesting thing to do, really. It's going to be quite interesting. And uh, let's start with this. So we will click on this and then we're going to add a row. All right. So this is the row we've added. Inside the row, we're going to add a container. The container is going to be our, it's going to be 111 by 101. Let me copy the color. So it's going to be 1111 by 101. OK, and the uh, fill color is this. OK, border radius is going to be 20 pixels. So border radius is going to be 20 pixels. And uh, the next thing we need to do here quickly is let's go ahead and just duplicate this. Hold on before we duplicate. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. I think that's true. Let's duplicate it. So let's duplicate it. So this is it. Let's give it some padding. It's uh, 24 as the padding. So let's give it padding on the left, 24. All right, great. Now in here, this is not going to be like that anymore. Uh, we don't really have a specific uh, uh, tool that can like uh, break this down into like make the border a what do i call it make the border some sort of dots like with, with spaces uh we don't really have that kind of uh you know property yet in flutter flow all right so what i will just simply do here i will just come here and actually export this picture so i will click this export it and i will come over here it's a it's a lazy way of doing it uh, I can just go ahead here and just add it as a background image. Okay, that's uh, actually not really very okay. I think I will just go ahead and turn it into an image. Uh, what's the image size? It's a 111 by 101. So we will say 111 by 101. And I think this was 24. And uh, change from network to assets and upload picture and there you go okay so i think that didn't come out very well that didn't come out very well uh this this com didn't come out very well so i will copy this and i will say ctrl v uh, all right so i'm gonna drag it out i want to keep it outside here then i will say ctrl g that's to group it and then i will try to export it again i don't want it to be uh, in a zip file like this. That's why I'm doing what I just did. So now I can actually go get the file and uh, Here you go All right, so we have gotten this and I will just click on this aha uh -huh. Okay, yeah, it worked it, it did work, but uh, Let's give these a padding in the left 24 Let's uh, give it some padding from the top. Let's uh give it some padding from the top uh, let's come to inspect and say 16 okay so this is one way of doing it and now it looks a bit weird right so let's click on the column and uh let's wrap this column with a container so we wrap it with a container uh give it an infinite uh infinite width and an infinite height and there you go so it, it looks like it now and um, so what we need to do now is we need this thing to be a carousel, right? So uh, we will go ahead and then turn it into a carousel, but maybe not immediately, right? Like maybe not immediately. Uh, I will try to see how we can improve this in maybe in the next tutorial, but let's just uh, do this to, to the point where we can actually upload some images. All right. So uh, I think the idea here is when you click on this, you upload an image and it shows here. I think that's the idea. So yeah, and um, and then maybe when you click on this, 
it it shows here as well or maybe it just duplicates here something like that all right so we will figure it out but let's go ahead and then work on this part let's come here to this part Control c and click on this and paste it so we will come here and um, copy the price and paste it here i want us to do some back end today so uh now we need to go ahead and then do all of this all right so this is going to be a bit tasking so we have this it's also a text field so what i would prefer to do is i will go ahead and click here and just copy it but um, before i do that i will add a row first so i will add a row here and then inside that row i will paste this uh, text widget then i will use the dimension it says here 115 by 42 so i will come down here and change the the width of the text field where is it where is the width of my text field okay so uh this is it so one 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 what one one five so one one five one one five it's not really showing the way I wanted to show, right? It's not it's not showing the way I wanted to show. I, I actually think it will shrink. Actually, we can use these to make it shrink. So let's uh let's forget about the width, and rather let's change um, let's come let's change this. Let's come over here and change it to this. Okay, good. And then uh, instead of giving it a padding under. The right let's remove it and click on the row to add something to the row so this is gonna be what we're adding that's a check box right so we would just go ahead and add a check button check box so we can say check box uh, this is just a check box uh, let's click on this and uh, make it flexible uh, okay, so this is just a checkbox without anything else. Let's not that I don't think that's what we need. Let's uh, use something else. Let's say checkbox. So checkbox list title. So um, checkbox list title. Can it give us these? Uh, click on this and click on this. Okay, so I think we can use what we used before. So yes, we can use this. And uh, beside that, let's go ahead and add a text. Let's add a text there. Great. So let's go ahead and copy this, pick up, and paste it here. Let's copy the color and paste it here as well. Oh, I clicked on that. That's not what I should have done. Should have just pasted it. So here, for these, we would just need to click on this. Okay, so, all right, so I will copy this and um, let's change this color here. So checkbox color, so let's just paste this here. And uh, is there, is that one? Okay, yeah, so the checkbox uh, color, I think the real thing there. Okay, so uh, unchecked. Mm, we need it to have a clear, let's see. So when it's unchecked, this is how it looks like. And uh, okay. And when it is checked, this is how it looks like. So we need to turn these. Uh, so now this is not coming out very well. It doesn't really have like a border kind of thing. So what we will do here is just change these to white. Okay, so yeah, let's just change that to white and uh, Let's give it some spacing. So 28, let's say 28 here. All right. And uh, let's check the spacing for these. It's going to be 10, 10 pixels. Let's say 10 pixels. And um, let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing for this one. So let's click on this. Ctrl C, click on the row, Ctrl V. Click on this, Ctrl C, click on the row, Ctrl V. Uh oh, no, not that. Click on this, Ctrl C, click on the row, Ctrl V. Come on, what's going on? All right, so um, 
I think I'm not copying the, the text properly. So let me just right click and copy it. And let's click on this. All right. And then let's, uh, let's really paste it. All right. So now it's working. Okay. So let's see. Uh, everything is fine, but this one is called delivery. Uh, this one is called delivery. So I will come here and paste it and say, yes, this is delivery. Now we need to give it some padding. 24 at the end so we will say here 24 so guys we have successfully created this you see how we did that beautiful now let's go ahead and work on the ingredients ctrl c uh, paste this here and then we will go ahead and copy this and paste it this here all right so this is ingredients uh, we will correct this later on uh Let's uh, do another one. Let's uh, click on this, Ctrl C, click on this, and paste it here. Uh, this is going to say basic. All right, so we click here and say paste it basic. And let's click Ctrl D to duplicate it and change this to see all. Uh, okay, this is actually a drop down. No, not really. Just click on this and, um, and paste this here. And uh, we can go ahead and uh, what do we do? What do we do? We can come here and put an icon, right? We can just say icon. Yeah, so uh, uh, down. So we will see something like this we can use. And uh, what's the dimension? It's like, I don't know. So it's a... Uh, it's not really so obvious, but I think the color is what we can color, copy and uh, paste it here. And then here for this one, we will just go ahead and click on this and say 232. So we say 232. And that's pretty okay for me, right guys? It's pretty okay for me. I, I think it's okay for you too. So let me copy this and give it to these uh, text, the color for this text. So I don't know, this is 400 by 14, great it is. Okay, so now let's look at the the hard part, right? So we are about entering the very, very hard part. And uh, it's not so hard, but I think this is gonna be like uh, very interesting because uh, we need to, uh, we're not going to download just a picture. We're not downloading everything. We just need to use, um, we need to use, uh, what is it called? are just these things that are inside it just this one we're not taking the entire thing because we need to make this nice so let's go ahead and click on this and inside this let's add a let's add a row let's start it from there okay so inside the row we're going to add a shape right so all of these guys are so let's add a container first right so it's a container and it's going to be circular and um uh, let's look at the dimension of the circle itself. So 50 by 50, so great. So diameter is 50 and it doesn't end there. Let's copy the color of the container. Let's uh, paste the fill color here, great. So you can see what we're going on. And let's click here and add, uh, let's add a column inside the, inside the container. And then now we're going to add an image, okay? So now that image is going to be what we have here. Uh, uh oh, let's look at this. I want to look at this. Okay, this is a twenty-four by twenty-four. So let's uh, let me export it and see what we have there. Okay, it's giving me just this. So let me say Ctrl G, and that's like grouping that thing. And I'm gonna export it. It's giving me as an image. Let me view to see what it's giving me. Pretty okay for me. Now uh, I will do for this other person too, Ctrl G to group it and uh, the same thing, export. This is going to be very interesting. Ctrl G, uh, export, uh, export here, then Ctrl G, uh, export and export again. Ctrl, uh oh, let me tap that again. Okay, Ctrl G. Uh, export. I'm just grouping all the elements and exporting them so that they come out as a picture. So Ctrl G and export. 
Beautiful. Now we have these things. What we really need to do is, this is actually in a column, right? If you observe, this is in a column. So uh, let's first of all look at them again. So this is 24 by 24. So our image is going to be 24 by 24. And um, let's remove this border radius. And let's say from network to assets, and we're uploading the picture. Let's start with the first one. The first one here is this one, and uh, we're there. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and click on the column and center align it. Sweet. Then, now this is our container itself, and we need to wrap this container in a column. All right, so we wrap it in a column. Beautiful. And then inside that column, we need to add text. So we click on this. Uh, I would like to, well, let's just add a text. We will still be able to center align it. And then look at the text here. And we're copying this. It's a, it's a 400 by 11. So we will just go ahead and paste it here. It says 400 by 11. And uh, let's copy the colors. So we come here and then we paste it here. Okay, so uh, this is pretty okay. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's do some separation, like some padding, seven pixels from the top. Okay, and uh, here we have the column itself, all right? So let's give it some, sep some padding too from the left, so it's 24. So let's say 24 from here, great. Now we have this, we just need to go ahead and say Ctrl D. Uh, okay, done. Let's just say Ctrl D. What is going on? It did bookmark. I think that is not coming up properly. Ctrl duplicates, right, good. Uh, okay, so this is working now. So we have a couple of duplicates now. And so let's go ahead and click on this. This is basically 12 from the left, from the, from the left so 12. And uh, let's do the same thing here, 12 from the left. All right, so it, it's not a, if you observe, it's actually a carousel. It can, it can be you know, moved around. So uh, for us to be able to achieve that, okay, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and uh, let me look at it. We need to put these in. Okay, let's just finish up before we start thinking about that process. So um, what I have observed is this. When, you, when the user clicks on the, the, the item, all right, it turns. Okay, so basically what we have here is that when the user clicks on, on the, the item, uh, when you when the user clicks on the item, it's it has this few color. When it is unselected, it has this. So that's basically what's happening. So uh, we can just go ahead and and give it all of the same thing, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, we can just go ahead and give it all all the same thing, right? So we don't necessarily need to uh, separate them right now. So everything will just have the same color. We just need to change what is inside. Okay. So I think what is inside is almost the same. Scenarios 24, 24, 24, all through. So I'll just click here. Let me go ahead and change what we have here. So I'll copy this and uh, click on this and change it. So this is chicken. And uh, okay, let me just change this as, as well. So I'll click on this and change this to chicken. And uh, so this is chicken. Then let's go ahead and change this to this is onion. And um, I'll click this and change this to onion, and uh, this is onions, okay? Then uh, change this to onions, okay? And uh, then the next thing I need to do is Ctrl D, and again, and again, okay? So let's stop there. And um, let's go ahead and copy this garlic, and uh, just click on here to change it to garlic. Uh, then click on here to change it to uh, this. Okay, so we have that. The next thing we need to do is let's change this. This is papas. I think that should be like pepper. But anyways, let's use what we what we're seeing there. Okay, so papas, 
and let's click on this and change it to papas i wonder what that is okay so but actually i think that's like pepper okay so let's go ahead and copy this this is ginger and paste this here for ginger and uh, change the image for the ginger okay so um we click here and then change it okay so pretty good we we have done some good work here what we just need to do that is left is we need to go ahead and um what do we need to do here let's see let's see let's see guys uh, we need to wrap these in a, a container. Let's wrap these in a container. Let's wrap this widget in a container. So the container is going to have the the width of this screen, so infinite, and then the height will be the height here. So let's say 70. Let's just make it 72. All right, so 72 pretty good then clear the background color and there you go now why are we doing this we're doing this because we want to now wrap this rule inside a list view and uh, we want to now change it to horizontal which is what allows us to create a carousel if we didn't do it like this flutter flow would have said ah we don't like you doing things like that yeah so that's basically why i did that all right, so let's check the space here. It says 12 and I have 12 here. Okay, so we have this. Okay, now there's, mm, well, uh, I think this is okay, really. Look at how it is, it's okay. So we got, we're supposed to have the same thing here. So let's go ahead and say fruit. So let's copy here, Control C, click on this and Control V. This is going to be fruits, all right? This is gonna be fruits and um, let's come here. And paste it so this is for fruits and uh, we will do the same thing let's just copy the entire container Control C click here and paste it all right so we have this and everything is good the it will have the same effect like this all we just need to do is Control G to group this and then uh, export this particular thing then click on this Control G group it export it all right and Ctrl G, uh, group it, uh, and then export it. Then the same thing to this. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so we just export it quickly. I'm just trying to see how I can do this quickly. Okay, so then after that, we have the last export here, the last grouping. And okay, so there's something here that didn't work out very well. And what is that? That should be the Berkeley. Okay, so let's just quickly get that right. So Ctrl G and uh, export and get it right. Okay, so let's go here. Let's just copy this and say av avocado. Let's click here and then just paste this. And then let's click here and change the image. Uh, these are like some very uh stressful work so but it's okay we will do it and uh this one is going to be uh apple so we will click here and uh change it to apple click here and uh i try to see how i can make my tutorials like very detailed i don't skip and i don't edit so many of the processes because i want you to see how it's been done where I falter or make it mistakes and how I correct myself. Yeah, so I, I feel that it's going to give you some sort of understanding and uh, help you in your own, you know, development process. It will make you understand that, okay, at some point you might actually encounter some errors or maybe your line of reasoning at some point was faulty and then you had to find a way to correct it. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Okay, so um, I am going to put this as broccoli and uh, this is where we have broccoli and uh, I don't know did I pronounce it well broccoli well I don't know I haven't really looked up the pronunciation so let's check out orange okay so I'm very sure orange is orange you see I'm pretty smart so uh, this should be um, yeah so we have to change this to broccoli so where is broccoli broccoli should be this one great 
and there you go then I click here to put oranges and then I click this and change it to picture of an orange okay so where do we stop this is gonna be the oranges no this one so this is oranges and then the last one is going to be the walnut so this is gonna be the walnut and I'm gonna click on this and just change the picture quickly and um, this is the walnut and I will change the the text here quickly okay so there you go we have this and uh, we're fine so uh, we're pretty okay right so we're pretty okay now so let's just go ahead and close this let's look at what next so what next we have uh, we have all of this is fine then we just have to have uh, we need to put these uh, scenario here so let's just go ahead and copy maybe this particular row click on the column and paste it and then let's call it details so let's come here click in this and I think this detail is more like description and then let's go ahead and let's click on the column and make it scrollable so I click on this to make it scrollable so that when I add other things I can scroll it through and then here I have this is a container so I would just go ahead and click on this one and copy it click on the content the the column itself and paste it and then here I will just uh, copy this uh, this text the placeholder text and this is gonna be 327 by 103 let me just increase the height the height here is uh, let me see does it give me okay so I think what I can quickly do here is max lines right so I can say max lines is five and then it increases the size of this thing right so max lines is five and then I can go ahead and add some add the the label text so maybe this right so I can put this up it's not uh, it just shows here with the dot dot dots and uh, okay so all right, so uh, what do we do? I think this is pretty okay. Uh, yeah, I think this is pretty okay. If we encounter any problem, we will just re re retrace our step at some point. But let's just leave it like that. And then um, let's work on, on the button here. So the button is 327 by 62. 327 by... 327 by 62 yes 327 by 62 so click on the column click on add a child to widget add a button 327 so let me paste what is supposed to be on the column and it's 327 by 62 there you go all right that's a column that's the button and uh, I just need to get the color here I copied the color the border radius is 10 so i can change this to 10 and i can click this and paste it and uh we can go ahead and uh do some things here so click on this and say 32 uh 32 all right so we have this and uh let me see so these person is still 24 so why doesn't it give me the the vibe okay so it's not giving me the vibe so I would just go ahead and then come to this place and say be infinite of course and then give me the width of 24 as you know basically give me 24 pixel as your padding on the left and right so yeah there's another way of doing it now I need to give it some space here to below so 23 and I will say here 23 okay so we have this we're pretty done with this particular screen and I think that's all I wanted us to do uh, what we need to do now and quickly is to actually use it like to add information from these into the back end so this is like the the part that will be a bit tricky and uh, let's see where we can do it and then stop uh, at some point we stop so uh, let's go to home v2 all right so uh, was it v2 we used okay it's going to be in the seller's dashboard where is it so the seller's dashboard home so when the user clicks on this the user should be taken to so I'm adding an action so navigates to add new items uh, let's say fade 500 milliseconds 
beautiful all right so when they click on this it brings them to you know add uh, an item and so uh what do we do what do we do i think this is okay so we will popular items this week so this is supposed to be a carousel right it's supposed to show this we will do this uh we will try to see how we can quickly make things happen here now um let's see what to do let's first of all go to home no let's go to add new item so add new items and then let's look at it and uh, with these we're going to create our backend so uh, let's go to firebase and um, quickly I am going to uh, assess the uh, firebase for our project and uh, it's in no code Africa all right so uh, then we're going to just go ahead quickly to the console and uh, assess the project so here uh, for delivery application all right for delivery application so uh, this is what we have let's come to firebase and see this is what we have we have the users so it says you sell it true okay this is good all right so uh, let's uh, let's look at what we need to do now let's close this uh, basically right now we have a collection for users now we need a let me close this we need a collection for uh, let's say um, we might change this at some point will we let's just say food right so let's just say food uh, so when the user creates when the user creates the food item like to create a document uh, maybe like by submitting this page that means um, they have actually, uh, you know, created a food document or yeah, basically a document inside the food collection. So let's go ahead and, and add a collection here and we will call it a food, right? So because it is food, so let's say food, click on auto ID and say, uh, let's look at this now. So basically it's the name of the food, then image, then price, right? Let's do it step by step. Food name. So let's say food name. It's a string. Uh, image. It will be stored as a string. And then price. It's going to be a double because it can have point something. So let's just say number. But in that we have to put a default value here. But in, in Flutterflow, we have to make it as a double. And then... Um, the next field is uh, pickup delivery. Yes, so we will say pickup. Pickup. This is gonna be boolean. So we want it to be true or false. Then uh, by default this should be uh, false. So delivery. All right. So delivery is going to be true or false as well. Let's make it default false. Okay. So um, what we need to do again is let me look at it and. Uh, let me take, let me check, let me check. We have these particular things now. This is not coming from database, right? This is not coming from database, but this is going to be, uh, how do I put it? We want to be able to store all of this information in the database. That means if the, if the, if the, if the seller says, oh, there is salt inside it, right? I don't really know how this has been designed, but I think this is uh, this is like trying to say, okay, there's salt inside it, there's onion, there's chicken, there's peppers, right? So that's it. So basically ingredients, okay? So when they're trying to add the meal, they will say, okay, this is the picture of the meal. This is the price of the meal, and it can be either pick up or delivery. Uh, then they will now say, okay, there's salt inside it. So they'll click on it. Okay, so we're going to continue, actually. So I actually went into the future, <laughs> and I am back. So basically, in the future, we are actually done building the application, right? So not like done building the application. We have successfully uh, implemented some features here in the application that allows you to uh, actually upload, our, you know, the details inside here. So you see, this is our carousel, and it actually does, you know, roll, all right? So... Um, now in this particular part now the 
the user can actually get to go ahead and then, you know, update the application. Now we've added some features, right? So we've added some features, which uh, I'm going to try to explain some things to you, right? I didn't want to like go step by step just so that uh, the video doesn't get to be way too long. So I'm just going to explain how it was done, all right? So you see here, we have this, uh, this particular row here, all right? And then it is expected that the user is going to, uh, you know, click on it like click on it to like se select it so maybe click to select right and double click to unselect or deselect all right so that's like basically what we are going to do next and uh, i'm just going to show you how it was done and then uh we will try to like submit another item into firebase if you can see here we have uh an item that has been successfully submitted into database now i'm showing that the basic is actually done as a list and then the the fruits we didn't work on the fruit so no we just have everything and the image is set as a as a string all right so let's go ahead and just look at how it was done i wouldn't be doing it step by step i will just show you how it was achieved so first of all the first thing you need to do is uh we have already um, you know connected all of these you know we've already connected all of these by actually uh you know adding a backend call to create a document and so if you click on this you see all the documents that have been created so right so you see food images details basic fruits delivery pickup and price so now the thing is this right these are the ones that are quite simple things that you can easily add the only problem is the fruits which is going to be as a is going to be set as a string and this is not just something you just select by selecting a particular random widget this is going to be done from app state right the same thing with basic all right so let me show you now uh we want a situation whereby when the user goes ahead to click on this right the user clicks on the column for instance they will be able to like um you know uh do some basic selections right so first of all we want the user to like when they click on it we want them to store like uh some their responses their choices in the app state of the application right so we will come here to app state and then create a variable a field name all right called basic and we will say it's a string how did i do that just click on add state variable and say uh basic and then say string and then click on list that's the idea and then you will have exactly this and then the same thing for fruits you do it because it's supposed to be stored like storing information as a list and then for this particular section we have the salt the chicken the onion the pep the garlic the peppers and the ginger and then they are all boolean why are we doing that we're doing that because we want a situation whereby when the user goes ahead to click on uh let's say the item like this column now because we added an action to this column i will show you right the color of the container will change like you see how this one looks like right now we want it to actually change and so how did we achieve that we had to come over here to the fill color and then set some conditions to it so if you click on this you will see what we did how was it done so basically let me show you so for instance if you want to uh change the the color of these based on a particular condition you have to just click on these and say conditional value and then you start setting things up like this okay so uh so that's basically what we did here so we have the conditional scenarios here and then i had to go ahead and then click here and then add the values of the salt from the app state now let me click on it and show you what what is happening here so if you come here you see it's from app state it's not a widget right it's from the app state so you can just go ahead and say salt all right and when you click on salt you have to say that it's equal to and then sets the value as true and then you confirm all right so you confirm it and then uh it will appear like this right and then you put the color that it should show when it is true and that's the color here and then you leave this particular one as empty because if it's not true you want it to be empty and then you confirm it that's it so you do it for all of them but make sure that as you're doing it you're changing the 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 app state value right so you're saying it's this this one is going to be chicken so let me click on it and show you so this one is going to be chicken so i click on the container you will see this is actually chicken this says chicken is equal to true this one is going to be onion uh this is going to be onion is equal to true as well right and then um what else 
onion is equal to true and then uh, let's click on this this is going to be onion is equal to true right so onion is equal to true just to show you an example of it i will go ahead and just create one more which is the container so I'll go ahead and come here uh okay so this is garlic did we do for garlic okay yes we did for all of them actually <laughs> we did for all of them uh so uh we did for all of them so this is it and this one's too so the only one that we haven't done is for these which uh i would like to show you really how it's done so let's go ahead and just do it quickly let's uh let's uh click on the container all right let's click on the container and i have to add these uh value this one that says avocado i have to add it i'll just add only two avocado and apple all right so let's come here to the app state and add a state variable called avocado avocado and uh, it's going to be a boolean and i'm going to say create then i will say uh avocado and what avocado apple so let's say apple and this is going to be boolean 2 and that's it so now that we have this what we just need to do now is we will just go ahead and copy this color so i will click here i want to copy the color that's already there copy it and i will actually go ahead and just maybe just clear this color this just for uh for clearing sake right so then i will click on here and then click on conditional value click on unset click on conditions click on single conditions click on first value click on this and go ahead and go to app state and look for avocado so if avocado is equals to uh, i click on this and say specific value if it is true right i click on confirm i want it to show this color right that color should go up if it is not it should be blank i click on confirm that's it let's do the same thing to these particular one and click on this and say uh let's uh maybe we just clear this let's go ahead and say click on this go to conditional value click on this go to conditions single conditions click on this click on unset and go to app state and we want to do apple so if apple is equals to we say specific value and we say true and then we say confirm then we are just going to fix this value here that's it confirm so now uh that's it that's it guys so we won't fix it for this you can fix it for yourself right so but now that we have added a condition saying that if it is true then that color should show that uh, container should have that color what should happen to make it come true that's what we need to do here so which is what which was what i was talking about adding the conditions like these conditions here let me show you so basically what we did was we did give a condition for on tap so when it is on tap i want you to go ahead and update the app state and add it to the the the, the variable that is called basic which is a string add to list and add the exact value you get it then also go ahead and update the state variable for salt as true so that we can see the color and then for on tap we go ahead and say uh remove from the list the exact thing that was added right and then click on this and say set value and turn it to false and that's just it so that we can actually unselect so look at it this here so if you double tap if you just tap you have this if you tap away it goes off all right you get the point that's it so let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and add some actions to these come here and add an action and say uh update app state go ahead and click on this to add the field we want to say update the fruits app state then click on this and say we want to add to list what are we adding to list we will say avocado all right remember your spellings because you will need it let's go ahead and click on this and uh we will go ahead and add another action which is going to say update app state now we will click on this now this time around we are saying update avocado to true so that the color will show so we will come here and say set value and say true that's it so we will go ahead and copy the entire action chain here copy the entire action chain go to on double tap and paste the actions so here you click on the app state and here it was supposed to add to the list but when you're double tapping we want you to remove from the list so let's just copy what we have because it has to be the same value so click here and say remove from the list what are we removing we're removing this 
okay and then for this one we want you to actually turn it to false so when the pass when the user double taps we want it to turn the the value of that variable avocado to false that means the color won't show you get it okay that's it so uh you just go ahead and do the same thing to all of these and so we don't get to make the tutorial like way way longer so now that we have these what else do we need to do we just need to go ahead and then uh come to the save changes pad and then add it to our button all right so here it creates a document you can click here and then get the like add the source right so let me show you that quickly we will go ahead and then uh click on this and go to the widget state and say this is a uh, food name so widget states we will say food name so that's just it so you do the same thing for all of them so the image is going to be uh, uploaded file url the details the same thing and then when it comes to the basic part this is the part that you need to be careful you need to go ahead and add the basic part from the app state you see that's the idea and then uh, all of this has been set now that all of this has been set all you just need to do is go ahead and then finish up your project and this has already been set by making sure that this container will be showing the image all right so i can here and then make sure that it's showing the image from the widget right so the let's let me show you so click on this and say widget state uploaded file url good and then here is what i'm adding to call the image that's be able to upload the image so that's like the idea then we can go ahead and just upload it like run it and then uh while running it this time we will just go ahead and then like upload uh, a food detail so let's look for the next food to upload let's say uh let's say uh white soup so there is this soup. okay no no let's not use white soup let's say afang soup okay so it's actually uh in nigerian uh you know delicacy very very spicy uh you should actually try it sometimes if you find yourself in nigeria okay so i think i will pick this particular plate it looks really detailed <laughs> okay so i'll go ahead and say save image as and uh yeah i think so good so i will wait for a couple of seconds for this to load up it's not going to take a long time and then from there we upload it when we upload it it will show here in the database all right so at first uh this particular array was not properly set so nothing was there but uh okay so now there's a problem okay so we didn't set this one we didn't set the fruit array so let's go ahead and come here and say uh okay yes 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 we did it's just that it was empty so nothing was inside so nothing was inside so it's empty so yeah it's fine so let's see how we're gonna set this up and then look at the database and then wrap up the class i believe that you've learned a whole lot of things from this so please just go ahead and hit the subscribe button to subscribe to this channel for more videos and uh, like the video as well and uh, share to other friends who you who you you're very sure that they would need this drop comments too if you have questions and i will be very very available to respond to them thank you very much and so this is our application right so let's go ahead and log out from this old one and then let's log in uh yes let's log in uh this is me logging in as a seller yeah this particular account is for the seller and we are just going to set things up all right so this is it and uh i will click on this and add it this is going to say afang soup all right so i will click on this upload image and then click on this upload it it's uploading file then it will say success so success it shows here beautiful i think soup one thousand dollars and then i will uncheck this uh let's say i want it to be i don't want it to be pickup i want it to be delivering so now i will click on this to say yes there's salt inside the food there's chicken inside it i believe then there's onions these other ones have not been set yeah it can always be set and then i will now click on this and say oh I will eat avocado on uh, on the side, maybe a dessert. I don't know whether that's a good combination. Okay, so uh, I th this particular one was not arranged. We didn't fix this. So let's now say this is a very delicious 
uh, Nigerian dish and it will make you so happy okay so something like that then we can now go ahead and say save changes so when we save changes it says changes saved that means it's not in our database so we can come here and check so you see this is going to be the detail so right good it has salt chicken and onions under the basic it has avocado right you see everything is now working then i think soup this is very delicious so it's one thousand dollars beautiful so guys we have successfully built a uh, and very nice application connected it to backend we will try to see how we can complete it in the future parts of this video which i want you to look forward to all right don't forget to subscribe to the channel like the video drop some comments thank you very much see you in the next video hello guys welcome to another video tutorial by no code africa and in this tutorial i am going to continue teaching you how to build a food delivery application without writing codes this is part six and uh we're going to really like try to see how we can you know push this to another level really quickly okay so uh this is where we stopped we created a uh, this particular screen where the seller the food seller can actually get to upload uh, a particular meal which is basically called an item to the application right and uh, we've connected these successfully to firebase and uh, right now what we're going to do quickly is just to uh, create another screen which is going to be the screen that shows the food details right so we want to be able to query things and get them out of the database and then show them like this okay and um, what else yeah show them like this and uh, also we're going to try to see how we can query this particular place and show all the items that have been added to the database so that's it so so far we have like two items and uh, we're going to um, we're going to uh, look at our database now so this is firebase and you can just quickly like see the details that we have so here for food we have like uh, basically two different dishes one is empty yeah this one is uh, the default uh, detail this one is one meal another another meal here so one is afang soup then the second one here is fried rice and chicken so we will try to create another screen quickly uh, all right so let's uh, look at what we have to create we have to create this screen the screen for food details and this screen looks like this or we will just go ahead and create create it from scratch so let's go ahead and just click here and uh, click on create blank and uh, let's get the name of the page okay all right so we will just get the name of the screen and then come over here and paste it all right i i just had to like start my <laughs> my stopwatch so i don't get to make this video like way too long okay so we have uh this is a screen that we're going to be using and uh we're going to uh, copy some things so add new items let's go to add new items and copy a couple of things so like this i'm taking this away and uh, let's go to our food details where is it food details chef food details okay this is it so we will click on this and then i will just paste what i had copied this is it and uh, let's copy this information here and uh, paste it here okay great meanwhile well done for coming this far you are the main legend all right so we will click on this and paste it indeed uh, some of the minor details we will adjust them towards the end all right i hope that's okay by you then let's go ahead and set this up so this is a, a card a container so we will say it's 327 by 210 so we will come here click on the column drag this up click on this and um, put a container there and it's a uh, 327 i didn't quite get the second part 210 uh 20 radius pixel let me copy this all right so this is going to be 210 and the background color that's a few color and then here the border radius is 20. now this is pretty good and then inside this um this is the main uh, this is where the image will show so that's fine we will go ahead and then just put these details here so let's uh let's do this by adding a column inside here 
and then we are now going to add a row inside the row we're going to add a container all right so the container is going to be these particular buttons here so we will say uh should we make it a container or uh okay let's use a container that's pretty fine by me so container uh the color here is fff like 5f okay so the border radius is 61 uh 90 by 28 okay so let's put it here 90 by 28 and a few colors this and bottle radius is 61 pretty really good then we're gonna put something inside it and that's gonna be this text let's see the size it's a uh, 400 by 14 i will click here and add a row inside it and inside that row i will add uh, a text and i'm gonna paste this here and i'm gonna click on the row and center align it pretty good all right so uh we've gotten that and all we need to do now is click on the container right and uh okay let's click on the row first and let's add uh an image uh yes let's add an image so i am doing this the lazy man's way later on towards the end we will try to brush this up and change it a bit to a real carousel so I will just uh, take this up as an image, but I know this is a carousel, uh, more like a swiping kind of image gallery. So I will just go ahead and export this, and then I will go ahead and then take the dimension here, say 75 by 10. So I will say uh, 75 by 10, and I will go ahead and upload the image. All right, so let's just set it up and see how it goes. Click on this and upload it. And uh, after doing that, I will just go ahead and click on this container and then just copy this other first one that we did. Click on the row again and paste it. Now, what I will do here is I'll click on this and uh, let's see what we can do here. So I think almost everything is center aligned somehow. So let's go ahead and click on inspect and space them properly. So 23, so I'll click on this image and say 23, 23 here and uh, 23 here and then I will click on the row and center align it something like that and then what I will do is I will click on this and see the space from the top 170 pixels so I will give that 170 pixels to the row pretty good now we have these design and uh, let's go ahead and see there's a space from here to here so this is like 32 so I'll click on this uh, container and then give it a, a padding on the top 32 beautiful then I will go ahead and continue building my application so here this is a row so let me just copy this and uh, I'll click on the column click on add a child to the widget click on row and I will add a text and the text is what I copied before and I will just go ahead and duplicate this text click on this uh, this is basic 700 by 16 so let me just quickly change it so this is gonna be 700 um, by 16 all right I hope you're learning and uh, this is going to be $60 so I'll just go ahead and paste this here and of course change it also to 700 by 16 all right pretty good so I'll click on this and then I will do it like uh, I think this but that is not really giving me what I want. So I will just go ahead and use this one. And then click on this and give it the, uh, some padding from the left, 34, and also the other side. So let's say 24 actually. Then click on this one and give it the padding on the right, 24 as well. Click on this and give it some padding from the top. So it's 13 pixel here. So we will say 13 pixel. Beautiful. All right, then we will go ahead and then do the same thing to this. Uh, simply put these is supposed to be um, actually from the database i didn't really see where this was imputed but we will figure that out but let's go ahead and just click on this row let's click on this row quickly and then uh we will go ahead and then do some basic settings here so um the basic settings that we're going to do here is that we are going to take this out first uh or we can just leave it click on this uh click on this and take this out first and then go ahead and click on this and add a, 
uh, an icon all right so let's say let's add an icon so where is it let's write it in full icon uh, that's not <laughs> how to write an icon but it came out anyways so let's say location so location uh, is it giving it yeah something like this so let's pick this and uh, it's that way so let's go ahead and just rearrange it so let's click this and rearrange it here and uh, actually let's click these and make it left to line like this then uh, the reason is because this is how this thing is so I'll just copy this it says 400 by 13 so I will go ahead and just paste this here first uh, come over here and copy the color and uh, I will give that color to this text uh, change these to 400 by 13 okay and then these as well uh, let me see the size of these icon so this is uh, 12 by 12 but that's really small so I'll say 16 then I will paste it and uh, this is it click on this take off the let's see it has some spacing but not that large so let's just say 4 okay great and then let's give this one 24 all right good and then uh, we need to go ahead and then do some things here. There's a star here and some numbers. So uh, let's go ahead and copy these. Okay, that's uh, 1.0. Let's just copy it first. Um, uh, let's put a star first. So this is going to be an icon. Let me just click on this icon and copy it. Click on this and paste it. And then click on this and copy it. Click on this and paste it. <laughs> uh oh, not that one. Click on this one. Ctrl C. Click on this. Paste it. Oh, it's pasting the wrong thing okay so let's just go ahead and, and add a text directly and then this is going to be a star so let's click on this and change it to a star uh, the star is gonna be a field star something like this and then this is going to be uh, let me just copy this and say 4.9 so this is gonna be 4.9 uh, 4.9 and uh, let me come over here and paste the color and then click on the star and give the star a color as well all right so let's uh let's look at it again what do we need to add i think there is a text here yeah that says uh 10 reviews so uh let's go ahead and add a text inside here so and then we are pasting it uh i don't know that's a uh, 400 by 14 pretty okay then let's click on this and uh, add the color all right so we've done that what we need to do now is we can go ahead and uh, click on this and use this one now all right so but uh, this might make things a little bit complex for us but let's see click on these and add 24 here first then we will go ahead and um, we will add some spacing to this so just to push things away okay so this is gonna be 85 let's see will that work I think so 85 okay so pretty much it worked so we now have these arrangement properly cool then uh, we have a line here we have a line here that says 327 all right and uh, this is the color of the line so click on the column itself click on this you're gonna have to put the line the container in a row okay so then we put a container and then the width of the container is 327 the height is 1 and let's fix this color so then click on the row itself and center align it then click on this and check the spacing 24 so give it uh, padding at the top 24 now you might not really see it because uh, our screen here has uh, a similar color so we will click on this and wrap this widget with a container and the container is gonna have an infinite width and an infinite height all right so something like that so here I can still really see the line uh, but I can see the line here you can see the line here uh, maybe I didn't copy the correct color okay so let's uh let's look at it again so this is it and uh, I think it's a correct color but it's not just showing all right let's keep make it something deeper maybe this particular ascent okay yeah something like this is okay I can see this one all right so let's go ahead and then just uh, copy this ctrl C and paste it here 
and then come here copy these as an ingredient okay copy these uh, just click that to paste actually so take this off okay good click on this and delete it all right now pretty good we're doing fine now we have a couple of things that were found in the other side which we will just use okay so but um, it, it, it has some things under it a bit that we will have to change but let's see we have salt and everything let's just reuse it okay so let's go back to our pages and go to add new items locate this row all right just look at the row and copy it we don't want it to be a carousel right so no problems so check for details we will click on this and paste it right so that's it so uh and moreover we have just one two three we have five items so we have salt, chicken, onion, salt, chicken, onion, uh, garlic, peppers. We don't have ginger. So let's click on this column and take out ginger. Then click on this, center align it. Uh, okay, center align it, right? It's not really giving me what I want though, but I think it's okay. So here is a, a column. Let's uh, go to the widget tree and uh, I want to locate these uh, containers so this is a container and uh we have some logic here okay so we're going to have to delete all this logic so yeah so we would delete the logic delete the logic for here as well delete the logic for here uh, before i delete i want to copy these i want to copy these uh this color code then delete the logic then i will just okay now it's there okay pretty good so okay click on this and uh click on this and remove the logic we don't really need to add that particular logic right now so we will add another kind of logic over there so we will go ahead and click on this remove the variable and uh this one for papas we will click on the container itself and uh, click on this remove the variable beautiful then let's put that thing let's put the let's give this container a color and uh, we click here and uh, we can go ahead and paste it beautiful all right so let's uh, click on these uh, there's some little challenges here uh, let's click on this and see it's 19 pixels so yeah that's the thing so we will say 19 Let's give all of them the space that they deserve. 19. And I think when we give all of them 19, we will probably get it like looking the way we want it to look. So 19. Uh, okay, cool. Then we need these to be 24. Uh, 24. Pretty okay now, I think yes so if i go ahead and click on this and then give it a padding from the top 20 uh it's gonna look pretty much like what we have been working on so this is it and then we have some things under here we will walk in that by polishing it much later uh we really want i really don't want to go into so much of detail then we also have these other ones to uh you know work in so we have these things uh almost everything here so let's do the same thing let's go to the other screen come to add new items and uh, let's just copy them all right let's just copy this row Control c go to chef food details click on this and then paste it all right beautiful let's give it some padding from the top and uh, let's click this and see what it looks like so it's 30 okay not 30 let's say 20 all right so i will say 20 okay beautiful so we have uh, how many things do we have here ginger broccoli orange walnut ginger ah there was ginger there okay so this is purely ingredients uh okay so it's ingredients so broccoli okay fine there is no apple so let's take this off there's no avocado let's take it off so uh this other guy let's take it off so there is ah there was ginger there was ginger at some point i took up ginger uh okay so let's go ahead and uh let's try something um what do we do what do we do what do we do all right let's leave it like this uh was is that an orange yes it's an orange okay so let's leave it like this for now we will continue 
uh, and make this even better all right so let's make this 24 okay so beautiful all right uh, what we need to do now is there's a line here again so we will just go ahead and just copy this uh, uh, where is it where is it where are you so go to the widget tree it will allow you to see what is here I can't like see it directly uh, I can't see it okay so let's go here okay let's go here all right this is it click on this and counter C click on this and paste all right, so now we need to put uh, this description. Uh, uh, it's just quite simple and direct. Uh, okay, let's copy this first and click on this and paste. Okay, so then click this, Ctrl D again, and we have this for description. So let's copy this. It's 400 by 13. So we click here, we paste it. We will say 400 by 13. So click here and change it to 400 and then write 13 and uh we're doing pretty good guys so we can click here and make it spread out like that let's put 24 here as well and uh there you go we have what we need now what i want us to do now is uh let's go ahead and do something really quick what we're doing and we're gonna do it like really quick is to get these details right yeah so uh this is found in the seller's dashboard home so we will just go ahead and, and copy this. So I think uh, it's the container, right? No, uh, it's the row itself. Okay, so let's look at how this was done so that we can replicate it over there. So let's uh, let's close this column so that you can see. So this is a row, It's just, uh, the column is added in a stack. Uh, so then we have this row. So let's just copy it, Ctrl C. And then we go to chef food details we will see the scaffold this is a scaffold and then this is the main container so we'll click on this and wrap this in a widget called stack click on the stack and paste what we copied so now we have this navigation there it doesn't affect what we have underneath it doesn't have affect what we have here so uh i can just go ahead and click on this column and make it scrollable okay so we can actually get to scroll this if it's longer but right now it's not so longer okay pretty good now what we need to do next is uh to start back end right so basically continue on a back end so the idea is we do some front end then we do some back end just so that you can see how this thing works so we did this yesterday and uh now what we just need to do is um to uh you know complete it all right so before we continue this is the app this is how it looks like right we want uh basically what we want to do we created this to add something to the database uh yeah and we did now we want to be able to show what we added in the database here and then when the user clicks on this item it will take the user to these food details then later on not today in the next one we will uh, walk on the food list all right so i really don't want it to be so long so let's go ahead and create this so now when the user adds um, let's come to a seller dashboard home when the user adds a detail like adds uh, some sort of food stuff uh, food item it will appear here okay so what we need to do now is let's go ahead and delete one of these containers because it's in a list view we just added it for design sake so let's click on this and see where it goes so this is it let's uh, look at it again let me see how it works so this is the row okay that's fine so what are the things that are repeating uh what we have that are repeating uh these uh, columns okay so we will just go ahead and delete this one and then delete this one as well okay and then what we need to do quickly is we will have to go ahead and um we have to go ahead and uh click on the list view and uh, we have to start querying the database yes so uh right now before we continue we have our database for food this is it right so it has food name image details basic uh basic uh, the basic ingredients fruits as an ingredient and delivery pick up price all of this so now what we need to do is uh we need to just go ahead and then do some querying and then uh you know get it working so let's come over here to 
uh, the list view part and then we're going to query it okay so uh, first of all I'd like to make these things a zero yeah because it's not coming from database yet so let's make this zero subsequently all of these things will come from database so the revenue as, as well is zero dollars so okay yeah good like that and then uh, these should also be zero total uh, zero reviews okay so all right so now everything is like that zero let's click on the list view and start doing some backend queries so we will click on query here add a backend query go to select query collection and the collection we're querying is food we want a list of all documents and for now uh we won't work on any filtering don't worry we will do all of that i want us to encounter errors then we now fix it okay so that you can get to know it if i start fixing it like this you won't know why i'm doing it even if i tell you but i would like you to see it first before you get to do it so confirm and uh, confirm so now we have these it's overlapping on themselves so what we just need to do is click on the column and then uh give it some uh what do we give it some spacings here let's say uh let's say 14 right so it's now giving it some proper spacing you see so now we have this uh this is our list view and this is our column now uh this column now catches the database so what we now want to do is i'll click on the column open it click on the container this is a container and uh, i will scroll down to the background image of the container and then it's already in network so i'll click on this i want to get things from the database so i'll come here now that i've queried that particular list view i can see food document so i can say image and that's it so the image that we will show here will be the image from the database that's like the idea about the whole thing and uh, now that i have done this the next thing i need to do quickly is uh, to push things from this screen to this screen all right so that's like the beauty of what we're about doing now we want to go ahead and make it such that when the user clicks on this the user will be redirected to the food details so let's go ahead and click on add an action click add action and say navigate to uh, chef food details right good now we can add some transition here into fade and 500 millisecond now we want to go ahead and define some parameters we want to send to that page so we'll click here to define some parameters and it brings us to the page in question now what we need to do is go ahead and add the parameter so here we will say food ref let's just call it food ref all right, this is the reference that uh, we're going to be catching over there as well. And then what's the type of reference here? It's going to be document as reference. No need to really be required. Uh, we will say it's a food. The collection is food and we will confirm. Beautiful. Now that we've done this, we'll click on here to pass the thing back to this particular page. Click on this and click on unset and say food document, go and locate the ref and then confirm. Now we have done all the basic settings to make sure that we can click on this and it takes us to the other screen and actually pass the details to the other screen correctly, all right? So um, what we need to now do is we will go ahead and go to the, uh, where is it? The the chef details, where is it? Chef food details. So we, we go to the chef food details and then we now need to go ahead and then catch the things here. So we can go ahead and this is definitely saying food details, so we are fine with it. We can say, uh, let's add this image here and say this is going to, uh, let's say add action and say, uh, we can say navigate back, but I would like to really be very specific. So I want it to take me back to seller's dashboard home. Beautiful. Yeah, it should give me some fading and some maybe slow a bit. Okay, so this is it now this is uh the page that we have sent information to now we have to catch it so i'll click on this particular part which is a scaffold right i will click in the scaffold and then do some things right what do i do i'm going to actually go ahead and catch this reference you can see there's a reference here doc reference doc reference food so i will come here and say add a backend query 
query type is going to be document from reference the collection is going to be food and it's going to be uh, a food ref all right so we confirm and we confirm that's it so now we have these working out for us what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and then catch the things that we have sent that simple so here is the first thing we're going to catch is this container right so uh, I clicked on the container and then um, nope, not that one uh, okay yes it's exactly this one so we will go I want to locate this containers so this is a container and I have to go to the background image this is where I want to uh, put the image I have got so now there's a food document that has been sent to this page so I will say image I, I will collect the image and then uh, what else uh, we will change this later right so and then here I will click on this and say go to click on this small icon here and say food document food name all right then here click on this click on this and say um, uh, food document say uh, price yeah this is gonna be the price of the uh, food then we have to say number format uh custom specific specify format display as currency confirm good stuff now this ones are not going to come from database because we don't have them yet in the database so uh let's go ahead and just uh leave them like that right so we will f uh reorganize our database and make sure this thing comes with comes from database we will work, work on that uh because we don't have these details yet in the database you see we don't have it so we will work on it but not in this particular video so um the next thing we would do which is a bit uh, okay let's uh let's leave this for now and then let's come here to the description so i think this is going to be uh the food document and the details right so yeah these are details um now we have everything that we need right this is the address of the of the, the the restaurant but we didn't actually uh collect those details yet so we will skip this for now now what really is important for us is we're going to do some logic right <laughs> yes so these guys are not just going to appear right they have to be visible based on a condition right so we will do we will do them a favor a big favor and make them only appear based on a condition uh, meanwhile they have some actions here that we need to remove so let's come here and actually remove all the actions so uh, where is it just click in here and delete action chain uh, this is gonna take us some time guys uh, let's go ahead and delete some action chains okay so yeah you know we actually copied them from somewhere so they come with their they come with their problems so uh let's click here and delete action chain and click on this one to in delete action chain so we don't want to have any issues at all and then let's do that for all of these ones too let's come here click this it's pretty good what we're doing all right guys so i know that you're enjoying this video and you're learning a lot uh what i'm asking in return please is just for you to subscribe to this channel so that you can always uh you know get to see uh more videos from us yeah so please just click on the subscribe button click on it and subscribe to this channel and also like the video it's going to help uh tell youtube that this is a great video and it will make it viral please just help me do that thank you very much i know you're doing that already okay so let's come over here okay this one doesn't have anything and so there's this one as well beautiful and uh i think this one doesn't have are uh, some things too oh beautiful okay so these as well and walnut as well beautiful okay so um now what i want us to do is simple i want us to go ahead and uh set some conditions to show this column all right it's gonna be a logic right so this is uh, back end so back end has a lot of logic so let's come here we will be using conditional visibility okay so what are we saying exactly we are saying that uh let's make it a condition we want it to only show if the particular part in our database like okay for instance let me show you okay like when we come to uh where is it when we come to 
uh, let me see we have salt chicken onion good when we come here right you see we have uh, we have some details here inside basic we have salt chicken onion so we want to say that only if you see it inside here right we want you to show it right so that's like it but uh, don't forget these things are strings so uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult to uh, go through the logic we will have to manipulate it right if it was true or false kind of thing we would have done it like simply but let's just see how we can do it I hope we do it in this video okay um, let's see how we want to set some conditions right so we will say uh conditions right and our uh, single condition and uh here we will just say click on this and say uh go to the food ref document and check uh let's say basic so basic uh list contains item so let's say if it list contains item uh Okay, so list contains, let's see, let's see, item at these first, list contains items. Let's go ahead and click on this and say, if it contains what? If it contains, uh, okay, now this is not going to be, it's not going to work out for us. Okay, so prob probably, if at all, this was actually a, a boolean, right? So, if it's actually stored the information as boolean, then we would have gotten the perfect scenario. But right now, we wouldn't uh, be able to easily make this appear this. But let's just tinker around it a bit. I want you to see how I think. Okay, and eventually, let's see if we can. Otherwise, if we don't do it here in the video, we would do it in the next one. Okay so uh let's see what we do here let's go ahead and say um now let, let, let before we go ahead and even come here right let's ask ourselves right now this is the column right this is a column and we want to be able to show this particular information only if the this particular array contains uh, a certain item we want it to show if, if the array contains salt then show uh, make this thing show something like that right so uh, it's basically conditional visibility let's look at it again so um, we can't use this one because uh, uh, it's not going to really work out for us because even if we try that we will have to add another condition here and then we'll still get back to where we were before so it's better we just go ahead and make things simple for ourselves by just adding a single condition and then we will come here let me look at it again so we will say uh, come here look at the food documents right and then say um, where is it we will say the basic ingredients so if the basic ingredients contains uh, basic okay so if available number of items no future list no we want to say list contains items so where do we get this item that we're talking about if it contains uh, the item so uh, we can actually uh, create a new page parameter here or preferably now if at all we had it in a in a widget state like the widget state we will have done that but we don't and then we can't even go about doing this because that's not we're not doing anything here so let's try to see if we can uh create a new parameter if we create a new parameter and we call it uh let's say salt let's see if this one of the ways we can do it is this and then say if uh if the basic this if the list contains uh salt all right so show it all right so this is one way of doing it and uh, we will try to see if this works out okay so if it's equals to uh, first value list contains item and uh, and it's equals to what uh, specific value true okay so we can just leave it like this so if list contains value and it's equals to true then leave it like this okay so let's uh, confirm this and uh, let's try another way on this one okay so this one is chicken all right so don't forget it has to be like correctly spelled so we will come over here and uh, do the same thing for 
for these uh, let's go ahead and say um, conditional visibility and then let's uh, say conditions right great conditions single conditions and uh, we're trying to make it like very easy so well it's gonna be the same thing so instead of just rewriting all of it let's just come over here click in this and and copy it so uh, I will just go ahead and then copy these and then click on this uh click on this and then go ahead and paste it where is it click on these click on these and paste it but now we need to go ahead and click on the first value and then click on this to edit it uh this is not going to be sold page parameter uh create new parameter we will say uh, chicken so let's just confirm in a database that it's called chicken small letters okay good chicken so we will confirm and uh, confirm as well and confirm here and confirm okay great so let's go ahead and come here as well let's uh, click here and uh, the same thing so we will go ahead and click here uh, click here as well and then just paste this then click to edit this details um let's uh yeah so we click here to edit this to uh add another page uh, parameter we will call it uh onion so onion and uh, we confirm 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 uh and confirm all right so uh what we need to do next is Gallic. So we will do the same thing for Gallic. These are the guys we will also do the same thing too. But don't forget broccoli, orange, they were supposed to be in uh, another sphere of their own. Let me see what did we do here. So this is up supposed to be under fruits, broccoli, all of this. So uh, we will just have to switch, right? So yeah we will go ahead and uh uh what do we do let's just paste this one here quickly all right so turn on this on click on this and paste this and uh let's click on this to just edit it click this to edit this is going to be add another page uh, create a page a new page parameter and we will call this what is this last one this is a uh, papa's Oh, is it garlic yes it's garlic so we would just add it uh, garlic we didn't uh, do settings for that but let's just say garlic uh, confirm and confirm and confirm all right so then let's do these for papas and uh, the same thing so we will click here click on this and then just paste it and then click on this click on this uh, click on this to edit Alright, so I'm trying to make this like step by step so that you can just like really understand it. So I call this papers. Guys, I'm still following the spelling. I know that means papers. Papers. So confirm. Uh, right. And then uh, confirm, confirm, confirm. So we basically have like three other ones to do. So um, here, we will just go ahead and do the same thing. So um, click in this, click in this go to uh, just paste it but now we need uh, to change something so let's see this list is different this list is not basic this list is fruits right so uh, fruits contains uh, fruits contains uh, create a new page uh, parameter and uh, we will call it uh, ginger right no not ginger what is there guys uh, let me just i can't really see that screen right now so let's say uh broccoli right <laughs> broccoli all right so broccoli did i spell it correctly uh broccoli okay no it's single l okay single l great so confirm confirm and uh oh wow i i guess correctly there because I didn't know what was here in front. So I will click on this and just uh, copy the variable. Okay, and then paste it for these guys. These guys are fruits too. So go ahead and uh, click on this, turn it on. 
and then paste it but be sure to remember to go okay this is not fine this contains we are fine with this we will go here to uh no we will click on this and uh, change it from broccoli to orange so we add another new page parameter we call it orange okay so click on confirm confirm and confirm and confirm again and then the last one here this is basically like the last thing that we're doing then after this we're running duplication so we click on this and click on this and uh, click on conditions oh, well, not condition we're just gonna paste it then uh, we will click on this click on this and change this to while not okay so basically we are gonna add another page parameter we call while not okay so we confirm and confirm and confirm and confirm okay guys so we're done with this so basically this will show only if those things are true all right so that's it and then uh this is it so we will just go ahead and run the application right let's run the application and see how it goes so what we have been able to achieve so far is we have walked in this particular detail screen right uh such that when users go ahead and uh, let me click this to check out whether it's loading uh it's going to pop up very soon i'm waiting for this logo to go very bright yes i think it's about getting bright beautiful okay so there you go it's going up okay so uh what we did just now is when the user clicks on this items like when they've added an item here uh, not there when they add an item here it will appear in this place and when the user goes ahead and clicks on it like clicks on this it will take the user to where it will take the user to uh, the chair food details and then in the subsequent tutorial we will make it such that when they click on see all they will see the my food list right so they'll see all their food list and every single thing right so uh that's like the idea for what we have done so far that's like the uh you know the catch of everything that we have done so with these down you will be able to like super understand uh, more about Flutterflow and how to really, really, you know, manipulate it to build your stuff. So um, everything being equal, we should have our application running properly without any errors. And uh, then from there, we can actually get to have access to it. So I will be using an account, which is uh, uh, this one. And then I will be using it because the seller is true. And we just basically designed the dashboard for our, our uh, seller. Okay, so we're almost there. And uh, we've spent some time on this. And I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. Just click on the subscribe button and like the video. And this is one of the ways you tend to uh, support me and tell me, okay, David, I like what you're doing. Keep doing it. So I'm going to lock this guy out uh, and say, uh, let's wait for this to load and say start now and actually i just want to log in and uh, i'm gonna log in this user so please drop comments for me i like to read your comments i like to hear you tell me oh this is a great video thank you very much it's very inspiring because i get to spend a lot of time trying to think around these things just to create tutorials for you so that you can actually get to uh you know be able to build your business so here we have a um, we have uh, uh, an image, one image, uh, quite surprising. We should actually see like two because we have two items here. So let's go ahead and see what is happening here. So we have, uh, this is Afang Soup and uh, what happened here? Uh, then we have, okay, so they are basically three. Uh, yeah, they are three. Okay, so three, yes, yes, they are three. So you see, they are three. This one is showing because we have an, an empty, uh detail here right so great and i will later on show you how to make it such that if something is not active like we could add a status to it active or inactive so now we can just go ahead and then maybe click on this and it will bring us here all right so uh and then we will get to see this particular page okay so a lot of things are working there are the name is showing here and this is showing here but our ingredient is not showing that means there's something wrong with the logic that i wrote there okay so instead of tink tinkering around it uh, let's click this to go back 
and uh, of course if I click on this we wouldn't see anything because it's empty and uh, let's come over here to this one and then yes it's showing here I really like this this is beautiful I like the rice yikes okay so this is a very delicious food made with joy and love beautiful and then this one said uh, this is a very delicious Nigerian dish and it will make you so happy beautiful so the only thing that is not working right now is the logic that was supposed to be used to show this information so we will continue from this particular point next time we will try to see how we can make this work all right i hope you enjoyed the video tutorial just give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and drop comments if you have any thank you very much See you in the next uh, tutorial. Hello guys, welcome to another video tutorial by No Code Africa. And uh, in this tutorial, we're just going to continue talking about uh, our food delivery application. Uh, it's been a while I haven't posted a video on uh, YouTube on how to uh, build mobile and web applications without writing code. Really sorry about that. Uh, I am back on board and uh, I will be trying to see how I can publish videos as frequent as I can just to educate you on how to use uh, Flutterflow to build mobile and web applications. I believe you guys know that I'm a Flutterflow ambassador. <laughs> Alright, I had to just like flash my badge today so you can actually get to see it. Alright, uh, let's get straight to what we are supposed to do. Um, now this is the food delivery application that we have been building for a while now. and. Uh, okay so this is the resources we have been using we have created like a lot of these screens you know if you check the part one part two part three part four part five part six of the tutorials that i have posted so far you'll get to see a whole lot of things that can you know show you how to work in the ui part right there's some parts where i um I didn't use conventional scenarios, right? And uh, I'm going to show you how to, like, I'll just guide you on how to do that in this particular video, right? So um, uh, this particular video is going to be different from my videos, like the videos I have been posting. Uh, I will be showing you how this thing was done. Like, uh, I will show you how these things are done, right? Without having to, like, um, you know, show you step by step. But I will just show you the logic behind it because we have worked on the the front end designs basically like trying to see how we can achieve the designs here that i found inside uh, figma to uh into flutterflow right and so uh for some of you who might have noticed that figma is different now right you might discover that you have issues you can't find uh uh, the other kind of inspect where you can actually get to be seeing things so it's a bit different now you have to um, let's say you were already in this kind of view okay on Figma right so you see that it only shows your design and prototype like you don't have inspect anymore right so the reason is because uh, when you don't turn on the developer mode right you won't be able to see inspect so for you to inspect your elements and see the dimensions every everything all right so you need to go ahead and turn on the uh, dev mode here so when you turn it on, you will be able to like, you know, click on things and see the dimensions around your, you know, like your object, right? So uh, without saying much about that, um, I would like us to go straight into uh, what we have today. So we've implemented most of these designs in the previous part of these tutorials, like I said. Uh, there are some few changes and uh, I will just show you how uh, we can you know go move on to it now so this is the application and I have finished building the application right and um, this is how it works here this is how it works on on Flutter flow uh, the run mode right so this is for the pay this is for the uh, customer who wants to buy um, who wants to buy food right so I'm using like uh, one of our local delicacies here Fang soup it's a uh, popular food in Nigeria uh, my country yes so um, what you need to know is that uh, basically what the customer does is that they log into the application and then they click to view the food right so all of these things are coming from database uh, except these particular details they're not from database this is from database this is from database this is from database all right the image is from database the price is from database right so we have created some of this and then you can like the customer can increase and say okay I want to increase I want to buy like a six portion of this food well it, it is necessary to buy this six portion of this food it's it's very nice and it's very spicy actually okay so um, and then what else and then the person can go ahead and add it to cart 
and it says item added to cart and then uh, we can also have uh, like now you see like there's one item in the cart so you can click on it and see that there's an item here it says I find soup the total price is this and it's for seven portions you can actually go ahead and delete it right so you can you see here um, you can actually go ahead and, and, and delete it so we can delete it um, okay so I think uh, there is a, a small challenge with this right so it's because this particular system I, I, I created it such that it's um, how do I put it let's come here let me show you something quickly so when you create uh, state variables right when you create state variables like app states right state variables here yeah, you can actually say persisted that simply means that uh, you can turn persisted into true so you can see here total price I changed the persisted to true that means even after the application has been restarted right it will still uh, show like it will still let the user know that okay um, there is a, a food like there's a total price, right? It doesn't have to refresh every single time that the user restarts the application. So I think what we're going to do here is I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to use, uh, let me see, let me see. Okay, so this is it and this is it. So I will use this particular situation, right? Uh, I won't run it because on this particular browser, this is Chrome browser, uh, it has already captured my total price here. So, and that was for a different scenario until I claim my catch because before I can get that off. So I will just um, leave this particular place. I will just log out. <laughs> All right. So I won't be using here to explain this. I'll be using this particular, these two screens here. So I believe you can see my screen and um, here i am going to just go ahead and then like explain some things to you so for these the 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 seller the food seller has this particular information here if you can see so um i will just try to explain how it works and then how this all of this was achieved okay i might repeat myself a couple of times just so that i can be sure that you you grab my points all right, so we have these. This is for the seller, the person who is selling the food, right? Don't forget, uh, if they click on here, that's when they go ahead and add the different uh, food, right? So they fill in details here, and then they have, uh, they can add food inside the, the database. So at some point, we will like add a food so that you can like see, okay? So um, there's one running order, and uh, what else? Let me show you here. On this particular part is the customer. So let me just quickly reload this and then we will see how it works okay so this is it now this particular catch carries a uh, cat to zero It's the same user actually so it's still David all right so um, let's uh, let's use this this is David David and then this is uh, okay didn't show the name of the person here but this is a different account this is a, a different user and this user is a seller all right so if you come here to if you come here to uh, their database you see this is a food delivery application database and we have users here and in the user section we have like two users basically one person the seller is true and this is the account all right the second person the seller is false all right so this is for the customer who wants to buy and then you see here David David right and then this one is David Oracle okay good all right, so let's go ahead and then just test the application and see how it works. And then from there, we can now go ahead and talk about how this was implemented, the parts that uh, I implemented without you. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, I did this because I don't want the tutorial to be so long and I want you to be able to like really pay attention to mostly the logic. I know you can work on the UI now, so just the logic and how different things were implemented. So this is the account for the user. The user can just go ahead and then like uh, click on uh, this particular item, right? And then increase the counts here or reduce the counts, right? So I want to buy like um, $5,000 worth of Afang soup. Really good. It's a very good decision if you ask me. I know what I'm talking about. So you can click on add to cart and then um, you have the item added to cart. Of course, the count also increases here. It shows here that I'm buying $5,000 worth of Afang soup and it's five portions. So basically, I can actually delete it and it gets out of the cart as well. I will show you how all of this was created. And then, uh, so let's just go ahead and just add it again. Uh, this time around, I'll make it $7,000 dollars so i just added and then now it, it shows me the seven thousand dollar worth i want to buy two things so basically two things that are in our cart 
So like not two things, two things that are in the least of food, right? So I'll just go ahead and order seven portion of this because why not? Uh, I will just go ahead and add it to cart. Then uh, of course it shows you two now. So I have two items in my cart. And then uh, now if you see it, everything adds up, $7,000 plus $7,700. So this is it. I can actually delete the two items. And of course these things will also change. So the way it works is that if you come here, the cost the the seller already has one running order that was from a previous person like of course so uh if you check here so we can actually just go ahead and delete it right so this is the one order that was running so i will just take off this uh orders no not that one so with this one yeah so i will just delete it so we can start afresh right so we're taking this off all right so now we take that off and uh we we shouldn't be having any running order okay of course so it's zero now all right, so the running orders is now in zero, so beautiful. So uh, we come back to here, now we have this. Now the way I designed it, which is just the way I prefer my backend to work, right? So is when the user is done, like adding things to the cart, they can click on this button that says done. And when they click on it, they can go ahead and add their delivery address, right? So um, in a police, in a police street, something like that so all right then this is the total amount of money of course it matches with what we have here they can place an order and then uh, the way it works on on flutter flow you can add payments with stripes so of course when you click on adding um, like pay and confirm with stripe for instance it will just pop up a particular window here where you add uh, your card details and then you press it to pay payment make payment we didn't integrate that but that's pretty easy i will try to create a video for that subsequently but outside the food delivery tutorial i really just wanted to bring this particular tutorial to an end so we can uh pay to confirm and then payment successful right so and then everything becomes zero again cut is empty and all of that so i will show you how all of this was done if we go to the seller now seller has one running order and it shows the Afang soup, $7,000, quantity seven, fried rice and chicken, 700, quantity seven. So this is how it was done. And I will show you how this was implemented. The way I handled my logic, it might be different from how you would handle yours. Um, okay, so um, let's see how we achieved most of these things, right? So um, also, I would like you to see something, right? So when it comes to, let's just like log out from this account. And uh, there are some things that I did differently, right? So uh, let me see. Um, where did I do that? Start. Oh, wasn't it here? Oh, I think it wasn't there, right? It wasn't there at all. It was here, actually. So let me log out of this account. I click on the menu here. Uh, okay, this was this is still static. I didn't implement this. So uh, I'm logging out from here and then it brings me back here. There's some things that I did implement. Okay, so there's some, you see, I had changed from what we were doing before. We just had static scenarios here. Yeah? So I believe if time is enough, I will just like guide you through how you can implement something like this using page view. It's quite simple. All right, so uh, let's start again and then just, just let's, let's just log in. So this is the seller. This is the seller and all right then we can just go ahead and log in all right great then let's come back here and log in into the buyer no code africa hq at gmail.com all right so if i told you you're you've not actually liked this video already please just go ahead and like the video it helps our garden uh, it makes our YouTube to understand that this good this video is good and of course this video is good guys and uh, Because I'm going to be like very very explanatory on this I will try to show you these things like step by step, right? I will show you the card functionality and everything. So this video is good. Please like it <laughs> All right, great. Just like the video and subscribe to the channel as well while we proceed to explaining how this really really works Okay, guys, let's go back to Flutter flow itself now and I will try to go from basics to uh, pro level so we we did uh, do some basic things right so the very first thing that i did was um, i changed some few things if you can remember this was the onboarding that we did so while i was creating the tutorial right i i did uh, i did a very fast shabby work right which is not advisable 
uh, yeah so this is supposed to be a slide right it's supposed to be sliding but I just exported them as images this is not a good practice guys so it's not a good practice at all and so what I finally did was I created the the real onboarding screen using page view so you see here so you use a page view to uh, create this particular scenario all right so what you just need to do is like what I did was I went ahead and just carried all of these things and took them to uh, to their screen so I think we can just quickly like run through this right so let's see if we can run through it immediately together all right so this is the screen uh, the one that I did right these are images right so it's not like the standard thing compared to this one so we can just quickly like change it all right so let's change this to we have an onboarding here right okay great and this is also images so let's try to change this to look like this right so because if you were to just preview this particular one I think it should allow me to preview it while that is running let me come back here and just show you something quickly so what I did was uh, uh, the correct thing to do really is go ahead come to the, the screen itself go to um, all of these are not necessary so we need to just take off all of this um, let's see let's see let's see um, we need to put a page view inside this column right so you can just go ahead and delete almost everything here uh, so I'm gonna just close it and then this close it as well. We will copy it from somewhere else, right? So we already have it somewhere else. I just want to show you how it was done and uh, I'm sure that you will need to use it in your application. So I will just delete this. So delete this as well and I will delete this. Delete, uh, what is this? Um, okay, this is for a skip. So delete that as well and, and this. Uh, yes okay so we will just bring them back so i'll just click on here and scroll down looking for page view this is how page view looks like it is spread across your screen like this uh, don't worry we will just change that and then it has different uh it allows you to swipe through and then this thing changes you can just go ahead and then like adjust each of these things so these are the different pages so i will just delete this image right and then in place of this image i will just go ahead and um I will come over here look at what I did here in this other part so if you come to the onboarding here we have the same thing here so this is a let me show, show you the the page the widget tree so you can see it so we have the column and then we have the page view you see and then inside this page view we have the column here all right and then we have all of these things inside it so uh, let me just show you how that was achieved and then we had some basic settings too let me uh, confirm the settings for these the page uh, view had uh, the height of 600 and we're using this particular expansion okay so what we do here is simple let's come back here I think this was where we were no we were here so then we have the page view so how do we go ahead and set things up let me come here to this part and copy things so let's copy this Control C uh, let me remove these um, these uh, detail here should I should I not okay let's just carry it for now we might need to remove that so uh, just uh, copy this row Control C and then come to the onboarding right and then find your page view this is the page view and then we're going to add a column to this page view so we add a column and inside this column I'm gonna paste this information great come back to onboarding and then I'm gonna pick different things so I'll copy these two Control C go to here click on the column and paste it too just like that then come here I'm just like refurbishing what we did before Control C go here I'm just trying to show you how to quickly create that uh, page view slide thing and then click here and then I think the next one is uh, what do we need to paste um, I think that's all right okay so now this is the thing we need to fix all right so um, let's see how we can quickly fix this so you see how tall this thing is it's not here it's not at the center so we will need to adjust that and so what we need to do is go to the page view uh the page view itself and uh click on this expansion to make it like this so it covers this so let's just make these 600 all right so it now shows like this all right guys i hope you see how it works and then the next thing you need to do is this indicator alignment this is the indicator so you need to put it like this so it can align here at the center all right so uh then um what else we need to go ahead and then do a couple of things let's see let me just bring the other thing so uh, we just need to bring this button so ctrl c to bring this button 
you can add your button so i'm not trying to like do it from scratch so this is it and then uh let's get the other information too the skip information copy it bring it here and then click on the main column and paste it so like that you have this uh, screen now so you have something like this uh, you see um, let me use 390 so it shows properly so you can have the screen swiping like this all right so this is exactly what we have been doing so we've done for one screen so what you need to now do is go ahead and then copy what you've done here you see here we have like basically three pages so go ahead and copy what you have in uh, this first page view right so which is the column just copy this information control C all right and take it to uh, page the second page view all right so you see here it enters the center then you can just delete these and then paste this information and that's it so you have the second thing here you can go ahead and then change the details that i found here change the picture and all of that then the same thing you you do it this the same thing to what we have in the third page and then just click here and then go ahead and just uh, paste it so that's like the idea about the whole thing and i hope that it it, it helps you to understand how uh all of this really really works okay so let's see uh, how we can go ahead and then try to make everything really work out now. Now that you've seen, now that you've seen this particular part, uh, let's see how we can go ahead and then check out every other thing, right? So I have shown you those ones. Those are with like the preliminary small stops, and let's go to another thing, right? So I think the other thing that we needed to check out was the food details, right? Yeah. So we had some issues in the food details the last part. So and I was like, okay, we're gonna fix it in the next tutorial. So let's see how I fixed it, and uh, and you can also do the same thing. So what I did was, this is where the the user gets to um, like they see the 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 item that has been uh, made available for them so the their seller goes ahead and then clicks on this button to add food and then of course they have to click on this um they have to click on this to say that they have selected it so they click on it it selects like that so they select right okay so I, I think i didn't add for this particular part yep i didn't when we're creating it we didn't add for this we just added for two then you can double tap to remove and double tap to unselect double tap to unselect so we're using app states to do all of this right so you can refer to pad uh, i think part five and six of this uh, video tutorial series all right on food delivery application so and then you will see it so now the problem that we had was um how do we get to make this the user get to see it like for instance we now have salt chicken and onion all right and uh if you come to this particular one we have salt chicken and onion as well so uh but they're not just there by design they're actually there because of the database so let's look at the database and see what what i'm talking about so uh the food is what is created here right so you see here we have basically two food and then under the basic part we have uh salt chicken and onion you see here we're using uh, a list scenario here all right and it's a string uh then uh we have uh, we had added fruit at some point but i took that out so then we also have for the second food uh, salt, uh, chicken, and onion. So even to go ahead and then, um, let's say for instance, let me come over here and uh, where is it? Okay, this is it. So we're currently looking at fries, fried rice and chicken, right? So it has all these three things. Let's see if we can make it not have it anymore. So you shouldn't have onion anymore. So let me just come over here and just, I want to change this, all right? So I just want to change this to on all right so on just I'm, I'm currently tampering with the the value of that particular variable all right so i'm just gonna update it let's see how it makes it behave now so you see now it's no longer showing onion under the chicken property because of how i you know created it in the back end you see it it had it before it doesn't have it again so if i go ahead and then just put it right back so i have onion here and then i update it correctly so we now have, um, where is it? We now have onion showing here, you see? So I will show you how that was done, which was how we, um, like where we left over in the previous tutorial. So this is how I did it, right? So um, we have it in our database and then we have pushed information into this particular screen. How do we push information inside this particular screen? We did create, um, let's go to, 
the part that has to do with home version 2 so this is it all right so we have these uh, uh this is where everything starts guys so this is where everything starts and then uh, here we have a list view and then this list view was actually queried and it's this list of documents food all right so uh, there are no other filters nothing all right so now basically uh, we did this and then we just didn't do that alone we went ahead to create a given action to uh, each one one of these particular results which is this one you know this definitely since this is a list view you will see everything displayed but only one item is what you can tamper with you can't really tamper with this all right so uh, but now we want a situation whereby when the user clicks on this the user can be taken to another screen another screen which is the other screen that I showed you before this particular uh, screen so when they click on let me show you guys here so when they click on this it takes them to this particular screen right so now for us to be able to do that we need to pass information uh, from this particular uh, screen now to the next screen and wh where does this where do, where do we get this information from we get information from the query here we've queried the food food uh, collection right so we have information now so we need to be able to pass it to uh, another screen so how did we do that we just come here to action and then we added an action navigate to this food details right so food details is the part that shows the food details right and then we didn't just do that we went ahead and then uh, define the parameter like we sent some information there in the previous tutorial you will see it we sent some information there and then we caught it in the food details page right so if you follow the previous tutorial tutorials you will see how we cut it here let me show you guys so uh, if you go to the scaffold if you go to the scaffold you see that we have a food reference document here that shows uh, what we cut so this is basically it. we cut some things the food reference for this particular food right and then that's it like this so since we got that that means we've gotten every detail about this food uh, you know this food document and so with that now we need to now be able to determine what to show here so how did we go ahead do, to do that so what I did was um, all of this is done normal like by design so I now went ahead and set conditional visibility but now there's a condition to that so what I did now was if you look at it very well uh, these things have some form of format right so this is index 0 so it starts from zero, it doesn't start from one. So uh, zero, one, and two. So what I did was I said, I wrote some uh, conditional visibility rules here. And uh, and then what I did was I now said, uh, let's go ahead and open this first. So okay, before I talk about it, I said, list item at index must be equal to salt. So you see here, the first item is salt. So, uh, and then it's also stored as salt in the database. You see the correct spelling, All right? So uh, what I did simply was, I said list item at index must be equals to a salt. Now, what does that simply mean? Let's click on this now and see what it means. So uh, I went ahead and said that the item at index, all right, and then I now said specific index must be equal to uh, zero, right? So like if it is equals to zero and it is equals to salt, then let this show, right? So let me show you um, how we could like simply do this. I don't know, did I do it for this? I did it as well. So let's uh, let's try to uh, maybe delete this and just do it all over again. Okay. So let me show you how one was done, right? So now what I'm doing here is we've passed information into the screen. So I would just go ahead and click on this and say add conditions, single conditions. Now I want to add the very first value of the condition. So I'm going to go ahead and then click on here, and I will go to the food document, right? So I'm going to go to the food document and then it's on the basic. So I click on basic available options. I want to say item at index. All right. So I say item at index and then this item at index. I want to say specific index. Right. So I want to point to a particular place. So the first index I'm saying uh, is I'm, I want to refer to the index that I find. So this particular one is like that last one here is uh, let me see. Uh, I think one, two, three, four, five. No, zero, one, two, three, 
four, five. I think that should be the fifth one. So you can just like say five, right? So five. That means if the item, like look at it here, they are numbered. So zero, one, two. So if we have three, four, and five, the fifth one should be uh, this particular scenario, right? So uh, so we say five, and then we confirm. So if item at index is equals to genders, look at this, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this will be the fifth one. So if it is equals to ginger, so we'll say here specific value, and then we'll put it ginger. So if it's equals to ginger, then let's go ahead and then show it. All right. So confirm. That's that's basically the visibility rule that I wrote there to make this happen. I hope you understand it. All right. So let's go ahead and this was just to cover for what we did the last time. And so now this has been covered. Uh, what else do we need to cover? So we need to cover the calculations here. So the things that happens here. So first of all, let's look at uh, how to make these numbers to count. Right. So when the user comes here, when the user comes here and clicks on this, how do you make it to uh, how do you make this total number to count, and how do you make these to increase? Right. So, I believe that's a that might be a challenge to you. So let's look at how it was done. So here, what I did simply was first of all just create the design, however you want to do it, and then put a text here. Right. So this is a text. You see, just put the text in between, and then then we will just calculate it. So here we will go ahead and then do something really cool so i'm going to add an action the action is going to be doing something it's going to be updating a state variable all right see if you can see it's updating a state variable called quantity that means for you to update a state variable that is called quantity you need to go to the app state and create it so if you see here I have a state variable called quantity and persistence is false and I will I, I give it initial number here one which I'll tell you why uh, the reason why I put it number here one is because if you don't put one when the user goes ahead and then runs the application they will see uh, they will need to click on plus for them to see the true price of the product but of course the unit of, pro of the product should always carry the initial value of the product as well Okay, so uh, you have to create uh, the app state variable here, quantity. How do you create it? Just come here, click on this, and say quantity, all right? And then go ahead, and then it's um, it's an integer, right? And then that's it. You click on create. It won't allow me to create it because uh, quantity is already in use, right? So you just click on create it, and then you have quantity integer persistence is false. Then you can add initial value one. Okay. So now, after you've added that, what you now need to do is go ahead and then increment it, like uh, click on this, uh, like click on this and add an action. So basically, the action was uh, to increment it right so just increment to decrement all right so uh here you will see quantity which is the 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 name of the variable in app state right and then you'll be asked to choose between setting value or clear value or increment right and then you want to increment it by one all right of course because you want to incre increment the value by one right and then that's it so when you every single time the user clicks on this thing every time they tap on it you see look at this the action here it said on tap then in in, in uh, carry out this action so when the user clicks on this then everything has to increment and increase all right and so uh, we have this particular thing happening so when it increases it's updating the app state the value of the app state it adds it just increases by one here and that's basically what is happening in these uh, in this particular scenario okay so we have that now uh, then here this would have just been a normal text like it's a normal text what you just now need to do is go ahead and click this and fix it as the app state right so basically what I did was I came here go to app state right and select the quantity right so you just select the quantity and you can decide to say it's a number format and that's it all right and then you confirm okay so now you have this particular uh, scenario right so you just have this quantity so when you click this it's going to be increasing the number and it will show here in real time because it's rebuilding the page see here it says rebuild current page all right this is by default so it's rebuilding the page and it's showing you things in real time so that's for that one so for now for you to decrement now this is the part that is a bit interesting because we need to create a uh, something really easy here right so uh here was just you increasing by one here is you decreasing it by one so for you to decrease it just use a negative value minus one all right so that's it it understands that minus one means 
uh, reduce it by minus one okay so for you to decrement something right you need to use a negative number so use a negative number to indicate decree for decrement instead okay all right i believe you understand that as well so now that means you can create this and then you can create this so first step on that is create an app state called quantity make it an integer right uh, called quantity uh, make it an integer set a value for it unit one all right and then go ahead and then uh you know execute this as well and then you have this one running for you already now what we now need to do is we want a decision whereby when uh, i click on this their 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 final price here right should change that means look at what is happening here I want a zone whereby when I click on this, it's not just this is ch this that is changing. The total price also changes. So, so, so if I take this back to one, right? So this is the initial value one, right? So if I go ahead and then uh, add it, so this increases. It didn't just change only this number. So how did we do that? How we did it was we did something really cool here too, but it was a custom function. So if you click here, you see that there's a custom function called final price right how did i go ahead and do that what i did was i just went ahead and uh, clicked on this i went to uh, something called uh, a feature here called custom function click to create a new function right and then i did a, a basic setup here right so i did some basic setup you first of all have to change the name to what you want to call your function and then go ahead and then don't touch anything that is in this particular side set your your parameters here like now what we want to return there is a double that's money so it can have decimal points so it has to be a double so you click here and say double don't make it nullable you need to now add the arguments arguments now is going to be the the price all right so price it's not nullable price is going to be double again all right and then we need to add another uh, argument called quantity so we have quantity and quantity is not nullable uh, and quantity is uh, an integer right so like this now is the situation so you can go ahead and then uh, write it like this and then if at all you have issues understanding how to write the uh, code here you can actually go to code copilot and, and, and write something so um, uh, I really don't want to make this video long so I would just uh, close this particular one discard custom code and show you the custom code that i use so um the custom code that i used is this uh, let's go to sorry where is that thing yeah so this is it so we have final price here so you see it here so the same thing that we did here so we have a return value double it's not nullable it's not a list then the argument is price double not nullable not list quantity not list not nullable and it's an integer what we're doing there and then you now see this very simple code that says return the price multiplied by the quantity and change it to a double that's it so you can use this in your pr product as well just type this exactly there and then you have it and then after you've done that basically what is going to happen is that when you want to use it here you have to just go ahead and then um let me let me just quickly remove this and show you how it was done so this is just the initial this is just normal text design so we can click here right and then we now want to use a custom function so we'll come here and say custom function we pick the final price which is the name of the function it will require two arguments like the like two two va values so price where does it take the price from so you've passed some information to this particular screen so you need to just go ahead and click this and say uh, go to the food doc document and say price right so this is the price and then the next thing we need to do is we need to come here and say value so the quantity is going to be in your app state okay so it's the app state that we're storing that quantity inside so we pick it and that's it so you can just go ahead and then click on uh okay don't finish there so this is supposed to be money so like the result the final result is supposed to be money so uh you see here available format number format yes we need that and we need to change this to custom specific specify format and then say display as currency and that's it and uh, so we have this now so this is basically how it should appear okay so uh then um what else so um okay so now we have that if you come here you will see everything everything is working out very very nice 
Okay, so that's it. And so now we have these particular two things now. And so I have shown you how to create it such that when you click on this, this is increasing. All right. And when you click on this, this is also decreasing. So good. Now that we have done this, what else do we need to do? Now we need to go ahead and do something else, something cooler. All right. We want to add to cart and then uh, then uh, do some basic things. So add to cart requires you to have a cart, right? So we have a cart here. So it's called cart, right? So this is the cart, right? And um, this is a list view and it's been queried. So I created a collection here. Let's start with the collection. So the, this is a collection. The collection is this is a collection for cart and then it says food name, image, price, quantity and buyer. Take note of the data type as well. Buyer email. All right. So uh, the reason why I use the buyer email is so that maybe in the future when I want to show the buyer what the person bought, like their list of orders, like of course, I'll be able to filter it according to the one that belongs to them. OK, so. Um, now you have this information and then we just have all of this. So this particular one will carry the food name. So you see here it's from the card document and it's food name. And then you see these two things. I use combined text here and it stands for let's click on this. You see it says the price. So it shows you the price of the product, right? The price of the product. So if you click here, you see it's the price of the product, right? And then um, that's the price of the product is from the is from the back end, it's from the database. So and then then we have X. This is to show you the quantity. So it shows you the quantity and it's also from back end. All right. So how did we get to that point? Now, uh, let's come back here to food details and then let me explain it. So when you click on this uh, button, what we want to happen is we want a situation whereby the following things will happen. So see it here. So first of all, we want to create uh, a document called cart. You see, so we want to create a document called cart and then we are putting the food details. So I believe you know how to run this. So food details, select the food, uh, the food details from the screen. Of course, see it here now. The, since we had um, we have a food document on that particular screen, so you will be able to get the food name. You get the food image, right? You get the food price, all right? Then you get the, the quantity as well. The quantity is from the app state, right? So it's from app state here. And then the buyer email is from authenticated user uh, email. So this is it, authenticated user email. Great. Now, so it creates a document with this detail, all right? And then it stores it here in, um, uh, where are we? Okay. Okay, we don't have anything in cart. That's why nothing is showing here. Yeah, so yeah, I did it such that cart always disappears, right? Like we empty the cart after the user is done with that transaction. Okay, so let's come back here first. So you created the document, right? When you create the document and this is it. And uh, when the document is created, we want to do one thing. We want to do a couple of things here. So uh, I, want, I want to explain what we are doing. Now, uh, there are some things that I did here, which is something that you need to really pay attention to. All right. So I have a couple of things that I did. So I have an app state called food name and it's a list of food. Now, guys, this is something that I created so that it can help the uh, seller know uh, the the number of the, the others, right? So I have your food name, the price, the quantity. So this is basically what I did. Um, what I did here is this is how I handled my logic. You can choose to handle yours in a different way, but this is really good, really. So um, what I did was simple. Now, with this same icon, so this one does the creating of the document, it has to do something else. It creates it, you can see it, you, uh, when, when you come to the cart, right, so let me show you. When you come to the cart, you can now view the things that are coming from the database, that's fine. And then you can even implement this delete, which is uh, basically, let me show you what it happens here. So when it does back and delete, it deletes the food reference, uh, like the cart reference. So this is it. Okay, so... Um, now, uh, let me show you what I did uh, when it comes to the app state here. Now, I did something to help the sellers to know the item that they are, that have been bought and the quantity and everything. And um, look at it here. So I created a, a particular uh, app state 
variable called food name and it's a list all right so it's a list i created something called food prizes too is a list i created something called food images is a list well i didn't use it then i had quantity so i used uh, these three ones so food name prize and so this shows for one order so when the user runs what order it generates the list here and um and then so now since we have this list we now need to put things inside it so how do we put things inside it that was what i did here okay that's what i did here in this part let me show you where is the food details no not that one this this one all right so we have it here you can now go ahead and then let's look at it so when uh, the user clicks on that button it creates the document it goes ahead and updates app states for the food name and it adds to the list the name of this particular food that the user uh, choose right so it adds it to the list and then it goes ahead and does the same thing adds the quantity to the list of course the quantity is from the app state quantity and then the price it adds the price too now this is the part that might be a bit dicey right because uh, it's adding the final price so the final price has to be from the final price uh, custom function so you need to add the value of the price and add the value of the quantity just like we did before all right and so and then the images as well I was thinking of displaying it but I didn't end up displaying it but that can still be displayed okay so um we have this working out for us so it will update the app state and then what was this so uh yeah good it's also going to the same button all right is doing another function it's increasing the the total uh, amount of money so look at it here when the user goes ahead and adds something here like let's say we add this now you see we have the there's a, there's a total price here so we need to create a uh, a scenario for that as well so and that one button does all of that. So, uh, so here is the, uh, the 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 functionality for that. So we have um, uh, another state uh, variable called total price, and it's uh, it's a double, right? And then when the user clicks on this, it just goes ahead and adds this increments the uh, the total price variable here, right? With the amount of the food. So that's why you have the price final price eb here so it's still using the custom function all right okay and then we also need to do something else here so we have another thing here observe it also updates the the uh, app states back to one now this is something that just came up as a result of the fact that when you increase the app state variable and then you leave it there the next food that you want to buy will have the same value of the previous app state for quantity all right so what i did was after it has created all of these and it's about showing snack bar let's set the value of quantity back to one remember we had already set it before okay so now that's that's what this button does okay so now we are done with that particular part and then uh, now we go back to cards and then we see cards so here on the card let's do let's see how this was done now I just did a text combination like uh, combined text and then I put one value here the second one here is going to be the the total price from app state right okay guys so that's like the idea and then of course make it custom specify formats and then display as currency and that's how we do this and then uh, now let's talk about this particular thing here because when the user clicks on delete it's supposed to also delete the uh, item from here not just deleting the item from here it's also going to delete the uh, the, um, the the amount from here as well so let's look at what is happening so here first of all it's it's doing a backend call and it's deleting documents from reference fine we know that and then now we're going to go ahead and say update the app state and then we're saying update the app state remove the food name from the list using food name remove uh, from the list the quantity all right and then remove from the list the price as well right so that's like what we did here remove the image everything so you have to just create the same scenario and then here uh for us to be able to put the final price again like the final price has to be correct we have to remove the exact amount of money that has to do with that particular reference so that's why we use the negative final 
price here, right? So I created another function called negative final price, and uh, let's look at the function and see what it's what it is. So it's what it does here. It's uh, don't forget there's a price. So now we want to. Uh, remove that we can't just say minus that price because we need to know what the price is that's why we're using a custom function here and it has just one argument and that argument is a uh, price and is a double right so we're now saying return price multiplied by minus one all right so simple so just simple formula okay and uh, that's it so it's just going to multiply the price by minus one and then return it to a value and that's what we're going to use in decrementing the uh, because basically this is decrement so decrementing the total the final total price okay so that's like the idea okay so um I believe you've seen how that works as well and then the final part of the tutorial is going to be me talking about what happens after they click on done so they are finished adding things to their cart now they need to check out so I created a button here that says done so we have a couple of actions here so let's see now when they click on done it creates a collection it creates a document in the collection called order they are ready to make an order, right? So the, then it takes the food name, the price, you know, see all of this here. And the images, well, we just took it. And then the quantity takes all of this. And then after that, it goes ahead and pops up the bottom sheet, right? So bottom sheet, which is called cut final. Uh, let me show you the bottom sheet I'm talking about. So this is it. It to pop this up. All right. So they get to see these. They can put the address for delivery, and then they'll still see the final price. So this is what I'm talking about. If they go ahead and then, of course, we let's add another item here. Uh, let's add another item. So we add to cart. So we have these. Okay, good. Then we can now go ahead and then say done. Right. It shows delivery address. So I can say Iqbal Road. Uh, you uh, I bon state and then it's Tuesday 2400 I go ahead and place my order it shows my price then I go ahead and pay and confirm all right and it's confirmed and it clears my cart you see my cart is empty right so let me show you how that was done and then of course the uh, the seller sees here another order right so this is it and it even shows two running orders so let let's let's talk about how that was implemented and so uh, it pops up these and then we come here now so we have an action for this place order let's look at the actions so here we're creating a document called payment right so we have a collection called payment uh, this is it for payment so this is takes the name of the user the amount of money they're paying and this amount of course is coming from the app state for final price right so a total price right so then we have address which is uh, the address that is coming from the variable like the text field here all right so they click on this it creates the, the document and does all of this right and then we now need to go ahead and navigate to a payment method right so payment method so here in the payment method we have to just do a couple of things very little things right so uh it just navigates to payment and then we do this so let's now go to the payment screen and then see uh, the final part of the whole thing so when we go to the payment part and then we are going to do a couple of things so we have like five actions here so we're going to create the back end call right uh, what we want to do is when the user goes ahead and clicks on payment right uh, stripe let's say we're connecting it to stripe stripe is going to pop up and then they will put their card details and make payment right so and then after they've made payment we want this to now go ahead and then be deleted so every single thing that had to do with the items that are in the cart should be deleted so back and call delete and we're deleting the cart document and then we are deleting them based on indexes so we have the value one we deleted gone the same thing for this one we deleted we deleted as well and uh, this is for zero so basically uh, i made an assumption that there are only two items in the cart and so it has to be like that right so you can uh we can write some more uh functionalities like some conditional uh, uh scenarios logic to capture some other errors right so then after that they can go ahead and update the app states and clear the total price right because now the cart is empty so we have to clear the total price we have to clear the food name we have to clear the food prices the list 
we have to clear the food images, we have to clear the food quantity. And then we show a snack bar that says um, payment successful and then we navigate back to home too. So that's it. Okay, so I believe that you have been able to get a, some value from this video. And then the part for the counting here, the, I know, I believe you might want to know how this was done. So how I did this was quite simple as well. What I did was there's a container for, there's a container before the text, before the row that contains the text. So see, so what I did was I queried the, the container. I want to show the number of uh, items that I've added to the cart, right? So what I need to do now is just go ahead and query the container, uh, query container, and then I'm filtering with the buyer email has to be called the locked in user's email, right? Great. Then now I go to the text, right? I go to the text and then I do something. So I click on it and then I, I will be able to find uh, the cut document. Then I select number of items, number of formats, no formatting, and that's it. So it now just counts the number. That's how I did all of that. And um, I believe that you've been able to get like some real good value for these particular tutorials. And that brings us to the end of the food delivery application tutorial. If you have any concerns, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and uh, I will be you know, much, much available to help you out. And uh, if you also want to clone to this uh, food delivery application to the extent that it has been built, all right, if you want to use it to start your business or something, just reach out to me as well. Check uh, the description below. You will see the link uh, to this channel, of course, <laughs> all right? And then you will see my details. Uh, you can use that to contact me on LinkedIn or on Instagram, okay? And then I will give you access to the 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 clone uh application all right so you can use it to start your business all right guys i i'm going to be ending the tutorial here thank you very much for watching remember to click on the subscribe button click on the like button as well drop some comments um, and just be nice right so <laughs> yeah because uh it encourages me to create these tutorials and see how i can contribute to the community for the for the flutterful community all right guys thank you very much and uh, see you in the next tutorial i'll try to be consistent this time around thank you very much <laughs> all right Hello, David. So uh, I am like super, super excited about your tutorials and the the whole tutorial about the food delivery application. It's like super, super helpful. I have learned how to, you know, manipulate uh, widgets in Flutterflow to create amazing designs. I have learned a whole lot of things. Really cool. But there is something in your application that doesn't just cut it right so the the way you handle the cut functionality in the food delivery application seems to work but it doesn't work in all situations what if there are several sellers like uh, several uh, vendors on the food delivery application right so how do you get to handle the cut functionality and even the order functionality I wanted to like you know try to elaborate more on how it can work and of course, in almost all cases, all right, this is going to be super helpful to me and to other people as well. So, uh, and then also, if at all, you could just show some extra things that can be added to the food delivery application that can just make sense. Maybe distance, uh, you know, from different restaurants, like uh, maybe some form of calculation to check the how far the restaurant is from the location that the user is the user is currently so I, I think something like that will be super helpful to me and to other people can you uh, just show me how to do something like that yeah hello david so uh i am super excited to hear this uh suggestion and feedback from you uh first of all it's really really uh nice to have you here and um Yes, it's true. The cat functionality that I created doesn't work in all cases, of course. But that was actually to just show you that there are different ways that you can achieve the same thing, all right, by maybe using the long method or even trying to use the short method. So uh, I'm going to actually show you how to build a cat functionality that works in almost all cases. And then, yes, I will show you how to calculate the distance between the restaurant and where the, you know, about to be customer is currently located at will that help you i'm sure it will help you all right let's get straight into it hello guys welcome to another tutorial by no code africa and in this tutorial 
just like the suggestion that we got from David, the other David, you know, uh, I'm going to show you how to handle your cart functionality even better. I'm going to show you how to do it the correct way. The other way was still correct, but uh, that was just me trying to show you that you can manipulate these things the way you like it, right? So uh, I will show you how to handle it in a different way, more simpler, but even more interesting. Okay, let's look at it. So first of all, this is our application, right? Uh, let me just go ahead and uh, quickly reload this. Oh, yeah. So it's supposed to be like that. Reload it quickly. And then we have our food application. And uh, OK, after all of this uh, part, we can just go ahead and, and log in. All right. So um, let me log in. I think uh, No Code Africa was the the about to be customer or the customer okay so let me just log into that part first and then show you some things okay so uh look at it here so i had integrated uh the location functionality and so right now uh, this application wants to know my location so i will say yes allow all right i will show you how to do this in your application Okay, great. So after that, I think we now have access to the application. Really, really cool stuff. All right. So we have like uh, three different uh, different foods. There's fried rice, there's total bread, and there's burger. Who doesn't like all of these food? I don't think there's anyone that exists that doesn't like all of this food. Well, maybe some people. Uh, there's always exception. Great. So um, what are we going to do right now? So right now we're just going to do something really fast and simple. We're just going to run through uh, what is really happening here. So if I click on this particular, uh, you know, product right now, the food, you see it tells me that I am, this is, okay, I missed something here. I should have put an M. So this is 7.5 kilometers from me. All right. So I will show you how to quickly do that and uh, show you the custom code that you can use to implement that. So um, let's look at how this works now. So there is a particular uh, uh, screen called orders, right? So this is orders. These are like my old orders, right? These are like the old orders that I, that I had. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete it and then show you how it actually does work. Okay, so let's go to the the Firebase uh, part. So this is our Firebase and then this is the previous uh, order, like the order collection that we were using. We're no longer using this. We're using something else entirely and we called it orders, all right? And then we no longer have a cart in our uh, Firebase because we are now using carts on the local state, all right? So our app state on the platform itself. So let's uh, take a look at the different things there. Okay, so I think there's something I want to do here. Okay, good. So what I wanted to do is I needed to delete these orders, right? So I will just go ahead and delete the order here. So delete this particular document. Uh, what else is here? So I will delete this as well. And then I will delete this as well. Okay, great then I will delete this as well. So I want us to have like uh, a different item and then we can just go through it. All right, so great. If we come back here and then we check on others, uh, this page is actually blank, right? So nothing is there. Uh, I didn't put any, uh, some form of error to like, maybe something to check for error, but so we will leave that page. Okay, all right. So we will have to have something there for it to show. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and look at the application again. And this is it, guys. So uh, initially, uh, you can check the previous video to see how we handle the cart, and then also cross check with how I'm going to handle the cart this time around. So I will just show you how it was done, and then you can see how you can uh, learn from this. Okay, so let's go to uh, the cart. All right, so this is the cart. Before we come to the cart, so we have like a. Um, this is the cart. Let me check out something. Uh, okay, so I have uh, I have some parts here that is still left from the previous part. I could just easily delete it, but um, well, yeah, I think I will in this process. But don't get yourself confused. You will see what I'm doing. Um, okay, so before we manipulate anything that has to do with the cart, the very first thing that you need to do is uh, you need to come to the 
app state and then you need to create something called uh, cart items right so this is no not cart items cart itself right so we have a uh, cart right so this cart is a list uh, and the data type is docu document reference and it's referencing the food document all right so you need to set this up first in your app state just like this okay and then also you need to do some few changes in your uh, collection right so if you come to uh, orders right now this is my orders is really shorter than the previous one so this is my new orders it has the name this is like the order name all right so order name uh, here we are going to generate uh, uh, some form of random code all right look at what we have oh I have already deleted the orders so when we do it you will see it so the order name is like the name of the order not the name of the food just the name of the order then the amount of money all right then we're going to look at uh, the address uh, okay so this address was uh, I think this is the email of the user yes and then uh, the item okay so we did uh, document reference and food items ordered uh, list document uh, reference food as well the most important of all of this thing is this particular part you see we have items ordered it's actually list and it's a document reference that's the data type and we're referencing the food collection all right in this scenario the food document okay so uh, and then we now say the user purchased uh, we're using document reference users I will show you how we use this inside the application so when you come to the when you come to the uh, food details all right uh, let me click on it all right so food details is where you you get to interact with the application right so when you click on the add to cart now let's look at what is happening here so we have a couple of actions here now some actions are from the previous way of handling the cart but I will show you you can do it with that one and use what I'm about showing you right now so here we have um, this was the previous one so this was when we we're creating a document to add it to cart that's not what we're doing we're now going to ahead to do this you see what we're doing right now yes so uh, the uh, the app state uh, variable or you know field that we created all right so what i mean by that is this right so we created like an app state variable here all right so uh the variable is this cart so what we now want to do is we want to add this particular uh food reference to that uh cart that particular variable so you see here what you just need to do is of course just like we always do it uh, use update app state and then you just click and then you go locate your cat document you click on it and then after that you need to go ahead and then select the update type so here we are doing add to list and then you now need to go ahead and then select the food the reference of the food document right so that's just it so you click and then you go to food document and then locate the food reference that's it now when you're done with this every single time that the user clicks on add to cart right in the application it will not create a document in firebase instead it will create uh, a, a document inside the app state variable that you've just created that's like the best way to do it the reason is because this is not an information you want to like store in your database because uh well you you can store it in the database but if you're looking at the, you know cutting down on the cost how firebase will be charging you for the read and writes uh, on the uh, you know platform right so you need to consider just storing this thing as uh, a variable all right in the app state okay I hope this makes sense so now after you've added this the next thing we need to now do is we go to the cart all right so we go to the cart and here is where we have the cart right so the cart is this particular part is what we did before right the previous thing that we did so let me show you here so what we're doing here is we're querying the cart collection right so we're not doing that anymore right so uh, I just left this here just for reference purposes so that simply means in our cart uh, uh, page we will be seeing two different items like an item gotten from the previous way and this that's not to confuse you I'm just like showing you the different differences all right so um, if we come to the the new one that we're doing right now is this particular one the least this is the particular part and what we did was if you look at it very well uh, I, I went ahead to uh, let's look at the the thing that is happening here so since we created uh, the the variables the variable 
in the app state, we can't like query it, uh, like do a normal backend query, like query collection and all of that. Instead, we have to generate children. So what I did was I clicked on here. This is already the list view selected. Uh, then I just gave it a name, cart items, right? So this is a variable name now. And then I went ahead and then selected the the where I want to get my information from. Like I'm, this is another way of querying, but now I'm querying the app state variable, all right, called cart. So now what I'm doing is, uh, so I clicked on this and I just go here and then I go to app state, then look for cart, right? So I selected cart. And then after that, I have this particular situation. Now, after I've had this kind of situation, right? What I need to quickly do is I'll come to the row, the next level here. So this is a list view already. So I'll come to the row here and then I will go ahead and query the food collection. All right. So I'll query the food collection because now the, the items that we stored in our, in our, uh, you know, in the, in the app state variable, that's the card, it is storing these things as a, a reference, right? Especially the items ordered. So we need to now go ahead and then query it as a document from reference, and then we pick what? We are going to have to pick the cut item. So when you come here to select, you see the cut item, which is as a result of the children's that you had already queried, all right? I believe you understand what I'm saying. So uh, this cut items is from this. Let me show you again, just one more time so you can get it so uh this list view we generated the uh children from here all right and so when we are now querying this particular role we are basically selecting uh, uh the cut items as the the source all right and so after this now when we do this what we now need to do is we'll go ahead and then do the normal selection you click here go to where you are supposed to uh you know, pick your image, so click on it, go to the food document and select image. That's it. The same thing with the food name, you do the same thing. So you go ahead, uh, where is it? So click here, all right, and then go to food document and pick food name. The same thing with the price. You pick the price and then the delete here is also going to be deleting this particular thing, this particular, uh, you know, let's say document, all right, from the app state, right? So don't forget we were adding it to list and then at some point we might need to remove it. So let me show you how I handled this. And then so basically what I did was when a user clicks on this, it will go ahead and uh, it's going to update the app state. This The app state is updating the cart, the list, uh, all right, and then the the update type is to remove from list and then we are now selecting the reference that we are removing it's going to be the food document and reference all right that's like how it's done so i have explained how all of this is done now so now basically what now happens is that when the user goes ahead and then adds things to the cart we're going to see uh, a document and we'll see all of the items that they've added in a list all right then another beautiful thing is this when uh when the click on let's go ahead and look at what we did before all right let's uh, go to uh, food details right so in food details let's see the details that we are storing now if we come here to the action part when someone clicks on add to cart now yes we update uh, we add to list okay so we add to list this particular information what what other thing are we doing so this this particular part was the previous thing that we were doing before so that's not really much of a our issue uh yeah you, you can still use the same format that i used before to increment or decrement your prices and all of that okay so we're not really going to pay attention to that so now let me show you how it works in real time okay so the user will go ahead and come click on this all right and then maybe increase this all right so well this wasn't really added but it's still going to work in the previous one so don't confuse yourself please just try to see how you can capture the element right so if i go ahead and add to cards now it has added an item to the cart and then now we will see basically we'll see two items so this is the very first one which is working the previous way right that's the previous way we had it and then this is this new one that is working the way we're doing it now okay and then uh let's go back let's add another item so we have a couple of items here so that was fried rice let's add a total burger right total bread okay great so i will just leave it like this add to cart great now I've added second item, and so this is it now. This is for the previous where the cut was done. This is for the new where the cut is 
you know, been arranged. Let's go ahead and add the third thing so I can show you how beautiful this is. So we can go ahead and add the third one, all right? So here, you will see the, the, the three items that are added in a new kind of cart and then the items that were added in the previous cart, all right? So this is, this is how it works. Yeah, we can actually get to delete it. So I can click here and it goes off, right? So we just removed fried rice. So let's go add it again. Uh, so let's remove it here too. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let me go add fried rice and uh, come here and then add fried rice. Great, who wouldn't love to eat fried rice? So this is it now. Now, and there's one more thing that I have not shown you. What happens when the user clicks on checkout? Because we won't be using this one. Okay, so now let's go ahead and then look at uh, what happens when the user clicks on checkout. So let's go to cart, all right? And then we will scroll down and then we'll click on checkout. Now, this is basically what happens in the, in the checkout part. So when a user clicks on checkout, we create a document called orders. Beautiful, right? And then we set some fields. We will now have the items ordered, right? So this is gonna be a list of documents, all right? And we are setting the value from the cart. Beautiful. And then, um, then that's for that one. Then we now go ahead and then set something else. The name of the order. So let me show you how beautiful that is. So, so we will click on this, and it's a combined text. So I just put here order. Then I use random, random uh, data, right? So how did I do that? So you can just click here, come to random integer, and then select the minimum, select the maximum, and then that's it. So you you. Confirm. So if you want it to be like uh, four digits, so you can make this 1,000, right? So if you want it to be a minimum of five, uh, three digits, so put a minimum of, just put 100 here, right? And that's it. Confirm and confirm, and then you have all of that working. Then the amount now is, uh, it's basically the, no, not that. The amount is the total price. So we did this already. So every single time the user is adding something to the, the card, we are increasing the, the the app state core total price by the by the price of the product they've just added so that's it when we are decreasing it it's the same thing okay so uh let's go ahead and then see what to do here now um let me come over here and uh all right so here we are all right so we can even add another action to this checkout such that after checkout has been done we can clear this cart but i didn't add that so you can add that particular functionality so how you would do that is just for you to add an extra action here and say uh add action say uh update backend and say no not that uh state management update app state and then we're going to say uh let's say cart where is the cart so this is a cart and we will say clear all right so we will say clear value so that's it so that means after they've created the document just clear the value that means it will just clear off the things that are in the cart and which is a good thing all right so so now that we've done that let's go ahead and click on checkout and now that's done i didn't put any snack bar so nothing has really happened okay so um <clears throat> So now if we go ahead and then we come back to orders, right? So we will see the items that we have ordered now. So we have the following items. So we have uh, fried rice, uh, turtle, bread, and burger. So we see all the different prices here. Now let's go look at our Firebase, which is like the most important, interesting thing now. So we come here to Firebase. Now we see uh, order is this. There's this total amount of the food. If you come here and actually manually calculate, you see it's correct. Uh, then you see the name of the order. This is order 464, right? The user purchase is the user reference of the user, right? So the reference of the user. Then this is the item. So it's not added in a list. Now, the way this is done is really, really cool because it can allow a lot of things to happen. Yeah, it can allow for a lot of things to happen. You can create a situation whereby you can actually go ahead and then filter these by the different restaurants that I'm, I found. So what you would have just done is, uh, for this particular document now, add the name of the restaurant, right? You don't even need to add the name of the restaurant. By the mere fact that this information is coming from a food document and the food document has the, the, the restaurant's ID, right? So we will be able to like query that. So uh, let me just quickly uh, go through this. Um, now we have done that, let's, let me log out of this and log in, uh, let's go to, let's go to the seller's dashboard. So let's say uh, seller was David, I think it was Mr. David. All right, Mr. David, the rock at gmail.com. And 
uh, one, two. Okay. All right. So now we have this, and then we're logging into the seller's dashboard. Uh, I hope this was correct. Wait, great. All right. So this is not like very correct. We're running others. I didn't fix this. So let's uh, look at the uh, the orders. Did I fix this? Okay. Uh, all right. So. I, I didn't particularly fix this yet, but um, what you can simply do really is uh, if you want to go ahead, all right, and filter these particular uh, details, let's say we have different sellers. What you just need to do is go ahead and filter by the email of the, the, the seller, right? So in this particular full document now, we have a couple of things. So we have rest, a vendor email. So you can actually go ahead and filter by the vendor's email, right? So I actually thought that I did fix that, but I think I didn't. Let's go to uh, other seller. All right, so let me see. Uh, let's go to this and see what I did. Okay, yes, uh, you can actually filter by the vendor's email. All right, so you can actually filter by the vendor's email but I think uh, I did something else entirely let's see um, let's go to uh, sellers dashboard right where is it sellers dashboard home and uh, where did I have that orders okay so this is it so I did create that but I forgot where I kept it okay good <laughs> all right so I, I just did it manually while trying to test it to just show you guys how this works so now if you observe right so I just clicked on this not this particular one this was the old particular part so if you click on the orders here you see that this is uh, the 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 orders that just came in right this, this is a new order don't forget guys this is a new order and we have only two items here if you go to the Firebase uh, uh, document, like, you know, Firebase here, and then you come here, we see we have only one other document, but there are three food items. So why are we not seeing three food items here? It's because uh, we have filtered it by, if you come here to the other sellers, all right? So, and then you look at this very well, you see that what I did was I filtered, I added a filter, filter by vendor email, all right, is equals to the authenticated user email. That's it, right? So that's it. So you can actually get to go ahead and then uh, filter by different vendors. So each vendor that, uh, that has been able to get a sale will only see the sale that has to do with them, even if the other document is just one. So this is really beautiful. All right, so I believe that you have been able to get some value. Let's check out the last thing that I wanted to show you here before uh, I end the tutorial. So uh, the last thing here is I want you to look at the the distance calculation thingy, right? So let's go to the food details, right? So there is something here called the, this is like the distance from the person, right? So what I, I did here was not super simple, right? This was a custom function. So, uh, so it's supposed to be a particular distance away from you. So I use a combined text here. And then what I now did was I went ahead and used a, a custom function that calculates the, that uses two variables, the lat long of the, the vendor and the lat long of the, the user. And so if we go ahead and then look at the function itself, so I will just show you and then you can like, you know, look at this and try to create it yourself, right? So this is the custom function. I'm not going to like explain how this works, but basically it requires two parameters or two arguments. One is the position one, which is the lat long of, uh, let's say the, the vendor. And then the second one is the lat long of the, the, the customer, right? So, and of course, both parties are going to be asked to give access to the allocation because it's just uh, customary, all right? So uh, then you can, how do you get to uh, provide the, 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 like make them to give their lat long, right? So the lat long of the, the user will be collected in real time, all right? While the vendor can just give their lat long when they created their account, all right? So which is like, should, should have been done in their store, okay? So um, let me show you here. So the two things I'm using here is the lat long of the food document that carries that. We, with the food document now, we have the lat long of the vendor. It's always going to be the same thing. And then, um, then uh, over here, we have the the lat long of the user, which is uh, 
basically what we're doing is we're using the global uh, property and we're picking current device location. So that's like the idea. Okay, so um, now look at this. The next thing is uh, how did the vendor give their lat long? So if you come here to the collection, you will see that there is something called uh, what, what, what? The food document. So the food document has a lat long, right? So how was this given? It was given when the user is creating a new item. So we will come to add new items. And when they are clicking on save changes, one of the things that we are updating is the lat long of the, uh, uh, they will just basically be asked to accept that this device wants to assess their location. So, but this is just it. So we're taking the current device location when the, the vendor is creating a, a, a food item, right? So that's how we store it. And then the, the user is, we are getting it every single time that they're trying to like uh, click on a particular food document. So that's it. So I believe that I have been able to show you a couple of things that will help you build a better CAD functionality for your application. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the, just hit it for me, right? Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and then of course drop some, you know, comments for this video. And uh, it will really, really appreciate me and help me to uh, continue making good videos for you to learn how to use Flutterflow to build mobile and web applications without writing codes. All right, guys, see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much.